Noah, A Clean Army Ranger Romance, Book One, written by Bree Livingston, narrated by Liz Crane. Chapter One, Worst Assignment Ever. Those three words had been set on repeat the moment Noah Wolf had stepped inside the Miami Beach Dance Club an hour ago in the hopes that the woman he was tracking would show up. It wasn't so much the club, but the seizure-inducing flashing lights and the deafening music that he hated. If he'd known his assignment would take him to the most popular destination for spring break, he'd have passed on it. This was more gunner's speed. Now that he was in Miami, there was nothing he could do but stick it out and hope the woman he was assigned to stick close to wouldn't stay in town very long. What was a 26-year-old computer geek doing in Miami on spring break? He was only 30 himself, but even when he had been in his 20s, this sort of place didn't appeal to him. His phone vibrated against his thigh, and he pulled it out. Pam? She must have a good reason for calling. He put it to his ear. Hold on. Hopefully, Pamela Williams, his soon-to-be former boss, would have something for him. Noah still couldn't wrap his head around this being her last time calling the shots. The Guardian group would be under his leadership as soon as they brought down Tom Harrison, a known middleman for human traffickers. To be more accurate, though, the disgusting man didn't discriminate against what he shipped. He'd ship anything as long as he was paid for it, including guns and drugs. After a year of Noah being undercover in Harrison's trade— They thought they had the guy, but a technicality had set him free. Noah had disguised himself by dyeing his hair and letting it grow longer than he liked, sporting an itchy beard and mustache and wearing contacts, and it had all been for nothing. Shoving a twenty into the lanky bartender's hand, Noah ducked outside and walked toward the surf so that he could hear. Okay. I think I have hearing loss, Pam joked. Pam had just started the process of assembling a team for the Guardian Group when she'd hired Noah and his team of ex-Army Rangers, Gunner, Ryder, Colby, Elijah, and Mason. They'd taken on clients ranging from single moms with abusive ex-husbands, to women with stalkers, to celebrities in need of protection. His current detail was a favor for the district attorney, and, admittedly, when Noah was first asked, he jumped at the chance for something different— After dealing with the spring break crowd, however, he was regretting even thinking about it. I think I should get hazard pay, Noah replied. What did you find out? She's worked for Harrison for the last three days, after being referred by Galen White. Ryder Whitlock, the Guardian Group's resident computer genius, had found out through chatter between Harrison and another known shipper, Galen White, that Mia Milan had been hired to work for Harrison. Mia was a computer security specialist out of Dallas, Texas. Ryder had also said to presume she knew exactly what Harrison did for a living, which, in Noah's mind, made her an accomplice. Noah was in Miami to get to her laptop, if possible, and to stay close to keep her safe in the hopes that she'd come to trust him and testify against Harrison. Anything new? Noah asked. Yeah, and we'd have called sooner, but this was the first bit of new chatter we could pull. They've been uncharacteristically quiet. That wasn't good. One thing White and Harrison were good at was talking. For bad guys, they didn't keep their mouth shut. They trusted their security too much. Do you think they'll kill her? We need her to testify. Based on their previous referral track record, there's no doubt Harrison will wait until she's out of Miami before going after her by using goons that aren't tied to him. That's his typical M.O. Noah swore under his breath. Do we know where she is? Yeah, Ryder used her cell phone to finally get a location. She's about a mile down the beach at a club called Buzzed. Buzzed? Great name. Isn't it? What is a smart girl like her doing in a place like that? He snorted. I think we've established over the last few years that just because you're smart doesn't mean you can't do dumb things. True. Go find her. 
If we're right, she's in trouble. Are we certain she knows who Harrison is? What he does? It was Noah's experience that the least likely people worked for scum like Harrison. No details on that yet. Ryder wants you to get close and find her laptop. He's on standby to access it remotely and copy the hard drive. All right. Keep an eye on her. If you make contact, don't let her know who you are until we get that laptop. This time, we're going to make sure we get Harrison. Gotcha. Out. He ended the call and stalked down the beach until he got to the club, where he walked into the throng of partygoers. The club Mia Milan had picked was on the very edge of Club Row, as Noah liked to call it, and it wasn't nearly as large as some of the other clubs. There were maybe 200 people? Most were dancing, several were holding up the walls and making out, and others were sitting and drinking at tables scattered around the dance floor. It wasn't the cleanest or classiest, either. To Noah's way of thinking, based on the photos he'd seen of Mia, he was surprised she'd pick a disgusting place like this one. He swept his gaze across the crowd, his eyebrows drawing together when he couldn't find her. It was possible she'd left, but Pam or Ryder would have sent him a message telling him that. When he was certain she wasn't in the crowd, he found a corner spot by the bar where he could keep watch of who was entering. The song that was playing came to an end, and the dancers stopped, booing with the sudden quiet. Before it could get ugly, an oily guy with slicked back hair jogged to the DJ booth sitting back from the stage. Hey guys! The guy held up his hands in a timeout signal as louder boos started. I've got something special! We're having our very first swimsuit contest! Noah's lips curled. Disgusting. After what he'd seen during his year with Harrison, he was no fan of this type of thing. The objectification was more than he could stomach. Surely Mia wasn't going to do something like that. Of course, the crowd cheered. Didn't these people know the dangers that lurked in places like this? Hadn't they seen the videos of passed-out girls on the beach and what happened to them? Heard of missing people? Did they really not think through things because they thought it was a public place, so it must be safe? The slimy guy announced the first girl, and she walked across the stage in a bikini that made Noah look away. Girl after girl pranced across the stage. Yes, they were technically women based on age, or he hoped so. Mostly, they looked like kids, and he couldn't bring himself to watch. They were old enough to make their own decisions, but that didn't mean he had to participate. And next, we have Mia Milan. Noah jerked his gaze to the stage as she tiptoed across. She flashed a thousand-kilowatt smile, wearing a one-piece suit with a sarong tied around her waist and a small clutch dangling from her wrist. The one picture of her Ryder had managed to find on the web did not do this woman justice at all. With dark hair bouncing around her shoulders, a heart-shaped face, perfectly proportional lips and upturned nose, she was downright stunning. And there was no way their information was correct about her height. She wasn't 5'8", even on her tiptoes. There was something about her that had him off his chair and walking toward the front of the club before he even realized it. He stopped midway and scanned the crowd again, a weird feeling settling in his gut. When he didn't see anything, he returned his focus to the stage. For now, he'd have to assume Mia knew who Harrison was and what he did and that she was an accessory. It was Noah's job to get the info they needed and hopefully convince her to testify. If she didn't know who Harrison was, well, then he'd work that out later. Being on a stage was not what Mia had planned when she'd agreed to take the dare. If her grandma was still alive, she would have killed her if she saw her in a bathing suit being howled at by college boys. What was she thinking, anyway? She didn't even know those people on the beach earlier. At first, it had been so much fun hanging out with them. If she'd known they were going to trick her into doing this, she'd have bowed out early. 
Of course, she knew she didn't have to do it. It was a stupid dare. What were they going to do? Call her names? So what if they were hanging out at the bar waiting to see if she'd go through with it? Big deal. But it wasn't that. This trip was her chance to step out of her comfort zone, to be spontaneous and live carefree. It was a public place, so how much trouble could she get into? So, sweetheart, where are you from? The man holding the microphone asked. She wasn't sure what cologne he'd bathed in, but it was so overpowering that her eyes burned. With a smile and a couple of blinks, she answered, Uh, a little town in Texas called Hill Vale. Them knowing her hometown wasn't a big deal since she didn't live there anymore. And good luck finding her. With zero social media presence, Mia was a needle in the information haystack. The creepy guy smiled. Did you hear that accent? How cute is that? She chuckled nervously as someone in the crowd whooped. Thanks. How about a wet contest? Someone yelled. Mia shook her head as her pulse jumped. This was taking a bad turn. Another thing she hadn't expected when she'd accepted the dare. Why had they picked her to start yelling stuff at? Oh no, I'm fine. The announcer lifted an eyebrow, and in an instant, it felt predatory. You know, I wish I'd thought of that. Who else thinks we should add a little water to the mix? The entire place erupted with whoops, cheers, and fist pumping. She shook her head again, this time more vehemently. No, really, I don't want to do that. Ah, oh, come on, sweetheart. His thin lips stretched into a wider smile. No. He put his hand over the mic. Sweetheart, I've got a crowd waiting to see you doused in water. Just play along, all right? Ah. Before she could finish her statement, a body curled around her, and then she was lifted off the ground by the waist. What felt like seconds later, her feet hit the sand as the man set her down and stepped back. Her heart raced as she let her gaze roam over the tall, muscular man. With a little bit of light coming from the strip, if she had to guess he was either a bouncer, a bodyguard, or a weightlifting champion. Or maybe all three. He was huge. Not a vein popper type, but if this guy wanted to throw down, you would know you'd been thrown. After you woke up in the hospital... If only she could make out his features, but there wasn't near enough light for that. He shook his head, and droplets of water hit her on the cheek. I'm sorry. He took a few more steps back. Two guys were coming up behind you about to throw water on you. You'd said no. As he turned his back to her to shake out more water from his hair, she could see that the back of his shirt was soaked. You didn't have to rush in to rescue me. It was just water. He didn't, but man, did he leave her Twitter-pated. He faced her, his eyebrows drawn and his gaze not quite meeting hers. I know. I'm sorry. I hate those kinds of contests, and when you told them no, I rushed in without thinking. It was an automated response. In a way, it was pretty chivalrous, and not something she'd experienced before. Well, I could have handled myself, but thank you. Still, next time, the woman you think you're rescuing may not be as forgiving as I am. She stuck her hand out. I'm Mia Milan. Noah Wol... Andre. Noah Wolandry. Nice to meet you, Noah. Mia took a second and readjusted the sarong tied at her waist. It had loosened as he carried her, and now she was glad she'd worn it. On stage, she'd felt exposed, and now, in front of this beast of a guy, she would have felt even more so if she was just wearing her swimsuit. I guess I'll get out of your way, he waved in the direction of the club. If you want to go back, I'll make sure to avoid it, he said, not hiding the frustration in his voice. Still, it was deep and swirled around her like the aroma of coffee, deep and rich. Part of her wanted to go back just to see if he'd keep his word, but the other part of her wanted to keep him talking. That voice was ear candy. 
As tempting as that is, I think I'll pass. What are you doing in a swimsuit contest, anyway? You're a grown woman, not a college kid. She lifted a single eyebrow. Oh, so I'm not young and attractive enough to be in a swimsuit competition? He blinked. No, I mean, yes. I mean... He took a deep breath and raked his hand through his hair. Actually, you're breathtaking, and anyone low enough to participate in judging a contest like that won't have the class to appreciate just how beautiful you are. Her brain sputtered. Breathtaking and beautiful in the same sentence? That was the nicest thing anyone had ever said to her. Her cheeks warmed almost uncomfortably. Oh, well, thank you. Sure. Um, I'll go now. He turned to leave. She wasn't ready for him to go. Wait. Yeah? I was wondering if my knight in shining armor would like to take a walk on the beach with me. She tucked a piece of hair behind her ear. That is, if you don't have a girlfriend or wife waiting for you somewhere. There's no one waiting for me. Is there someone waiting for you? Nope. And for once, she was glad she didn't. No. He sighed. If you're asking for my company, do you have mace or some sort of protection on you? Mia's eyebrows rose to her hairline. Why? After rescuing me, are you planning on attacking me? No, but you should always be ready to defend yourself. What if I was just pretending to be nice just to get you to trust me? Are you just pretending to be nice to get me to trust you? He shook his head. Well, no, but you should always question things. She laughed. You're a terrible bad guy. Slowly, a smile spread on his lips and a laugh rumbled from his chest. I guess I am. So, would you like to take a walk with me? I promise to karate chop you if you try anything. She grinned. And by karate chop, she meant stubbing her toe for all the good going against him would do. He nodded, the smile on his lips widening. Uh, sure. Oi, she was in trouble. So much trouble. Even with as little time as she'd spent with him, she was pretty sure he wasn't a threat to her safety, though she was a little concerned about the danger he might pose to her heart. What a silly thought. She just met the guy, and it was just a walk down the beach. Besides, she was leaving in a few days, and even if she wasn't, the last guy she dated was enough to keep her cautious. After being fed so many lies, she'd learned her lesson. Hopefully. Chapter 2 Not only did Mia like Noah's smile, but she absolutely loved his laugh. It was deep like his voice, and she got the impression it was a rare thing to hear him laugh. So, Noah Willandry, what is it that you do? I'm guessing bodyguard or atlas or something like that, she mused as they began walking. There was that scrumptious laugh again. So I'm either a bodyguard or a Greek god that holds up the world? She shrugged. I'm mainly basing my assumptions on looks. There's always the possibility I could be wrong. Right. Well, you could say I'm a bodyguard. Score one for her. Could she make it two? You're ex-military, aren't you? With his shaggy, tousled hair, there was no way he was still in if he had been previously. He narrowed his eyes. What makes you say that? She stopped and cocked an eyebrow. Really? He stopped tipped his head back and laughed again. Oh, this one was the best yet. She'd have to brush up her stand-up routine if this kept up. He nodded. Yeah, army ranger. I knew it, she said, resuming their stroll. I have a lot of family who have served in all branches. Thank you for your service to our country. He rubbed the back of his neck, and with the way he was acting, she'd bet his cheeks were turning pink. Uh, sure. Whew, was that heart palpitations she was experiencing? She hadn't even seen him in full light yet, and he was already having an effect on her. There was something about him that made her heart pant like a dog. 
They walked in silence a moment before he said, Do you always walk on your tiptoes? Mia looked down and chuckled. Yeah, I do. I've done it since I was a kid. I don't even think about it anymore. I mean, I don't do it all the time, just when I'm excited or nervous or... Her eyes widened, and she rolled her lips in to stop herself from blabbering. He was going to think she was insane. What are you excited about? Or is it nervous? Or... He shot her a smile. What could she say? He was a complete stranger, and she was being crazy? I guess a little of both. I mean, you did yank me off a stage right before I was soaked with water. Fair point. Still, I bet your calves are like iron. If someone ever tries to grab you, make sure you throw a kick in a sensitive area. With all that muscle and a solid strike, you'll drop them. You're very focused on safety. He nodded and stuck his hands in the pockets of his shorts. I've seen things that I'm not sure I'll ever be able to forget. You're petite, and there are people out there who would take advantage of that. You need to use everything in your arsenal. By the way he said it, the somberness of his tone, she was sure he'd seen things that would make her ill. Thank you for bringing it to my attention. You're right. There are bad people out there, and I need to be aware. It's not just women, you know. She tilted her head. Men, too. We all need to be aware. This world is dangerous, and there are people out there who use events like this to prey on innocent people. People who've never had to think about safety in their life. They aren't going around trying to be oblivious. They've just never been in a situation where they needed to be on guard. Do you teach safety classes? He shook his head. No, but any time I get the chance to share what I know, I do. She clasped her hands behind her back, twirled in the sand, and began walking backward. You say you're a bodyguard, but I think Zeus is missing a family member. His lips curved into a wide smile as he shook his head and looked away. <laughs> Not hardly, he said as he brought his gaze back to hers. The smile was gone, and there was a haunted tone to his voice. Now she definitely needed to see him in full light. If his looks were anything like his personality, he was drop-dead gorgeous. I'm a little hungry. You wouldn't want to maybe grab a bite with me, would you? Totally not a date, if you're wondering. I've got money. I'll just have to run by my car because I ran out of cash earlier. He stopped walking. How about I make it my treat, since I made such a Neanderthal move and snatched you off that stage? She chewed her bottom lip. How about a loan? You walk me to my car after, and I pay you back. Noah stuck his hand out. Deal. Deal. As her hand slid into his, tingles spread through her palm and up her arm, and butterflies tap-danced in her stomach. It was a struggle not to wiggle a little from the way her body was responding. She almost muttered, chill, to herself. Care if we make it somewhere away from all this noise? She shrugged. Sure. They continued talking as they walked away from the water, toward the boardwalk, and away from the strip. When they could no longer hear any thumping, they stopped in a little cafe. The second Noah Willandry stepped into the light... Mia's knees went weak. Tousled brown hair, piercing blue eyes, and a jaw that definitely belonged in the Zeus family. Without a doubt, he was the most gorgeous man she'd ever seen in her life. In the back of her mind, she could even hear her granny saying impolite things about his physique. Mia swallowed hard and pulled her gaze away. So, um, are you hungry too? I could use something to eat. She'd only planned to stay in Miami a few days before heading north up the coast. Now she wished she hadn't been so set on making such staunch plans. But that was silly. She'd just met this man. Changing plans for a stranger was ridiculous. Even if her granny was telling her the hot guy with the chiseled everything was worth sticking around for. No one knew the moment they stepped into the shop that he had a problem on his hands. No, that wasn't true. 
It was long before that. One little touch from Mia Milan had lit him up like a Christmas tree. When was the last time that had happened? Had it ever happened? If it had, it wasn't memorable, and he was certain Mia's was a handshake he'd never forget. And beautiful. Up close, she was stunning. Olive skin, dark hair that ended just below her shoulders, light brown eyes, and a flat-out dazzling smile. She took beautiful and dialed it up several notches, especially in a curve-hugging swimsuit. They ordered their food at the counter and got their drinks before taking their plastic number and finding an open table away from the rest of the few patrons in the restaurant. Thank you for dinner, Mia said. You can't thank me. You're paying me back, remember? This is a short-term loan. He smiled, and it had given him an excuse to be in her company longer. She caught her bottom lip in her teeth as she smiled. Oh, jeez. His plane was about to catch fire and head straight into a mountain. Still, thank you for not making me walk to my car first. I may have fainted like a damsel if you had. He chuckled as he held her gaze. That hungry, huh? Practically starving, she said with a chuckle. I see. So, you never did answer my question. Why were you in a swimsuit contest? And why hadn't she brought clothes to change into? At this point, he was willing to go shopping to get her clothes just so he could keep his focus on the task at hand, her involvement with Tom Harrison. She gave him a one-shoulder shrug. I was dared. That wasn't the answer he was expecting. Dared? You put your life in danger for a dare? His voice rose an octave. While I agree it wasn't my smartest move, I don't see how I put my life in danger— especially since you rescued me. She leveled those sultry brown eyes at him, and his mouth went dry. Task at hand, soldier, marched in his mind. You have no idea the kind of predators who attend those things. You really could have gotten hurt. Maybe, but I didn't. I added stepping outside my comfort zone to my list. He knitted his eyebrows together. What list? My grandma and I were really close. We'd always talked about going on a road trip together and trying new things, like being spontaneous. While I was growing up, we made this list of things we'd do on our trip. She died a few months ago. She dropped her gaze to the table, and Noah's heart went out to her. He knew what it was like to lose someone you loved. He stretched his hand across the table and covered hers. I understand. I'm sorry. She lifted her head, and he could see unshed tears in her eyes. Maybe I should stick to the original list. Yeah, I don't think she'd want you doing dangerous things. It didn't seem all that dangerous until this stranger yanked me out of the club and gave me a lecture. She smiled. He pulled his hand back. Okay, I may have come across a little strong. One eyebrow lifted. A little? Noah laughed. Okay, a lot. But it's only because I don't want you to get hurt. I mean, I don't want anyone to get hurt. I can see why you're a bodyguard, she grinned. Before he could reply, a waitress dropped off their food and picked up their number. He'd ordered a club sandwich, and she'd gotten soup and a chili-loaded potato. In his mind, it was too hot in Miami to be eating chili on anything— How can you eat that? Noah asked. What? Chili. It's like a sauna here. She giggled and his heart skipped a beat. This woman was a lethal combination of looks and brains. Her lips curved up. What can I say? I love chili on my potato. He cleared his throat. So, tell me more about this list of yours. My grandma and I were going to drive from Miami up the Florida coast all the way to Washington, D.C., to the Smithsonian. Along the way, we had little things we were going to do. Like in St. Augustine, I'm going to do the alligator farm. In South Carolina, I'm going to walk the Cooper River Bridge. Things like that. And your job is okay with you taking that much time? 
He watched for tells that would maybe give him a clue and peace of mind that she didn't, in fact, know who Harrison was. While he waited for her to answer, he took a bite of his sandwich. Actually, I'm a freelance computer specialist. I go into a company, find out where they're having security issues, and fix them. He washed down the bite with his water. I can't say I expect that. I've never met anyone who does that. Is that why you're in Miami? I'm sorry, I can't discuss it. I have a confidentiality agreement with all my clients. I'm not allowed to discuss any of them or the work I've performed. Well, she wasn't lying about that. Is that typical? She shook her head. No, but it's why I'm the best. He knitted his eyebrows together as he took another bite. Mia continued. See, a computer programmer has a signature, or they typically do. It's like a calling card. If a hacker figures out who is doing the security, they work on it until they break it, and then every company is at risk. The way I do things is to keep everything under wraps. No one knows which companies I work for, and I don't leave a signature. So I've got double protection. That's really smart. Ryder must be better than Noah thought if she was this confident in her abilities. You didn't expect me to be smart? Noah smiled as he shook his head. He'd put his foot in his mouth so many times that he'd wished he'd worn better-tasting shoes. I didn't mean it like that, and you know it. She chuckled. I know, but you're cute when you blush. He rubbed his chin with his hand, feeling the burn creep from his cheeks to his ears. That's totally not fair. I thought you said I needed to use everything in my arsenal, she grinned. I never said to use being cute as a weapon. She caught her bottom lip between her teeth as her smile widened. You think I'm cute? He chuckled. I think we both know that. He shouldn't be flirting with her, but it was so effortless. It wasn't as though anything would come of it. Even if he wasn't on assignment, there were things about him that would run someone like her off, his current profession being one of them. So, you know why I'm here? Why are you here? She asked. Did you just head to Miami in a valiant attempt to rescue people all week long? Noah shook his head. No, I was here on business. It wrapped up early, so my boss told me to take a vacation. He didn't like lying, but Pam had given him specific orders to keep his cover. When they'd first started the Guardian Group, they'd both decided Pam was in charge. What she said was law, and he'd follow, even if he disagreed with her. They both know two people fighting for control would destroy what they were trying to do. Nice boss, Mia smiled. Yeah, she is. Her eyebrows went up. She? I don't know why, but I didn't expect a woman to run a bodyguard service. She's tough, but she's fair. I certainly wouldn't go toe-to-toe with her, he said. Mia tucked a piece of hair behind her ear. I have to say, you are an excellent example of never judge a book by its cover. You're nothing like I would have expected at all. He narrowed his eyes. Oh, yeah? What would you have expected? Her cheeks turned rosy. She'd blushed while on the beach, but now that she was in a lighted restaurant, he got the full effect, and it only added to her attractiveness. I don't know, really. Just, you're so big and tall and a little intimidating, if I'm honest. Not that I've felt intimidated, but if I saw you across a room, I'd definitely want to keep my distance if I was thinking about doing anything I wasn't supposed to. His gaze dropped to the table. Yeah, I don't know how to shed that part of myself. Not that I'd really want to, because it comes in handy. She covered his hand with hers. Don't be sad. You're the good candy. Noah lifted his gaze to hers. What? Crunchy on the outside with a sweet center. She smiled. The tips of his ears burned yet again. He hadn't felt so comfortable or connected with anyone in a long time. It made him hope she was innocent. It also made him want the night to continue. Ryder did want him to stick to her and get him access to her laptop, right? Noah was doing his job. He couldn't help it if he liked being around her. 
Whoa, he mentally berated himself. If she was working for Harrison and knew who the man was, she was an accessory to human trafficking. As cute as she was, he needed to back up until he knew more about Mia Milan. Chapter 3 After they'd finished eating, they decided to take the long way to her car, which meant he got the pleasure of spending more time with her. He had said he'd walk her to her car. It wasn't like he could back out. That wouldn't have been right. Noah, thank you for dinner, Mia said as he strolled next to her on the sidewalk. He shoved his hands in his pockets. I should say that to you. I haven't laughed this hard in a long time. I do have a little motivation to make you laugh. She shot him a side glance. What? We have established that you're cute when you blush. He pulled his hand out of his pocket and scrubbed his face with it. It did nothing to lessen the warmth spreading across his face and down his neck. What was his problem? He opened and shut his mouth a few times. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how the cat got the bodyguard's tongue. Noah threw his head back and laughed. I've never been this tongue-tied in my life. She stopped and did an exaggerated bow. Thank you, I'm here all night. She straightened, and that amazing smile greeted him. It was the craziest thing, but in that moment, he could picture seeing that smile before he went to sleep, and first thing when he woke up. A thought he'd never had before with anyone— An insane thought he shouldn't be having because he just met her, and she didn't know him. One good peek inside, and she'd be gone. A few stores down, a street musician began playing a soft song. Before Noah could think it through, he took her hand and pulled her close so they could dance. Instantly, he knew he'd made a huge mistake. He liked the feel of her body against his warm and soft, and she fit perfectly. What are you doing? She asked as he began moving to the music. I'm dancing with the prettiest woman in Miami. Her cheeks turned the color of Washington apples. Not fair. Totally fair, and completely worth it. He didn't think she could be more beautiful. I can't help it. You're gorgeous. She shook her head, but her smile grew. I'm thinking maybe being in that contest wasn't a mistake anymore. She looked up at him through a fringe of lashes, and his pulse raced like he'd thrown down a bucket of energy shots. I'm thinking you might be right. What? That was not what he meant to say, but his mouth and his heart were conspiring against his brain, and logic had flown out the window but he couldn't deny the pull she had. How could it be so strong, so fast? There was a tug of war going on inside him, and it was making his head hurt. Since you're vacationing, how long will you be staying in Miami? She asked. A few days. How about you? I leave in a few days for Fort Lauderdale. I'll head out a little after dark. He didn't like that at all. Night? Why? Less traffic? It's more peaceful, and I like the idea of driving with the top down and the stars overhead. She held his gaze. That bugs you, doesn't it? Noah nodded as the song ended, and he let her go. Immensely. It's not safe for anyone to travel at night. I'll be fine. I'll make sure I'm extra cautious just for you. Fine or not, he hated the idea of her going anywhere alone at night. He yawned and quickly covered his mouth. Wow, that was rude. I'm sorry. Are you tired? I guess I am. I don't even know what time it is. He pulled out his phone and his eyes widened. It's two in the morning. Has it really been six hours? Her jaw dropped. Really? It doesn't feel like that at all, but now that you're talking time, I'm suddenly exhausted. He yawned again, and she did the same. Popping him on the arm, she said, You've started a yawn war. Cut it out. I'm trying, he said, covering his mouth with his hand and trying to hold back another one. 
Let me walk you to your car. I suspect you left it at your hotel? She nodded and hugged his arm, leaning her head against it. You may end up carrying me. He was completely fine with that, especially since he liked the feel of her in his arms. Holding her closer would have to be even better. Mia took a deep breath and straightened. Okay, I need to stay awake at least long enough to get to my hotel, so tell me. What made you decide to go into the army? Easy question. Although he'd leave out the part that he was a billionaire and had to run to the army because he didn't want anything to do with the family business. Or, well, he was a billionaire according to his brother, Zach. No one ever touched the account, even though his brother had set it up for him. I like the idea of serving my country. It appealed to me, and when I turned 18, I enlisted. Did you always want to work with computers? Yeah, it came natural to me. I liked playing video games as a kid, and it just blossomed from there. I graduated to creating my own programs pretty quickly. That's really cool. I've never had the brains for that. If I can type out my name with one fat finger, I'm doing good. I doubt that. It's true. She chuckled and shot him a glance. You know, I've never stayed out all night talking to a stranger. But I can't say that you've felt like a stranger, which is such a weird thing for me. Weird was the right word. She was easy to be around. Yeah, I feel the same way. He felt complete peace in her presence, which was crazy because he was supposed to be getting close to get her laptop, not making a love connection. Noah held his hand up as they stood by her car in the parking lot of her hotel. Mia, really, I don't mind paying for your meal. He had to be the most incredible man she'd ever met. Not only was he gorgeous, but he was every bit the knight in shining armor. A gentleman in every sense of the word. I told you it was a loan. I don't want you to think I was trying to con you into a date. And suddenly, being the target of a con doesn't sound all that bad. He smiled. She tucked a piece of hair behind her ear. I've never met anyone like you. I almost wish my time in Miami was a little longer. He shrugged. We could plan to accidentally meet for breakfast in the morning. Just the thought of seeing him again made butterflies flutter in her stomach. Only if I'm buying. His lips twitched up as he held her gaze. There's a little French bistro not far from here, La Patisserie. I ate there this morning. Their pastries are amazing. You keep surprising me. He cocked an eyebrow. Care to explain? She shrugged. I took you for the raw egg, kale-blended, gag-me protein shake type of guy. Putting his hands on his hips, he shook his head as he looked away. Boy, she loved it when he was flustered. She could see his neck turning red. He brought his gaze back to hers, and the smile on his face was something akin to an angelic revelation. Wow. I keep in shape through exercise. I wasn't saying you didn't, just that you watch what you eat. I do watch what I eat. I watch it disappear. She laughed. Okay, then I guess I might see you at the bistro tomorrow. Might? He said, his voice low as he held her gaze. As her grandma would say, Lord have mercy, he was a sexy man. It'll depend on what time I wake up. Noah smiled. All right. Have a good night, Mia Milan. He turned and walked to the curb and stopped, turning to face her again. I could walk you to your room. Then he'd know her room number. No, that's okay. I'll be okay. You sure? She caught her bottom lip between her teeth. Aren't you the one who said I needed to be more careful? His smile widened. True, and I'm glad you've been listening. When he didn't walk away, she chuckled. You're going to watch me go into the hotel, aren't you? He shrugged. It's my nature. When had she ever liked anyone as much as she liked him? And from the second she met him? What if something happened and he didn't meet her tomorrow at the cafe? They hadn't exchanged numbers or even set an actual time to meet for their accidental breakfast. She jogged to him, 
threw her arms around his neck and kissed him on the cheek. Thank you for such a great night. I haven't had so much fun in such a long time. If I don't see you tomorrow, I wanted you to know that. For a split second, he seemed stunned, and then he wrapped his arms around her. I had fun, too. Thank you for spending your evening with me. She leaned back, and before she could do something too crazy, like kiss a total stranger, she ran to the hotel lobby, making sure she didn't look back. Otherwise, the temptation would have been too much. She stepped inside the elevator and leaned her back against the cool glass wall. What a day. First, she'd seen something super strange at Harrison Manufacturing. Something that made her wonder what exactly Mr. Harrison was shipping. Weird enough that her gut feeling was that they did more than just manufacture stuff. Her plan had been to check the files on their hard drive while she was there at the warehouse, but they were encrypted. When she realized it was going to take a crowbar, she'd copied the hard drive. Once she broke in, if she was right, she'd take what she found to the police. And if she was wrong, she'd shred the information. The elevator doors opened, and she stepped off, nearly dragging herself to the swanky two-room suite Mr. Harrison had put her up in. The beachfront hotel was definitely the nicest place she'd ever stayed. With a swipe of her keycard, she pushed through the door and sighed. The view out her window was breathtaking. Large ships sailed in the distance with the full moon as their backdrop. For the rest of her life, she'd be comparing every place she stayed to this one. Comfy, squishy bed, clean-smelling, fancy chocolates on the pillow— As she trudged to her bed, she kicked off her shoes and then launched herself into the middle of it, stomach first. Rolling over, she stared at the ceiling and smiled. Noah Wolandry. She liked the sound of his name as it rolled off her tongue. His laugh, smile, humor. Oh, he was the whole package. And she was leaving for Fort Lauderdale in a few days. Her Prince Charming rode in on a white horse, and she was about to dust him in a black convertible. It wasn't as though her plans were set in stone, except they kind of were. If that Harrison guy was doing what she thought he was doing, she'd need to get out of town. She didn't know a lot about the seedy underworld, but if the movies were anywhere close to the truth, she'd done something that had the potential of getting herself hurt. Booking it out of town might be the only choice she had. Why couldn't she have met Noah earlier? Mia sighed, and her eyes slid closed. No one met their true love on a vacation. That was crazy. And she needed to let Noah fade from her mind as soon as possible. Possible. Chapter 4 Mia didn't need to set her alarm. She'd woken up just as the sun poured in through the edges of the curtain. Noah had plagued her dreams all night long. The thought that she'd see him at the bistro had propelled her out of bed faster than an all-you-can-eat chocolate fountain. Stopping just as she reached the eatery, she checked herself in one of the large windows. She'd pulled her hair back in a soft bun at the nape of her neck. The dress was comfortable and flattering— and she'd put on walking shoes in case he asked her to sightsee with him. With a deep breath, she continued on and stopped at the door, quickly scanning through the window to see if he was there. Looking for someone? Noah's deep voice rumbled from behind her. Ah! Mia jumped and stumbled back into the muscled wall of his chest. Large hands wrapped around her arms and steadied her. Whoa, didn't mean to startle you. She palmed the spot over her heart as he lowered his hands and she turned. With a laugh, she lifted her gaze to his. Noah in full sunlight. So much better than fluorescence. The sun haloed behind him, and she could swear his knighthood was getting a heavenly endorsement. It's okay. I'm surprised you're up this early. I had a craving for a muffin that could only be satisfied by eating at this bistro. When they run out for the day, they don't make any more. Couldn't chance missing it. Oh, really? He nodded. 
What I find surprising is that you are even more beautiful today than you were yesterday. I didn't think that would be possible. Her cheeks warmed, and she covered one with her hand. Are you going to make me blush all through breakfast? I don't think I'm that charming. She snorted. You'd be wrong. His laugh was even better the second day. Would you like to have breakfast with me? Breakfast, lunch, dinner, and every hobbit meal in between. I was just thinking it would be awful to have to eat alone. He leaned in, his breath tickling her cheek as he reached around her and pulled the door open. After you. Her mouth went dry as his cologne drifted under her nose. Okay, she whispered. She took a step back and turned, running face first into the edge of the door. Smooth, real smooth, Mia. Heat crept its way up her neck, and by the time it hit her ears, it was a wonder they weren't shooting flames like Roman candles. Ow! Are you okay? He curled his arm around her waist and pulled her away from the door, letting it close. Let me see. Taking her chin in his fingers, he tipped her face up to his, his gaze roaming from the edge of her hairline and down. I don't think it'll bruise, but I'm sure that hurt. Her nose throbbed as she held it. Ouch! But she wasn't sure what hurt worse, her nose or her pride. Walking into a door? Could she be more embarrassed? Noah bent forward and kissed her nose. Mia gaped at him. You kissed it! she whispered. Isn't that what you're supposed to do when things like that happened? Suddenly, she wished she'd run into the door with her lips. The thought caused her to giggle like Urkel on speed, loudly. Apparently, the universe had taken her embarrassment question as a challenge. She squeezed her eyes shut. You're very cute when you're embarrassed. Keeping her eyes closed, she whined, I'd really like to hide under a rock, but... I'm hungry. He cupped her cheek. Look at me. Slowly she opened one eye and then the other. I'd be devastated if you hid under a rock. Eating breakfast across from you was my only motivation for getting up this morning. Sweet, charming, and so easy to like. If he didn't stop, she'd drool. That's kind of you to say, but I've made a fool of myself. Not to me. He pressed his lips to her forehead and comfort spread through her. If he was this caring to someone he'd just met, how much more so would he be if he had a relationship with them? How about we get breakfast? She nodded, and in one swift movement he lifted her by the waist, stepped inside the restaurant, and set her down. Had he practiced that move before? With someone else? How had he honed his charm to such a ninja level? He smiled. There. Now you don't have to worry. As she walked ahead of him, she discreetly fanned herself. Holy moly! Her mercury was hitting the boiling point. Another degree and her thermometer would crack. And it was totally worth the risk if she got to spend the day with him without running into any more doors. When they reached the counter, they ordered their food and then found a table after she paid. She sighed. Thank you for being... You, back there. Her cheeks warmed again. You're fine. He leaned forward. If I tell you something, will you promise to never tell anyone? Inside, she squealed. It was silly, but sharing his secret made her giddy. Of course, I'll never tell a soul. He switched seats and took the one next to hers. Leaning down, he whispered, When I joined the army... I'd never fired a gun before. My dad just never taught me. Anyway, we started weapons training, and I made a mistake. I grazed myself in the leg. If you think running into a door is bad, just imagine having a company of people razzing you for the rest of boot camp. To this day, if I see one of them, they still bring it up. He pulled the left leg of his shorts up, and a long scar ran down the side of his thigh. See? She ran her fingertip across it, and she could swear he shivered. That looks like it hurt. I suspect there was no one there to kiss it. 
She lifted her gaze to his and smiled. He shook his head. No. A waitress brought their tray of food to the table and set it down. She hadn't been paying attention when he ordered. I thought you were craving a muffin. With a shrug, he said, They were out of cinnamon rolls yesterday. It's as big as your head, which is saying something. He lifted an eyebrow. Are you saying I have a big head? No, I mean... She stopped and rolled her eyes. You're teasing me. A smile slowly spread on his lips. Yes, I am. You're fun to tease. She puffed a piece of hair out of her face. And you were giving me a hard time about making you blush? It looks better on you. Yeah, right. How on earth was she going to leave this marvelous man? Was it possible he was just putting on a good show? If he was, he sure was good at it. She was officially smitten with him. He made her pulse race, her knees weak, and her skin tingle. Just being near him gave her jitters. And being in his arms? That was better than Swedish fish or milk duds or popcorn. Inwardly, she groaned. What was wrong with her? A cute smile and charm enough to swim in her had her head in such a fog. No, she was a grown woman. She had priorities and a list of things to check off, even if she had decided she'd force herself to be more spontaneous on this trip. Enjoying his company for now was spontaneous enough. Besides, the last guy she dated turned out to be a loser and womanizer. What if Noah was just using his week of vacation and pretending to be charming and caring? He was oozing charisma. With his slick moves, it wasn't out of the realm of possibility for him to be just like her ex. The body language class she'd taken shortly after that breakup wasn't helping her at all because, from what she could tell, Noah was being completely honest. Then again, if he was as good at lying as her last boyfriend, even with the class, would she be able to tell? Nope. It was better to keep her schedule and kiss Miami and Noah goodbye. It was probably just a vacation fling anyway. Just as Noah was about to finish off his breakfast, his phone vibrated against his thigh. He pulled it out and read the caller ID. Ryder. Uh, do you mind if I take this outside? It's my boss. No, she said and smiled. Thanks. He stood, walked to the door, and stepped outside. As he stood in front of the window, keeping an eye on Mia, he put the phone to his ear. Anything new? Yeah, man, a few things. Kayla Clark managed to lose her FBI detail. Pam sent Gunner to find her. Noah swore under his breath. Doesn't she know that's the best way to get herself killed? I know, but Harrison's release from prison scared her. And with good reason. Her testimony is what put him there. If he gets his hands on her, she won't be talking anymore. Noah took a deep breath. What else? Have you been able to get the Target's laptop for me? Noah had spent the night in his rental car outside Mia's hotel, keeping an eye on her. Unless she'd found a way to be invisible, she'd never left the hotel. He would have checked her room, but he felt it would have been raising a red flag to ask. Just because they hit it off didn't mean she wouldn't wonder why he was trying to get to her room. It was a fine line balance, and he didn't want to mess with the progress he'd made. No, I snagged her key fob last night and searched her car. There was nothing. I didn't suspect there would be, but it didn't hurt to look. He'd put the keys back this morning before she ran into the door. Ryder hesitated a second. According to chatter between White and Harrison, she's working for him with full knowledge of what he does. Noah's stomach plummeted. Ryder had warned him before, but he'd spent hours with her. Nothing about her indicated she'd do something like that. The evening before, time had flown when he was with her. He liked her wit and the way she blushed, and those perfectly shaped lips were nearly impossible to ignore. Her running into the door was not expected, and her face had turned so red. Then she'd pig-snorted. It was all he could do not to laugh. Not that he was making fun of her, but because of how cute she was. The way her lips had turned down, how she'd squeezed her eyes shut. 
He'd kissed her nose only because he'd nearly kissed her. Her lips were so, so close. He couldn't remember a time recently when the desire to kiss a woman had hit him so hard. Only his quick thinking had prevented what would have been a huge mistake, especially given this new information. I tried breaking into Harrison's computer while she was there yesterday, but she blocked me. Her program is sophisticated and difficult to get past. A few tweaks and no one will be breaking in. Not that I'd had any luck to begin with, but this will make it almost impossible. I could have told you she was bright and talented. Less than a day and you can tell that? Unless she's putting on a good show, she's witty and intelligent. He left off the part about enjoying her company. Ryder groaned. Don't get attached, Noah. I'm not. I'm giving you my observations. Fine, observe, but don't forget she's possibly helping that man traffic people. We've worked too hard and we're too close to mess up. I'm aware, Ryder. I was undercover in his organization. I want him just as bad as you do. Just remember that when she's flashing her cute smiles or batting those lashes. Keep your distance, man. Noah rolled his eyes. I am. Not. His distance was growing shorter by the minute. But if Ryder was right, he'd need to be extra cautious. Good. If Harrison gets wind of us closing in, he'll burn everything. I know. The man had done it before. Set an entire storage facility on fire. Of course, it was ruled an accident, but his servers were held in the units that just happened to burn. Was it really a coincidence that it happened just before they arrested him? Not hardly. All right, I'll make contact if I get anything more, Ryder said. Noah ended the call and stood on the sidewalk, trying to get his thoughts in order. He'd instantly liked this woman. From the moment he'd set her down in the sand, there'd been something about her that spoke to him. But if she was helping Harrison, the conversation was over. Stuffing his phone back in his pocket, he slapped on a smile and headed back inside. He couldn't afford to let his personal feelings for her distract him from his assignment. Hey, he said as he sat. Sorry about that. Her gaze lifted to his, and her affiliation to Harrison made no impact on how his pulse raced. Is everything okay? Oh, yeah. There was an issue, and they just had a few questions, that's all. That's good. They sat quietly a moment while Noah tried to figure out how to keep her close. You wouldn't want to go jet skiing with me, would you? Her eyes widened. I've never done that before. Is it on your list? Mia nodded. Yeah, it is. I'd love to do that. Noah's heart pounded. She was so excited, and it seemed so genuine. How could someone working for Harrison, knowing what he did, seem so innocent? Good, because I wanted to get that in during this trip, and I didn't want to go by myself. Do you mind if I go by the hotel and pack a few things? I don't have a suit on. He shook his head. No, I don't mind. I can wait in the lobby for you. I'd appreciate that. What all will I need? Suit, sunblock, anything you might take when going to the beach. She grimaced and looked down, her excitement suddenly nosediving. Yeah, about that. Um, I may have never been in the ocean before. He stared at her, unable to process what she'd said. What? There are things in the ocean. Tiny killers, medium-sized killers, 30-foot sharks. I just... fish pee in it. I've tried and I get so close and then I can't. It's an irrational fear. I don't even have a good reason for it. Noah tried to rein in his laughter, but he couldn't. He roared and people stared. Fish pee in it? Really? She shrugged. I thought maybe I'd be a little braver if you're there. Plus, the list, you know? Did your grandma know you're afraid? Yes, that's why it's on the list. She rolled her eyes. Confront your fear, Mia Marie. Your middle name is Marie? He didn't think that was information Ryder had. If he recalled correctly, he didn't remember seeing it in the file, either. Her shoulders sagged. 
I swear if you start singing the mm 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 song, I will hurt you. Noah laughed. His gut said Ryder's information was off. This bright, beautiful woman couldn't possibly know who Harrison was or what he did. Mia, it's truly been a pleasure meeting you. Groaning, she put her head in her hand. I need a rock or a hole or something to hide in. He reached across the table and took her hand. You are so cute. She caught his gaze, a pout on her lips. I'm not. I'm such a dork. Man, she couldn't be working for Harrison. She was too likable, too cute, and too funny to be working for him. Well, then, I must really like dorks. A blanket of pink rolled across her cheeks. Stop being so all-fired charming, she smiled. My face is going to catch fire. With a grin, he said, Are you ready to go? She nodded. Yeah. He stood and held out his hand. Let's go have some fun. Fun. Chapter 5 While Mia grabbed a few things at her hotel, Noah made a few phone calls and found a house with a private beach he could rent for the day. It wasn't cheap, but people could be stupid, and he didn't want her being scared by a jerk showing off. I can't believe you found a private beach where we can jet ski, Mia said as she set her bag on the dock sitting a few hundred feet from the back of the house. This is amazing! Are you staying here? He wished. He tried to get the house, but it was rented. The only reason he got it for the day was that the couple renting it called the owner, and they'd postponed their trip by a day. No, just using it for the day. Well, the beach. I told him we wouldn't need the house. Wait, did you rent this today? Yeah, there are a lot of people in the water, and I wanted some privacy. Well, this sure is nice. She shimmied out of her shorts and pulled her shirt over her head. Noah about fell over. The one-piece suit, different from the one she'd worn in the contest, was modest and mouth-watering all at the same time. Yes, she'd looked great in her swimsuit the night before, but... Wow, could the woman fill one out? That's, uh, some suit. It's old and dowdy. He wasn't thinking that at all. No, you look good. She smiled. You're just being nice. No, Mia, you look great. Her cheeks darkened three shades. Man, he liked how she blushed when he gave her compliments. She wasn't expecting them, and he couldn't understand why she wasn't showered with them all the time. Thank you, she said. He pulled his shirt off and jumped off the dock into the water. Are you ready to learn how to jet ski? When he looked up, her mouth was hanging open. Everything okay? he asked. "Uh Uh-huh. Her voice rose on the last syllable, and she cleared her throat. Just fine. Uh, Don't you need sunscreen? He felt like an idiot. Oh, yeah, I guess I do. He pulled himself out of the water, dug out his sunscreen, and began applying it. Mia followed suit, getting her arms and legs. This isn't a pickup line, he said, but would you get my back? A funny look crossed her features. Sure. Don't worry, I'll get yours too. Geez, he didn't need to be offering to do that. He was already struggling to keep himself in check. He handed her his sunscreen and turned, bracing himself as he waited for her to apply the cold stuff. But when her hands began to glide over his back, it was warm. It felt good, too, and he closed his eyes as she spread it over his shoulders and worked it down. Her hands were soft, and it took his mind in a direction that it didn't need to go. Like what other parts were soft. He let out a long breath as the tension ebbed away with each pass of her hands. I take it that feels good? She asked, breaking him out of his thoughts. Yeah, actually it does. So much that he didn't want her to stop. She chuckled. Would you believe I almost became a massage therapist? Really? I took a few classes because my grandma's legs would cramp. She'd wake up in the middle of the night crying. I wanted to be able to help her. Noah turned. 
How could a woman that sweet and considerate be involved with Harrison? Something wasn't right. His gut said Mia Milan was unwittingly involved, and his gut was usually right, even when it had led him to disobey orders from his superior. He and his team may have been dishonorably discharged, but all those people would have died if he hadn't gone against orders. Yes, his team had been captured, but they'd saved that village. I think it's your turn. She handed him her sunscreen, spun in place, and pulled her hair to the side. The coconut smell drifted up as he poured some in his hands and warmed it up. Of course she'd pick something like this. It wasn't enough that he was already having a physical reaction to her. Now he wanted to curl around her and drink in her scent. Add to it the silkiness of her skin, and his objectivity was in the rearview mirror waving by. When he finished, he jumped back in the water and went all the way down. It wasn't a cold shower, but it was as good as he could get at the moment. He broke the surface of the water, raking his hand through his hair to push it out of his eyes. Are you going to jump in? Um, she looked down at him. He held out his hand. I won't let anything happen to you. I promise. Mia chewed her lip as she hesitated and then sat down on the edge, her knees drawn to her chin. Noah waded through the water and stood next to her. It's okay. You don't have to. I feel lame. I'm in Miami on the beach and I haven't stepped foot in the water. Don't. You shouldn't feel like you have to do something you're uncomfortable doing. There's no pressure here. Her shoulders relaxed and she smiled. You're so sweet. She held her hands out to him. Would you help me? Absolutely. Bracing her hands against his shoulders, he lifted her off the dock, and her arms circled his neck. As the water touched her, she tightened her grip, and her body trembled. Are you okay? He asked, wrapping his arms around her. She shook her head. No, but I will be. Do you know how to swim? Yes, she said, her breath tickling his skin. I just prefer pools. With the way her voice was shaking, she was flat out terrified, and fighting the natural reaction to protect her was overpowering. I promise I won't let anything happen to you. She pulled back slightly and her eyes locked with his. A hairdryer must have been tossed into the water because he felt an electric shockwave rush through him. His lungs felt squeezed. Want and need mixed as her breath mingled with his. It would be nothing to bridge the tiny gap separating her lips from his. The longer he held her, the more difficult it became to breathe. With a brush of her lips along his cheek, she said, I don't think you will. She'd saved him from making a terrible error. Are you good? Mia nodded. I think so. He loosened his hold on her and she stepped back. I don't think I can stop shaking long enough to not crash. Do you mind if I just ride on the jet ski with you? She asked. Her hands wrapped around his middle and her body plastered to his back. There was a good possibility he'd crash too. But he wasn't about to admit that to her. Admitting it to himself was bad enough given the reason he was with her in the first place. No, I don't mind. Mia's irrational fear of the ocean was totally working in her favor. Her arms were wrapped around Noah's waist, her body glued to his, as the jet ski zipped through the water. His body was sculpted and defined better than anything she could have imagined. She'd nearly swallowed her tongue when he pulled his shirt off. Talk about a chiseled body. Holy smokes! She'd known he was built, but seeing it up close, her tongue had stuck to the roof of her mouth. The only thing marring his skin was a tattoo over his heart with the name Isaiah. There was the temptation to ask about it, but they just met, and it felt too intimate yet. It didn't stop her from wondering about the story, though. The highlight of the day so far was being given permission to touch his back. Granted, there'd been a task that came with it, but man, 
he had a cement wall for a body. She was almost positive he didn't realize he'd moaned as she massaged the sunscreen in. A little thrill had shimmied through her, knowing she'd been the cause of it. Not saying being on the receiving end of his touch wasn't great. It was, but she liked the way his muscles flexed under her hands. Seriously, God must have personally chiseled him because it wasn't possible for exercise to make a man this perfect. Certainly none she'd ever seen. The jet ski slowed to a stop, and Noah touched her hand. Have you enjoyed the scenery? Up until that point, she'd been too terrified to open her eyes. She'd thought being with him would help, but no such luck. Every time they hit a bump, her heart climbed further up her throat. I've kind of had my eyes closed. What? I'm too scared to look. He twisted on the seat, took her by the waist, and pulled her to the front to face him, holding her against his chest. Mia, why didn't you say anything? I'll take you back right now. She curled into him and peeked out over the ocean. Even with him holding her, the physical response couldn't be stopped. Blinding fear gripped her as she wrapped her arms around him, burying her face in his chest. You were kind enough to invite me, and I didn't want to keep you from having fun. Plus, never mind. He tipped her chin up with one finger. Never mind what? It was so embarrassing to admit she'd braved a horrible fish-pee death to spend more time with him. I was afraid if I said I didn't want to that I wouldn't get to spend time with you. You didn't have to do that. I only suggested it because I thought it'd be fun. Wasn't it on your list? She squirmed. It sort of is, but I kind of penciled it in when you asked me to come. Either the water spray had rinsed the sunscreen off his face, or he blushed. His lips twitched up at the corners as he smoothed her hair back. We'll head back, and then we'll find something that isn't as scary, okay? But no. I like you, and I don't like seeing you frightened. The fun I'm having isn't from the sport. It's from you being with me. If you aren't having fun, then I'm not either. Her last boyfriend would never have chosen her over something he liked to do. She either had to get on the bus or get left. He hadn't cared about how she felt about anything. He'd tell her she was being a wuss or a baby or a coward. Jerk. You do that for me? Noah tilted his head. Just what kind of men have you been dating? None like you, she said, and then realized she'd said it out loud. Her eyes widened and her cheeks burned. I am going to die of embarrassment today. It's inevitable. Tipping his head back, he laughed. Then he lowered his gaze to hers, a smirk playing on his lips. Nah. Pink is your color. Besides, I promised I wouldn't let anything happen to you. I make it a point to keep my promises, even if that means protecting you from yourself. He winked. Oh, stars in the heavens. Give him some glasses and he'd be Clark Kent. You did promise that, huh? He set his cheek against hers and whispered. I did. Leaning back, he ran his fingers through her hair. We'll go back, get cleaned up, and then we'll find something we both enjoy. Do I have to get on the back again? No, just hold on to me. Yeah, like that was a chore. She circled her arms around his neck as one of his arms held her around the waist, and he steered toward the dock. Her heart was thumping as hard as the music in one of the clubs. Whatever time she had left in Miami, Noah owned it. Who knew what else he'd own by the time she left? If she left. Chapter 6 After returning the jet skis, Noah offered to take Mia back to the hotel so she could wash the ocean off of her. He'd laughed a little as he said it was because he knew her opinion of what that water was made of. They'd exchanged numbers and agreed to meet downstairs around 6. Not only did she need to scrub that nasty water off, but she thought it might be good to take a short nap— she was exhausted. Smiling as her thoughts drifted to Noah, she wrapped a towel around herself and stepped out of the bathroom. 
He'd been so considerate to cut his fun short for her. They didn't even know each other, but he was already putting her ahead of himself. She'd never met a man like that. The loser she dated did what they want, and they didn't care what she thought. She walked to the closet and slid the door open, put in the alarm code, and pulled out her laptop. Another good reason to hang out at the hotel for a little while. The encrypted files on Harrison's hard drive had proven difficult to break into, and she hoped the program she'd written was able to decrypt them. A second later, it was booted up, and she sighed as she still hadn't cracked them. It was so odd. Why did he need her security program if he had files this well protected? It had never taken this long for her to get into a file. Her phone rang, and she hurried to grab it off the nightstand. Hello, she said, putting it to her ear. Ms. Milan. Harrison's used car salesman voice came through the phone. Disappointment hit her in the chest. Why she'd hoped it was Noah was beyond her. They were meeting up later. Oh, hi, Mr. Harrison. Is everything okay? Yes, everything's fine. I was just... Well, I was wondering if I could take you to dinner for a successful business venture. I appreciate your flying in and helping me with my security issues. Meet him for dinner? Oh, well, I'm glad I was able to help, but I've made plans for dinner. And every other waking moment to the tall Greek god that made her blood boil. I'm sorry to hear that. Is there any time in your schedule that would allow me to take you to dinner? Sorry to hear that. Odd. This man made her so uncomfortable. She'd even avoided being alone with him when she was working at the warehouse. He'd given her the creeps from the moment she met him. How did she put the kibosh on his offer without making him upset? I'm afraid not. My boyfriend surprised me by showing up and he's made all these plans. The man sucked a slow breath. He didn't like being turned down, and it didn't take words to get that feeling from him. His tone said as much. The body language class didn't help her at all when it came to him. Either she was bad at it, or he was good at hiding. She had a feeling it was the latter. I see. Well, then, perhaps we can discuss things at a later time. Thank you for being so understanding. If you have any problems with the program, please don't hesitate to call. I will take care of you while I'm here. I appreciate that, Miss Milan. Until next time, he said. Yes, until next time. She ended the call and set the phone back down. Something about that call didn't sit right with her. She didn't know what it was, but he had a dangerous feel to him. He was a man used to getting what he wanted, when he wanted, and however he wanted. Those kinds of men were never good people, at least not in Mia's experience. Perhaps she'd made a mistake in agreeing to work for him. From now on, she'd trust her initial gut feeling, and if she thought she shouldn't take a job, she wouldn't. Closing his eyes, Noah rolled his head from side to side to ease the ache in his neck as he waited in the lobby for Mia. He'd arrived a little early to pick her up because he had nowhere else to go. Booking a hotel at the last minute in Miami meant you didn't get a choice in where you stayed, and he wasn't about to shower at the place Ryder booked for him. Keeping surveillance on her overnight gave him an excuse to stay in his car, but the ability to shower and rest was limited. He had keys to a friend's gym and permission to use it any time he needed, which he'd used for his second shower of the day. If he'd known she was only agreeing to join him because she wanted to spend time with him, he'd have suggested something else, something that didn't scare the daylights out of her. It had worked in his favor when she'd clung to him so tightly. He took a deep breath and let it out slowly. The comfortable chair emphasized his lack of sleep. Normally he could handle long nights, but going on nearly two days without any sleep, his energy was tapped. The two energy shots he'd taken weren't helping either. Actually, he felt foggier than before he took them. Noah, Mia's voice broke through the fog. You look exhausted. To be honest, I am. She perched on the chair arm and palmed his face. If you're tired, I can take a rain check. 
he pried his eyes open. I'd be sleeping in my car. Wow. She was radiant in a soft yellow off-the-shoulder sundress. Her long hair was pulled up high and tendrils framed her face. All she needed was a pair of angel wings and she'd be set. Her lips parted in shock. Why? It's what happens when you book a hotel last minute during spring break week. I can't bring myself to stay there, though, because it's disgusting. I feel like I need a hazmat suit just to enter the place. He covered his mouth as he yawned. I'm sorry. Mia chewed her lip, looked in the direction of the elevator and back to him and said, I have a two-room suite. Why don't you lie down a while and then we'll do something later? Noah should have been thrilled. The offer was exactly what he needed to get access to her laptop. Except what he was feeling wasn't elation. It was disgust at using her. Still, this was his in and he needed to make it look good. He needed to protest at least a little. No, it's dangerous to invite people to your room when you don't know them. I can't. Her lips lifted at the corners. Noah, as tired as you look, I could take you down with my pinky. He chuckled. I'm surprisingly agile even when fatigued. Even as he said it, he was fighting to keep his eyes open. It's two rooms. I'll lock myself in mine. Those doors are paper thin. What if I said I'm tired and nervous about being up there by myself? You did promise to keep me safe, right? He lifted his hand and brushed his knuckles down her arm. You can't make stuff up. That doesn't count. Mia chewed her lip. That client I'm working for, well, he gives me the creeps. He called me while I was getting ready and asked me to dinner. I'd rather stay in if you don't mind. Noah sat up, suddenly alert. She didn't like Harrison? He gave her the creeps? Do you know him well? Do you think he'd hurt you? She shrugged her shoulders and his gaze swept across the delicate curves of her collarbone. He sounds like a man who isn't used to being told no. I don't know. I've just got a bad vibe about him. I've kind of had it the whole time. The only reason I finally relented to come was that it was Florida, and I wanted to do what my grandma and I always talked about. But you're scared of him? Then why work for him? It didn't start that way. I was dealing with his assistant, and then one day I wasn't. It was after I'd signed the contract and agreed to do the job. My contract is thorough, and I'm bound by it as well. I couldn't just break it based on the fact that I thought he was slimy. He had promised to keep her safe, and she was inviting him up. Wasn't that the best of both worlds? If so, why did he feel so gross? All right, we'll stay in, but I'm not sleeping while knowing you don't feel safe with your client. Mia took his hand and pulled him up as he stood. Oh no, I wouldn't let you fall asleep on duty. Right. Why do I get the feeling you're not being truthful? I am. I'm being forthright and upstanding in everything. Noah chuckled as they walked to the elevator and waited for it. Thank you for being so generous. After renting a private beach just so you could jet ski, you canceled your plans because I was scared. I'd say you're the generous one. The elevator arrived, and they waited for the family to exit before stepping on. When the doors closed, Noah turned to her. Anyone who doesn't think you come first isn't someone who deserves you. A jet ski doesn't have warm eyes, a brilliant smile, and a sweet laugh. But you do. She cast her gaze to the floor and took a shuddering breath. When she lifted her eyes to his, tears brimmed her eyes. I don't know what to say. That is, without a doubt, the sweetest thing anyone has ever said to me. I don't know who you've been dating, but clearly their priorities weren't in order. Apparently not. The elevator doors opened and Mia threaded her fingers through his as they stepped off. He liked the feeling of her skin against his, even if it was just holding hands and the tiny sparks he'd felt before were growing stronger the more time he spent with her. They walked halfway down the hallway before she stopped in front of her door. 
A quick swipe, and they were inside. This is nice, Noah said as the door shut behind him. No kidding. I'd never stay in something this expensive, but when I got here, this was the room my client booked me. Glancing around the room, he noticed two bedrooms, a bathroom situated between them, and a common living room. It was spacious, clean, and, gauging the cushiness of the bed he could see through the open door of the far bedroom, comfortable. The floor-to-ceiling windows faced the ocean, and the view was spectacular. The sun would be setting soon, and he could only guess how beautiful it would be. How about we order room service and take advantage of that balcony to watch the sunset? Asked Noah. Mia nodded. That sounds like the best plan ever. She kicked off her sandals as she walked to her room. I'll be out in just a second. I'll order. Anything in particular? She paused at the door. I want fries, chocolate ice cream, popcorn, and milk duds. What kind of meal is that? A giggle bubbled out of her. The kind you have when you're on vacation. He smirked as he shook his head. Okay, I'll see what they have. With a smile, she disappeared into her room, leaving Noah alone. He wondered if he had time to look through anything. No, if she caught him, it would be over. At some point, they'd have to take a break from each other and she'd be out of her room. That's when he'd snoop around. Snoop around in the room of a woman who found out he was exhausted and sleeping in his car and then invited him to rest in her room. A man she just met. He felt so low. But he also had a job to do. Keeping in Mia's good graces was what he needed to do. The fallout from lying, he'd deal with later. Later. Chapter 7 Instead of keeping her sundress on, Mia had changed into a t-shirt and a pair of cotton pajama bottoms. If she was staying in, she may as well be comfortable. She'd even convinced Noah to kick off his boots. If bad guys broke down the door, he could throw them. He would laughed and slid them off. Outside on the balcony, he sat across from her. It had been nuts to invite him up to her room, but she could tell by the look in his eyes that he was tired. He'd given up something fun for her. He'd already treated her better than any guy she'd ever dated. A chance to rest his eyes seemed like the least she could do. She dipped a fry in her ice cream and popped it into her mouth. So good. Noah was hysterical. He'd actually gagged when she did it the first time. Yuck, you ruined the fry and the ice cream. How do you know it's gross if you won't even try it? She slathered another fry in ice cream and held it out to him. You know you want to try it. She wiggled it in front of him. Holding her gaze, he took it from her and stuffed it in his mouth. Not horrible he said, holding his hand in front of his mouth. Delicious. You can say it. I was right, and you were... She cupped her ear, waiting to hear the magic words. Not as right, he smiled as he swallowed. She cocked an eyebrow. Really? Do you want another? He leaned back and scooted down in his chair. No, I'm full. As quickly as he'd inhaled his chicken sandwich, she wasn't surprised. You seemed pretty hungry. I didn't think I was until I got here. He laid his hand over his stomach. Why aren't you engulfing yours? She shrugged. I had a snack when I came back to the hotel. They were giving out little baggy lunches, so I snagged one. That was nice. He closed his eyes, giving her a chance to take him in. It took willpower to not flat out unabashedly gawk at him. The man was beautiful. From the second she'd spied him in the hotel lobby, she thought he was simply scrumptious. Dark washed jeans, a half-tucked short-sleeved button-up, and boots made him a prize package. The soft blue of the shirt made his eyes look ethereal, and his tan even darker. He yawned and immediately sat up, sucking in a deep breath several times. I like moments like this quiet, still, and peaceful. Me too, she said, wondering how long he'd be able to stay awake. 
I've always thought the best kind of time to spend with someone was things like this. Watching sunsets, stars, the waves. Just holding on to someone you care about like the world will end in minutes and this is the last chance you'll ever get to do it. Yeah, I don't know why people don't do that more. There's something pure about just holding someone and pouring your love onto them. He'd nearly slurred the last word. Blinking hard, he raked his hand through his hair. Right at that moment, she could see herself wanting to hold on to him. It was a ridiculous thought for someone she'd met a little less than 24 hours ago. It didn't stop her heart from fluttering as she pictured herself snuggled against him, lying under the stars until she was old and gray. She shivered as a light breeze swirled on the balcony. Are you cold? Mm. She said and stopped. Noah was exhausted and fighting it with everything in him, and she had a feeling that if she offered him her couch, he'd fight sleep even harder. What if she cuddled up with him? He was kind and considerate. Perhaps he'd stop fidgeting to stay awake. Actually, I kind of am. Could I share your seat? He nodded. I don't mind. Mia stood rounded the small table and slid onto his lap. He wrapped his arms around her and she shivered again. But this wasn't from a breeze. It was him. Wow, he smelled good. Aftershave and masculinity. Okay, I think I could get used to this. Me too. This time, his words were slurred. Pulling back, she found he'd already closed his eyes. How had she not realized how long his lashes were? They fanned against his cheeks like peacock feathers. She touched her fingertips to his cheek and traced the lines of his face, and a soft moan escaped his lips as his chin dropped to his shoulder. Noah, she said, just above a whisper, and stood. His eyes fluttered open, but instead of bright blue, they were cloudy. Come with me, okay? He nodded his head and pushed out of the chair. Rubbing his eyes, he lumbered after her to the second bedroom and sat down hard on the bed. I need to stay awake. Okay. She gently pushed him back and lifted his feet onto the bed. I should get up, he murmured. She sat beside him and smiled. Absolutely. With one last long moan, his body completely relaxed. He was an easy man to like. Gentle, kind, giving, and caring. She didn't know his whole life story, but the connection she felt to him was unlike anything she'd ever felt for anyone. It was so strong and powerful. One day, one day to feel like this? Why couldn't her grandma still be alive? Mia needed her wisdom and guidance. Her granny would have loved him. Tall, good-looking, with a butt that deserved its own calendar. He would have had her grandma pinching his cheeks and loving on him in two shakes. She had a couple days left in Miami. Would it hurt to see where things went? Clearly, a lot could happen in a day. Stretching his arms above his head, Noah slowly gained consciousness. He was warm, comfortable, and rested. His eyes flew open and he bolted up. What had happened? He glanced around the room. Mia's hotel room? With the door shut? Then it hit him. He'd crashed the night before. So much so that he didn't remember even going to bed. He raked his hand through his hair. Yes, he was tired, but he was a trained soldier. He should have been able to handle being a little tired. He pushed the covers back, stood, and went to find Mia. Pausing at the door, he knocked in case she wasn't decent or something. Uh, is it safe to come out? A laugh filtered through the door. Yes, it's perfectly safe. Slowly, he opened the door, and a rush of embarrassment flooded him. I'm so sorry I fell asleep. She twisted on the couch, laying her arm across the back as she looked at him. You couldn't keep your eyes open. 
His gaze moved to the bright sun gleaming through the window. What time is it? Almost ten. He'd slept that long? Maybe he had needed it. What good was he if he was dead on his feet? It didn't ease the discomfort of knowing he'd let her down. He was supposed to be watching over her and trying to find a way to get her laptop. Mia stood and walked to him. Cupping his cheek, she said, I slept better last night than I have since I got here. Just knowing you were in the other room gave me peace of mind. Can I make it up to you? Take you to brunch? Her lips curved up and she lowered her hand. I'm dressed and ready when you are. Uh, I can grab a shower at my friend's gym, come back and pick you up or meet you somewhere. That's silly. Just get your stuff and shower here. It's not like the bathroom's made of glass. He cast his gaze to the floor. I don't feel right staying here. You aren't. I had a friend over, we watched the sunset together, and he decided to hang out for the night. No harm, no foul. She smiled. His heart did a somersault. She was beautiful, kind, considerate, and caring. His heart was on a downward slope and sliding faster and faster to the bottom. Okay, I'll run and get them. I'll be quick. Take your time. I'm in no hurry. Gracious as she was, he still hurried, and an hour later they were walking out of the hotel. They decided to wander until they found something that sounded good. His treat for falling asleep on the job. After a few blocks, they ducked into a gastropub and found a table. It sure smells good in here, Mia said. Noah's stomach rumbled. Ugh, yeah, but I'm pretty hungry, so I'm not sure I'm a good gauge. She chuckled. Yeah, your stomach just announced it. He let out a sigh as his cheeks burned. Their eyes locked, and hers held a mischievous glint. If I could make you blush all the time, I would. Two can play at that game. Bring it. You're cute when you blush, all flustered and red-faced. Noah narrowed his eyes, tempted to ask her about noses and doors, but thought better of it. Two can play at that game. Just as their food arrived, his phone rang. Ryder, no doubt. He pulled it out, and sure enough, it was Ryder. I need to catch this. Sure, but don't be surprised if one of your mushroom caps is missing when you get back, she grinned. Go ahead, I don't mind. He walked out of the restaurant and put the phone to his ear. Hey, you've got terrible timing, man. I was just about to eat and I'm starving. No, that wasn't true. He'd been starved before. This was just a little craving. Chatter started up fast and furious late last night, Mia being the main topic of conversation. She knows, Noah. She's helping that scum ship people. Noah's eyebrows knitted together. How reliable is that information? I heard it directly from Harrison. Ryder, I don't know. She told me about Harrison last night. She didn't say him by name, but she said that he gives her the creeps and that he'd call to ask her out to dinner. Something's off, man. I'm just telling you what I heard. Noah swore under his breath. And I'm telling you, there's no way. I'll need more than a little chatter from Harrison as proof. Ryder grumbled. What does he have to gain by talking about her working for him if she isn't? That's a good question, but she's not involved. He paused. She's... she wouldn't be involved. Seems you might have gotten a little too close. He shook his head. No, Pam said to stick with her, and I have. I've spent time with her. I'll need something more than a conversation to believe it. Oh, man, don't tell me you've got a thing for her. He was quiet a little too long. You do. Noah, you can't. If she's working... I'm not having this conversation with you. I don't get involved. You know that. You sure she doesn't know who you are? I mean, if she does, she could just be working the womanly wiles. Noah took another glance through the tinted window at Mia, happily sipping on her tea. When she noticed him, she gave a little wave and a smile. Could she be any cuter? I don't think so. There's nothing to give me any indication that she might know who I am. Well, keep it that way until we know for sure. Keep lying to Mia? 
Does Pam want me to continue staying close, or does she want me to trail her? He hoped for the latter. Spending more time with her would only make things worse. She says to stay close. His stomach twisted. Okay. Did you know she's leaving for Fort Lauderdale soon? Ryder hummed like he was pulling something up on his computer. I've got reservations at a hotel in Fort Lauderdale for the day after tomorrow, but it says she's having a late check-in. Like, midnight. Why would she be leaving at night? Said she likes the idea of less traffic and driving with the stars overhead. Or it's easier to slip out of town in the dead of night than in broad daylight? Maybe she knows about Harrison's penchant for killing people who work for him. He's been able to stay out of prison this long because of his policy on no loose ends. Or maybe she was being truthful. Maybe. All right, keep doing what you're doing. I'll talk to you later. Ryder ended the call and Noah stuffed the phone into his pocket. Keep doing what you're doing. He wasn't sure he should follow that order. If he did, he couldn't guarantee he wouldn't kiss her. Noah turned his back to Mia and closed his eyes. He needed to clear his head. She was an assignment. He was a professional with a job to do. Lives depended on him, and if Mia was the key to bringing down a man who preyed on women and children, then he needed to keep his head clear and his focus sharp. Sharp. Chapter 8 They'd finished their meal at the pub and walked the few blocks to a home that had been turned into a public museum and gardens. When Noah suggested the place, he had no idea he'd enjoy it as much as Mia seemed to be. There was no doubt her cheeks had to be hurting with the amount of smiling she was doing. As they moved from one exhibit to the next, they would discuss each piece of art. The history was interesting. The house itself was grand, and with it being right on the water, the views were exactly as described. Incredible. So, do you have any brothers or sisters? Instead of Google, he figured he'd use the old-fashioned approach to gaining information. He'd ask... No, it's just me. But you were really close to your grandma? She nodded. Yeah, my parents worked and traveled a lot when I was little. My dad is a mediator, mostly handling business takeovers and that sort of thing. My mom is a lobbyist in D.C. Not what he was expecting, but interesting nonetheless. But you live in Texas. Only because that's where my grandma lived. I maybe saw my parents once a week growing up. I see them even less now. That had to be hard. I had my grandma. She's the one who took care of me. It wasn't all that hard because it was all I knew. She stopped in the middle of the pathway. How about you? The sunlight reflecting in her eyes made them look like endless pools of molten honey. If he stared long enough, he was sure he could swim in them. My mom and dad... His chest tightened. My mom is amazing. Funny, full of life, and a total troublemaker, in a good way. He thought back to watching his brother Zach and Zach's then-girlfriend, now wife, Harley, in the backyard and chuckled. She caught my brother kissing his girlfriend and called us all over to spy on them. He was mortified when he found out. You have siblings? He startled and held in a curse. Normally, he kept his family out of any conversations with targets or assignments, especially when he was sent to spy on them. But he couldn't recover from that, and as long as he didn't use names, it would be okay. I do. I have two brothers and two sisters. She smiled. I bet it's nice to be part of a big family. Yeah, I love it. What about your dad? She asked. He crossed his arms over his chest and cast his gaze to the ground. He died of brain cancer. He was my best friend, he said, barely above a whisper. He'd never forget the camping trip his dad took him on. He'd never told anyone what happened. Zack had assumed he was angry, but he couldn't have been further from the truth. Well, he was angry, but not at his dad. At the thing taking his dad from him. The camping trip had been his dad's way of saying goodbye because the tumor was getting worse. 
Even Noah had noticed things prior to and during the trip that didn't seem in character with his dad. When the truth finally came out the last night, Noah was devastated and heartbroken. His dad made him promise to not let what was happening change him. That was the weekend Noah told his father his plans to leave the family business to the rest of the siblings and go into the military. His dad was supportive but not thrilled, and later once the tumor grew it was as if the conversation had never happened. His dad would hardly speak to him after that. A soft hand wrapped around his. That's why you understood about losing my grandma. Noah nodded. Yeah. It's been long enough that you'd think I'd be over it. There was more than the loss of his dad. He rubbed the spot over his heart where Isaiah's name was written. He wasn't sure he'd ever get over either of them. I don't know that I'll ever get over my grandma dying. She was the only mom I knew. Not exactly light conversation, huh? Mia smiled. Actually, I don't mind it. You don't mind me being completely depressing? He asked as he lowered his arms and held onto her hand. I don't mind getting to know you better. It's not long before you leave. She shrugged. Yeah, tomorrow night. But it's a small world, you know? He laughed. Is Disney on your to-do list? Oh, yeah. Can't come this close and not go. Her phone rang in the little wristlet she wore, and she pulled it out. With the way her eyebrows knitted together, whoever was calling was not someone she expected. Uh, let me get this, okay? You bet. Noah stuffed his hands in his pockets as he watched her walk to a section of the garden that was empty and put the phone to her ear. He should be trying to listen in, but just as he started to make his move, she turned and made eye contact, rooting him in place what he wouldn't give to be standing closer. Was it possible she was on the phone with Harrison? What if they were discussing something Noah needed to bring the man down? Why had he let himself get so close to her? He should have told Ryder he thought it was a better idea to trail her. At least that way, he could have played spy instead of whatever role he was currently in. Falling for the cute brunette with ties to a man like Harrison. Mr. Harrison? Is something wrong? Mia asked as she stopped under the shade of a tree and watched Noah in the distance. Something about Mr. Harrison just put her off. His voice gave her heebie-jeebies and he'd just called the night before. Why would he be calling again? She told him she didn't have any room in her schedule. Noah's large frame was filling up the whole thing. Oh, he'd been so cute that morning all blushing and embarrassed, wanting to leave so he could shower somewhere else. She wasn't letting him do that. All she'd done was give him a place to rest his head that wasn't his car or a gross hotel. What was a little shower going to hurt? No, I was... Well, I was wondering if I could ask you for dinner again, he said. I know you said you didn't have time for it, but I thought maybe we could discuss expanding your program to my other warehouses. Her gaze roamed from the top of Noah's head to the tennis shoes he wore. There was no way she was giving any of her valuable time with him to Mr. Sleazy. Noah's voice had broken when he talked about his dad, and his lips had turned down like he remembered something else as equally sad as losing his parent. He had rubbed the tattoo of the name over his heart. For a second... She was so intrigued by it that she'd considered canceling all her plans just so she could stay and find out what his story could be. How could she get out of Harrison's second request? I would, but like I said, my boyfriend surprised me. I've made plans with him. I'd love to discuss it with you at a later date. And I understand that, but I'd like to get this squared away while you're in Miami. I have several other warehouses, and having the ability to monitor them no matter where I am would put my mind at ease. I'd pay you well, and you could drive up the coast while getting paid for it. I assumed you'd want to see how it worked before having me install it on the rest of your systems. Then, it hit her. She'd never told him about her plan to drive up the coast. 
or she didn't think so. Had she? Maybe she did and didn't remember. Based on what I'm seeing, I'm confident enough in it to discuss the expansion of your program. Already I've seen a reduction in attempted data breaches. That's why I'd like to take you to dinner, so we can discuss it. Sooner would be better. She'd caught those attempts, too. They'd appeared to be coming from law enforcement. She'd essentially shut out the FBI, which meant it was up to her to find anything she could and get it to the proper authorities. How could she get out of dinner without making him angry? Or making him suspicious of her? What could she say? I'm sorry, I really do have plans with my boyfriend. What would Noah say when she found out she'd claimed him as her boyfriend? Did she have to tell him? And she thought running into a door and Urkel snorting was bad. Her face heated with the very idea of confessing she'd called him her boyfriend. Well, then could we plan for tomorrow? Maybe in the morning? Mia considered it a moment. Maybe it would be a good idea to meet with him. That way, he wouldn't immediately suspect her if, and it was a big if, they realized their hard drive was copied. If she'd had time to decrypt it while she was there, she would have already done it. But she was nearly done installing her software when she got lost and saw those women on the dock. Uh, sure. How about eight? There's a bu- She stopped short. That was Noah's place. No way she was letting this creep taint it. There's a coffee shop not far from the hotel. Oh, uh, Java something, right? Yes, that's the one. Have you been there before? No, but I've been meaning to. This is great. Not only do I get to try a new coffee shop, but I get to hammer out how to better protect my business. She chuckled. That sounds like a plan. Miss Milan, until then. Until then. Bye. She ended the call and pressed her phone against her forehead while she gathered her thoughts. A meeting with the man she was sure was trafficking women and children. If she'd known prior, she'd have flatly refused to do business with him. And she'd been referred by Galen White, another man who ran his business out of a warehouse. He hadn't seemed as shady as Mr. Harrison. Her lips parted. Was he a slave trader, too? Didn't bad guys hang out in bad guy groups? The thought made her sick. Is everything okay? She gasped and dropped her hand to her side as her eyes flew open. I scared you again. I'm sorry. It's okay, she said as she tried to catch her breath and slow her pounding heart. And yes, everything's fine. It was my client wanting to discuss a few things. He nodded. Ah, okay. Thank you for not prying. I mean, I know I told you I don't care for him, but I can't really discuss beyond that. No, I get it. More than you know, he said as he held her gaze. With the way his ice-blue eyes were holding hers, there was no doubt in her mind that he understood. As an army ranger, he probably had a treasure chest full of things he couldn't talk about. I believe you. Did you want to explore more of the museum, or did you want to do something else? She shielded her eyes with her hand as she looked up. The sun was as straight up as it could be. They'd really been at the museum that long? How was it that time flew so fast when she was with him? How about we do like we did this morning, just wander until we get hungry and then find somewhere fun to eat? As long as I'm wandering with you, it sounds perfect. Mia caught her bottom lip with her teeth as she smiled. You're so charming. His bright blue eyes sparkled and he winked. It's only because I've been given the proper motivation. Woo! Her pounding heart threw itself into fourth gear and blood rushed in her ears. This man was pushing every button she had. It made her more than a little determined to keep her meeting with Harrison short so she could spend as much time with him as possible. Noah was special, and she was desperate to learn all she could about him. Chapter 9 The more time Noah spent with Mia, 
the more he was convinced she had no idea who Harrison was or what he did. Someone with her kind of spirit didn't work for human traffickers. She was light and free and sweet. No one with a smile like hers could do that. And the more he thought about that increased chatter from Harrison, the more he suspected something wasn't adding up. They'd finished their tour of the museum and strolled through the market. And like something out of a movie, she'd tried on hats and forced them on him. Then she got a henna tattoo of a heart on her wrist. She tried to convince him to do it, but he wasn't the henna-wearing type. Not even her adorable pout could persuade him. You should have gotten a tattoo. It's not like it's permanent. Mia ran her fingers over the new ink as they walked. Noah shook his head. No, I'm good. I did notice that you have a tattoo over your heart. Do you have any more? No, that's the only one I plan on having. She shot him a glance. Oh. It's... I didn't get it for show. It was to honor a fallen friend. He'd leave out the part about his entire company having one. A piece of himself that he worked to bury as far down as possible. My great-uncle had one like that. He didn't show it off either. It was more for him than anyone else. He nodded. I know I won't ever forget him, but I wanted something I had to see every day when I look in the mirror. Something that reminded me of who I am and why I do what I do. And why choices matter. One of the reasons he was struggling with his current assignment. He knew the right choice, and yet he was having a difficult time making it. He couldn't have feelings for Mia, but he did, and it was wrong. I see. Maybe one day you can tell me the whole story. Maybe. Again, not likely. Even if his gut was right and Mia wasn't working for Harrison, once she found out who Noah was, that he'd lied to her for days, she'd have nothing to do with him. Plus, if she did end up testifying against Harrison, she'd most likely be put into witness protection. Noah wouldn't so much as know her name after that. His name was Isaiah? She asked as her fingers brushed against his. Something they'd both been doing since the museum. Not holding hands, but certainly giving the invitation. Noah wanted to, and the temptation was excruciating, but he'd found it within himself to resist so far. Yeah. I like that name. If I ever have kids and I have a boy... I hope my wife is open to naming him Isaiah. Where had that come from, and why was he telling her? He needed this assignment wrapped up, and quickly. Mia smiled. Isaiah Willandry. Middle name? He shrugged, but cringed inwardly at the reminder of the lies between them. I didn't want to claim both names. I figured if it happens, we'd come up with one together. Oh, it'll happen. I have no doubt about that. Her eyes widened and her cheeks turned bright pink. I mean, from what I've experienced so far, you should have no trouble finding someone. I suspect the same could be said of you as well. She bumped him with her shoulder. Thank you. I seem to be embarrassing myself left and right when I'm around you. I'm not complaining, he said and grinned, which got him another bump on the shoulder. And with as much charm as you have, I'm shocked you're single. Why are you single? Why was he single? The last time he'd been asked that was when Zack asked Harley to marry him some two years ago now. Right before Noah started working for Pam, he'd gone home to visit because Zack's plane had gone down in a storm and he'd been missing almost two weeks. Of course, his brother would find a girlfriend while he was stranded. His mom had cornered him and asked when he was going to settle down with a nice girl. He'd asked her what that meant. Did she think he'd bring home a mean girl? He'd gotten a pop on the arm for that and a stern look for his smart mouth. When he was discharged from the army, he'd spent a few months aimless. Not just him, but most of his team. All of them had fought demons. All of them had used different methods, some of them worse than others. Noah had used alcohol, but he was clean before he went home for Zach's ordeal. It was six months before he told his family he was out of the army. They still didn't know that 
he'd been dishonorably discharged. By the time he was back on his feet, Pamela Williams had come calling. She'd explained what she was trying to do and what she expected of him behavior-wise. And while she'd never outright said she knew what he'd turned to, it was unspoken that if he did it again, he'd be out with no second chance. He shrugged. Just out of the army, I wasn't in the frame of mind to have a relationship, and shortly after I was offered work with the private security firm I'm with now. Truth be told, I'm not sure why anyone would want me. It wasn't until Mia's fingers tangled in his that he realized he'd said all of that aloud. I have a feeling it's not as cut and dry as you think it is. I will need proof of some heinous crime to believe that. This was why he'd avoided this type of assignment, and he would have continued by avoiding this one if he could have. It should have been Ryder on this one because of his tech skills, but he just returned to base after a two-month-long job, so no, Pam chose him. It was too easy in these types of situations to get attached to someone. His friend Jake Maverick came to mind. Not that it didn't work out in Jake's favor. Lexi Maharis was good for him, and his friend was happy. But that was the exception, and not the rule. Or was it? His heart didn't seem to care about rules or exceptions or any of that. When he looked at Mia, he was beginning to see a future and a life. It was nuts, but it didn't change the fiery connection he had with her. Maybe you're only seeing the side I want you to see. Mia pulled him to a stop, took his face in her hands and locked eyes with him. For heartbeat after heartbeat, she held his gaze, not saying a word. Even being jostled by people walking by didn't faze her. It was as though she was locking in on what made Noah Wolf, Noah Wolf. Unnerving didn't begin to describe the feeling. His heart pounded in his ears and he held his breath until his lungs screamed for air. Finally, she lowered her hands and said, No, I don't think that's true. I think there are things you aren't telling me, but you are someone worth knowing. You got that from staring into my eyes? No. He knitted his eyebrows together. Then why did you do that? One corner of her mouth lifted. Maybe I just wanted to stare into your eyes. Ever think of that? Is that right? She shrugged. I think you're a good man with a lot of secrets, but they're the kind of secrets that shape you as a person, not the kind spies sell to the Russians. Goosebumps aligned his arms. How did she do that? He swallowed hard and asked, I'm starving. Are you? As an attempt to change the subject. Nice deflection, Mr. Willandry. You didn't hear my stomach growl? Mia chuckled. No, but I did see your Adam's apple, Bob, which meant I was pretty close to the truth. The hair on the back of his neck lifted. Maybe his gut feeling was wrong. Maybe she did work for Harrison. Most people wouldn't have noticed that subtle of a movement. How about lunch? And you can give me the 411 on how you did that. And take away the mystery? Then what will I have? Without even thinking, he stepped into her, brushing a loose strand of her hair over her shoulder. Her lips were right there. All he had to do was bend down and he'd be kissing her. Everything in him was at war. His head and his heart were in a knockdown, drag out fight. Up to this point, he'd resisted the temptation to kiss her, but a man could only hold out so long. They were in public, right? What better place to kiss someone? Out in the open, he couldn't get carried away. I don't need mystery to be interested in you. Her eyes widened and her cheeks flushed. You don't? She asked just loud enough for him to hear. He shook his head and pressed his lips to hers. Alarm sounded the second they touched hers. Public, closed doors, rooftops, it didn't matter where he was. There wasn't a thing that could lessen the desire to forget the world and kiss her. With more strength than he thought he had, he forced himself to keep the kiss brief. Pulling back, he could see the disappointment mirrored in her eyes. Maybe lunch and then we figure out the rest of the day from there? 
She nodded and threaded her fingers in his, and they continued on their stroll without another word. He couldn't believe he'd done that. She'd read him like a book, and then he'd kissed her. What was he thinking? Why had he done that? He was a trained soldier. He knew better than to do something like that. After spending the evening with her in her room, eating on the balcony and watching the sunset, he'd managed to restrain himself. Where were his professional standards now? Did they fly out the window because a beautiful woman had batted her lashes at him? Silently, he steeled himself. There would be no more kissing. She was a potential informant. And if so, she was not someone he wanted to invest time into. Either way, she was off limits and he'd make sure to keep his distance. So... Did you take a body language class or something? Noah asked, wishing he'd questioned her instead of kissing her. Mia wiped her mouth and smiled as she sat next to him. Actually, yeah. There was a class floating around online, and... She sighed and cast her gaze to the grass. They'd found a Cuban food truck and then taken their lunch to a quiet, shady spot away from the spring breakers. It was spicy, but man, the flavor was amazing. He'd have to remember it the next time he was in Miami. And? He urged her to continue. Until three months ago, I was dating a guy I thought was amazing. He was everything I thought I wanted. Smart, sweet, funny, and he made me feel so special. We dated six months, and then I found out he was seeing three other women. Noah lifted an eyebrow. Three? She nodded. Three. I had no idea. I thought back to all the times he'd been working late or out of town or had plans with the guys. He'd looked me in the eyes and lied, and I didn't want that to happen again. How did you find out? The local drive-in was doing an anniversary labyrinth showing in sing-along. It's not something I normally do. I'm a homebody, but I love that movie, so I went. I caught him there with another woman. Then the two of us found out about woman number three. If she was telling the truth about dating that guy, it was solid motivation for wanting to learn body language. What a creep. And no offense to women, but how did he date three at once? I struggle with dating a woman, let alone three. I don't know, but he did. I was so upset with myself. Why hadn't I clued in quicker? But the only way I could see protecting myself in the future was to do something proactive, hence the class. Which, the only thing I really learned was the Adam's apple thing and an eye thing. Like, if you look one way, you're telling the truth. The other, and you're lying. All the other stuff I'm not good at reading, or it's not true because it hasn't worked for me. Could she just be a woman who was lied to? He could see himself turning to a class if he didn't have his training. She'd taken steps to keep herself from getting hurt. Would he have done anything different? Then again, what if this was just a story to throw him off? Did she know who he was? When they'd gone undercover in Harrison's operation, he'd let his hair grow out and maintained a beard. Would the man know him? It was possible, but no one ever had that much contact with him. That was clever. Most women wouldn't have done that, he said. It was too dark that first night to read anything, and yesterday morning I was too busy running into doors. Noah tipped his head back and laughed. I see, but you've been getting a read on me since then. She shook her head. Not really. All of it kind of went out the window when you were so preachy on the protection stuff. Could you really be all that bad? You even wanted me to have mace in case you were a bad guy. A balmy breeze took the edge off the heat and the tree they were under was so dense it was like an awning. Noah lay back in the grass and stretched. He shouldn't have done it, but it was too late, and he was too comfortable to move. I could have done that just so you'd trust me. Mia stretched out next to him. I can't bring myself to believe that. Before he could stop himself, he asked, Why? Covering her mouth as she yawned, she shrugged rolled onto her side, and laid her head on his shoulder. I don't know. There's something about you. It's hard to explain. He put his arm around her, and the next thing he knew, 
she was fast asleep. As he combed his fingers through her hair, he realized three things. One, Mia Milan was easy to like and even easier to talk to. Two, he liked spending time with her, and if she was in it with the bad guys, she was good at being fake. And three, he was in trouble no matter what the outcome. Innocent or not, he'd be nursing a broken heart because of what might have been. Chapter 10 Spending the day with Noah was quite possibly the best thing Mia had ever experienced. He'd kissed her. It was quick, but oh boy, was it powerful. She wasn't sure if she'd ever be able to kiss someone else again. Not without comparing it to that kiss. And it was a small kiss. What would a kiss be like? A full stomach had knocked her out and she'd woken up next to him after napping under a tree. Talk about lighting up with ideas of things that shouldn't be there. Things such as thinking she could handle doing that every day for at least 60 years. The thought had hit her like a cast iron skillet. She'd known the man less than 48 hours. It was crazy to even let thoughts like those fly, but there they were, flapping and a-flying. After waking up, they walked around aimlessly, talking and laughing. She'd treated him to a snow cone. Of course, he'd protested, but she'd fought back and won. She did like that he was such a gentleman, opening doors for her, making sure she was on the inside when they walked, and that her purse was protected, and curling around her when he thought the crowds felt too handsy or overwhelming. That protective nature was what she liked so much about him. She'd taken his face in her hands, looked into his eyes, and lost herself. He was keeping big secrets and she knew it, mostly because of the way he'd tensed when she touched him. And even knowing that, it changed nothing about how she felt toward him. Without a doubt, she knew he was kind, compassionate, and caring. When she'd said there was something about him and she couldn't explain it, she'd been honest. She had no idea why she trusted him, but she did. It was blatantly obvious when she'd practically begged him to stay in her suite. Besides, she was going to have to keep things from him, too. She couldn't tell him she had a meeting with Mr. Harrison the next day. That's how she kept her clients safe. Not that she wanted to keep Harrison safe. But until she had proof, she needed to extend to him the same confidentiality she provided all her clients. Maybe she'd tell Noah after she got whatever evidence she could off the sleazeball's computer. After all, Noah did work in security— Maybe he'd know who she should give it to. It seemed like maybe something that big should go to an agency a little higher up than just the local police department. Earth to Mia, Noah said and palmed her arm. Everything okay? She startled out of her thoughts and nodded. Oh, yeah, sorry. I can get lost in thoughts at times. I thought you might be upset that we fell asleep. Why? He shrugged. I don't know. We haven't known each other long. Maybe you thought it was weird. I honestly didn't mean to fall asleep, but apparently Cuban tacos are a knockout drug. Oh, no. Actually, it was nice. I thought so, too. I don't know how long we slept. She shook her head. No idea, but I feel better. He smiled. I have to agree. They walked a moment in silence, and then he said, I have an idea. Oh? How about I ask you on a date tonight? The smile he flashed made her pulse jump. Since we didn't get to go out last night. She caught her lip between her teeth. A real date with Noah? Grinning, she tangled her fingers in his. I'd like that. He lifted her hand and touched his lips to the back of it. I'll walk you to your hotel and then I'll pick you up, say, seven? That would be perfect. It would give her the opportunity to boot up her laptop again. After this much time, those stupid files had to be decrypted. Mia smiled. That sounds great! Plus, she'd get to wear the new dress she'd picked up the day when she first got to Miami. Then it's a date. She had no idea what a real date might entail, but it would have to be great. 
Would he dress up even more than he did the night before? She could only dream. Okay, though as charming as you are on a not-real date, I wonder how you'll be on a real date. He chuckled. Maybe I'm horrible on a real date. She lifted an eyebrow as she shot him a glance. No way. You sound pretty sure. Because I am, she said. The entire way to the hotel, they teased each other. When they reached the entrance, he ran his hands down her arms, and the laughter died as he held her gaze. I'm looking forward to tonight. That went double for her. Me too. And just like that on the crowded sidewalk, he bent down and touched his lips to hers ever so quickly. It was as if he knew just what to do to make her want more of him. See you tonight, he said, and stepped back. She stepped inside the hotel and enjoyed the view as he walked away. As soon as he was out of sight, she headed to her room. Inside, she leaned her back against the door and tried to calm the anxiety building. It wasn't like she hadn't spent the last two days with him, but the prospect of a real date gave her goosebumps. She pushed off the door and sauntered up to her bed, flopping down on her back. This man was upending her. How was it even possible to feel so strongly about someone she'd just met? Tomorrow night, she'd be leaving, and she'd double down on that. Wasn't she trying to be spontaneous, though? That's why she'd taken the dare. Which brought her right back to Noah. If not for that moment of spontaneity, she'd never have met him. Perhaps she needed to rethink leaving the next night. The gym had been packed, so instead of taking up client space, Noah had finally mustered enough courage to step inside the hotel Ryder had booked for him. The place was disgusting, but it was better that he stayed here than in his family's vacation home a few miles away. The family's condo was spacious and clean, and the beds were incredible. But as he was on an assignment, he didn't want to put a target on his family in case anyone followed him. The idea that any of them could be hurt because of him made him sick. He was not staying in Mia's room again. Not after he'd kissed her. He'd drop her off after the date and spend the night in the car again. At least it was better than this hotel room. Although, the idea of a second night in the car made his back ache. His phone rang and he answered it. Hey, Ryder. How did you know it'd be me? Really? It could have been Pam. Or Elijah, or Colby, or Gunner. Noah laughed. Yeah, but this techno stuff, no one else speaks that language as well as you. Okay, true. Ryder paused too long. There was a reason he was calling, and by the silence, Noah wasn't going to like it. Give it to me. Ryder sighed. She's meeting Harrison at a coffee house tomorrow morning at eight. They're going to discuss using her program in all his warehouses. Noah pinched the bridge of his nose. That doesn't mean she's working for him. That means he liked the job she did. I'm not convinced she knows who he is. Are you... are you falling for her? Noah rolled his eyes. No, of course not. That's crazy. Besides, she's an assignment. That's all. I'm spending time with her because those are my orders and there's the fact that I haven't told her who I am. Once I do that, it would be over anyway. Ryder took a deep breath. Man, you've got it bad if you're already thinking about how she'll react when you tell her who you are. I don't have anything bad except for an intense desire to wear a hazmat suit in this hotel you booked for me. Seriously, Ryder, this place should be condemned. It's gross enough in here to murder a blacklight. Ryder snorted. I'm sorry, it's all that was left. Want me to see if anything else is available? Please. Noah heard the tapping of keys. Ryder sucked in a sharp breath between his teeth. Spring break isn't the best time to be looking for last-minute hotels. Find me something better than this. Oh, hey, how about a beachfront hotel with a view? Noah exhaled in relief. Tell me they have a room now. They do, and it's Mia's hotel, Ryder said. You want that? 
I don't know if that's a good idea. It could make her suspicious or creeped out. Or not, since he'd stayed with her the night before. If Ryder knew that, Noah would never live it down. Does she know where you've been staying? Yeah, but she knows it's disgusting, too. I think with her knowing that, I might be in the clear. As long as you're sure, we don't need to spook her. Kayla Clark isn't making things easy for Gunner. Noah chuckled. You mean our finder is coming up short? Man, he's ticked. She keeps giving him the slip. And I think he likes her. Gun? No way. I'd have to see it to believe it. Gunner was never settling down. Not after what happened to his high school sweetheart. She was the only girl he'd ever loved, and he had never let anyone get close since. It would take a miracle for Gunn to fall for anyone. Ryder laughed. Yeah, that's what I thought, but I'm telling you, the way he's talking about her, he's got it bad. I need to go. I've got a date, Noah said, and instantly regretted it. A date? Ryder asked, his voice rising on the second word. Yes, I had to think of something to keep hanging out with her. That she seemed to like Noah's company just as much as Noah enjoyed hers wasn't Ryder's concern. Right. Well, I've got your reservation, so go ahead over there. Based on the description of your current digs, you could be catching something just by breathing the air. Noah grabbed his bag and headed out of the room. You're not far off, bud. He took the steps down and tossed the luggage in the back seat of his rental. Call me if you hear anything else. I'll try to get a listening device on her before I drop her off tonight. I'll be waiting for it. Noah ended the call and slipped behind the wheel. He needed proof Mia was innocent. Something to back up what he felt in his gut. That Mia was caught in something she had no knowledge of and that once she knew, she'd be more than willing to help them take Harrison down. At least, that was Noah's hope. Well, one of them. The other he wasn't willing to put into words yet. Chapter 11 With a groan, Mia dropped her hair and pouted. For nearly twenty minutes she debated on what to do with it. Up, down, up, down. It was like she was getting ready for the prom and didn't want her pictures to be terrible. Gathering it again, she pulled it aside and pinned it in place, turning from side to side. A knock at the door startled her. Up it is, she said with one last look as she stepped out of the bathroom, crossed the room, and opened the door. Noah. Holy smokes. Designer jeans, a dark mahogany button-up that made his eyes as bright as light blue LED flashlights, and that incredible cologne worked together like a three-piece orchestra. Her theory that he'd walk down from Olympus was getting some solid proof. His mouth dropped open. You look... wow, he said. I feel underdressed. Uh, yeah, no. Man, those butterflies were vicious tonight. I don't think so. You look great. Smell great, kiss great. His list of greats were getting longer by the second. Whatever boxes she needed checked, he was doing it. And I'm just wearing a cotton sundress. Never thought I'd be jealous of cotton. Squeezing his eyes shut, he said, I said that out loud. She giggled, Yeah, you did, but I ran into a door yesterday, so I'll say we're even. He opened his eyes and sighed. No, Mia, what I said was disrespectful. I shouldn't even have thought it. You aren't an object. Laying a hand on his arm, she smiled. And if we just met, I might be offended, but I know you don't think of me that way. To be honest, it was flattering and I can't say my thoughts were very far from that. He nodded. Still, you look beautiful, but your wit and intelligence are the draw. Whew, deep breaths, girl. Running into a door was bad enough. Swooning would be worse. Would he catch her? Talk about motivation. Only she'd stay upright at the moment. Thank you. Are you ready? Yeah, she said. Let me get my wristlet. She hurried to her bedroom, grabbed it, and hurried back. The door clicked shut behind her, and she wrapped her arms around his bicep. It was like a rock wrapped in a blanket. Yep, 
She was as jealous of Cotton as he was. So, where are we going? Noah shot her a smile. It's a surprise. Her heart skipped a beat. I love surprises. Most people hate them, but you can usually get away with it when it's dinner. She shook her head. I love them. Well, the good ones. I mean, I like to plan, which is why I'm trying to stretch my spontaneity muscle this trip. But birthdays and Christmas and all that type of stuff, I love it. I don't mind birthday surprises, but all the others make me jumpy. Hazard of the job. That's not shocking. I suspect while being a bodyguard, you like to know everything that's going on. Although she was beginning to wonder if bodyguarding was all he did. Something about him said what he did was a little more important than that. They stepped into the elevator and the doors closed. Uh, I need to tell you something and I don't know how to exactly. Oh no, he was going to tell her he was married or something equally awful. What? She braced herself for the answer. I changed hotels to this one today. He held up his hand. My company took mercy on me and there was a cancellation at this one. Mia instantly relaxed and chuckled. It's okay. Did you get a room next door or something? No, actually, it's two floors up. The penthouse. From the photos she'd seen, it was at least a grand a night, and it was like a small apartment with views that were to die for. Whoa! Nice of them to spring for that. He nodded. Yeah, and I appreciate it. She smiled. It totally works in my favor. You being closer is a good thing in my book. Can't say I didn't like that perk either. He smiled and held her gaze. You really do look amazing tonight. I've never seen a more beautiful woman in my life. Her cheeks burned and she cast her gaze to the floor. That can't possibly be true. Noah tipped her chin up with one finger. Absolute truth. Her heart was screaming, kiss me, and her head was screaming, it's a glass elevator, idiot. Did she really want their first real kiss to be in front of the entire hotel? No. At the moment, she wasn't sure she cared. The doors opened and he dropped his hand, tangling his fingers in hers as they walked to the car. The entire drive, she was engulfed in him, from his scent to his voice. And no matter how many times she reminded herself that it was crazy to be this attracted to a man she'd just met, she couldn't deny the irresistible pull he had over her. When they reached the restaurant, surprised wasn't the correct word. Floored was more like it. As he helped her out of the car, she said, This place is booked three months in advance. I know the owner. Her eyes widened. You do? He nodded. Yeah, he had some trouble not too long ago and I helped him out. I have a standing reservation any time I'm in Miami. Oh, he was totally more than a simple bodyguard. Wow. Noah shrugged. It's not that big of a deal. He needed help, that's all. In her head, she said, right. But what came out of her mouth was, that's nice of him. He's a good man with a sweet family. He's successful because he works hard and he treats people well. The food is delicious too, which helps. Before they even got to the door, she knew that was true. The smells coming from the place made her stomach growl. Once inside, Noah gave his name and they didn't even wait. They were taken to a booth in the far back corner. It was cozy, private, and romantic with rose petals spread across the table. This is like a fairy tale, Mia said. It's so nice. Instead of taking a seat across from her, he slipped into the booth beside her, stretching his arm along the back of it. I was hoping you'd like it. I swear I'm not trying to impress you. Once you taste the food, you'll know why I wanted to come here. Well, consider me impressed anyway. Thank you. His arm came off the back of the booth and he pulled her flush against him. I think I could get used to this. Maybe not this fancy of a place, but spending time with you. Wherever that might be. Greasy burger joint, taco truck, or whatever. A waiter stopped at the table. Might I interest you in some wine? He asked. 
I don't drink, so I'll take sweet tea, but Noah said and looked at Mia. If you'd like something, go ahead. He didn't drink? Another piece of information about Noah that she'd tuck away. And if he wasn't drinking, neither was she. Just some water and I'll be good. The waiter smiled and left them alone again. You don't drink? She asked. No, he whispered. She so wanted to press him as to why, but something in his voice said that it was a conversation for a different time. Perhaps when they'd known each other longer than a couple of days. I respect that. I want to tell you why, but I don't... Mia cupped his cheek. You don't have to tell me why. His eyebrows knitted together as he held her gaze, like he was warring with himself. It's not that I don't want to. I'm afraid you'll think less of me. She dropped her hand. I'd think less of you if you were still drinking. He touched her cheek, skimming his fingertips down and along her jaw. Just as she was thinking she wished she could will him to kiss her, he did. Only this time, there was nothing quick about it. Slow, soft, and delicate, like a slow flame with the slightest current of air fanning it. His kisses were everything she'd hoped for and more. The anticipation paled in comparison to the actual kiss. And fireworks? It was like every stand in Texas went off at once. With the last brush of his lips, he deepened the kiss, and she didn't care if the world slipped off his axis. Her hands threaded through his hair as he pulled her even closer. The feel of him against her, the way he held her, she felt desperate for all of him. The clearing of a throat broke through the bubble of the moment, but that didn't lessen how close he held her. But after what she'd just experienced, a millimeter was too much distance. With their drinks dropped off and their orders taken, the waiter left again. As soon as the man was out of earshot, Noah returned his focus to her. I hate that you were in that contest but I find myself grateful that you were. Mia nodded. Yeah, me too. Was it possible that this was just a vacation infatuation and that the second it was over, the feeling she was having for him would be too? Her heart broke at the mere thought. She couldn't possibly feel this way about him and it not be real. She'd never believed in soulmates, but as he held her gaze, she was becoming convinced that she was wrong. Her soul longed for his, and every second was like a whisper that she'd found someone she could fall head over heels for. This wasn't a real date. No matter how much Noah wanted it to be, it wasn't. He was keeping Mia close because it was his job. It didn't matter that she was an oasis in a desert of loneliness, or that her skin was soft that her shoulders were delicate and her smile made the world disappear. How the smell of her citrus shampoo made him think of bright sunshine. That her kiss short-circuited his brain and he was still recovering. They weren't a couple. He wasn't her, whatever his label might be, and she wasn't someone he could be with, no matter how things turned out. He'd lied about his name and kept who he was from her. And before he dropped her off, he'd be attaching a bug to her purse so Ryder could hear her conversation with Harrison. His main problem at the moment was that no matter how hard he tried to convince himself that this wasn't real, his heart was having none of it. He was falling like a penny down an endless well. What was he going to do? You've gotten pretty quiet, Mia said as she glanced at him. He'd put the top down on the car he'd rented and taken her on a drive. He shouldn't have, but it popped out of his mouth before he could reel himself in. Enjoying the company and the night air. She nodded as she looked up. It is incredible. Not as great as a Texas sky, but it'll do in a pinch. He chuckled. Yeah, there's nothing quite like a Texas sky. In Hilldale, you can go about a mile or so out of town and it's so dark you can't see your hand in front of your face. There are a gazillion stars, and they just pepper the sky like diamonds. Is that where you live now? No, I live in Dallas. It's easier to maintain a client base there. 
Granted, I can do what I do anywhere, it just makes it easier if there are emergencies. He nodded. I can see that. You have to travel a lot for your job, don't you? Yeah, sometimes I'm gone a while, too. She leaned her head against the seat. Is that hard? Being gone all the time for long periods of time? Does it get old? Noah swallowed hard. Sometimes. More often than not, if he was honest. Not that he wanted to quit, but a little balance would be nice. Having someone to come home to, to love, to be loved by. But that someone couldn't be Mia. Even if he hadn't lied to her, there was the issue of his discharge. I guess we should get back. Sure, she said softly. The silence stretched as he drove them back to the hotel. As the top of the car clicked into place, Mia covered his hand with hers. I think my question was a lot more loaded than I intended. He leaned his head against the seat and looked at her. It's okay. In an instant, she was out of her seatbelt and leaning across the console, brushing the back of her hand across his cheek. His eyes slid closed as her cool skin caressed his. You are worthy to be loved, Noah. His breath caught and his eyes popped open. What? His worth had been in question since his discharge, but he thought he'd buried that pretty well. It wasn't as if his job afforded him the luxury of a relationship. Whatever secrets are locked behind those layers of walls you've built, they don't change the fact that you are a good man. Whatever happened, it very well could have been your fault, but not because it was deliberate, she said, and held his gaze. You can't change the past. You can't will it to be different. The only thing you can do with the events of the past is to learn from them and try not to make the same mistakes. What makes you say that? Am I wrong? The lump in his throat kept him from speaking, so he shook his head. The level of emotion she'd excavated took him off guard and made him uncomfortable. She smoothed his hair back. Please don't run. If you haven't noticed, I'm pretty stinking terrific at keeping details under lock and key. When he didn't respond, she leaned in and kissed him. He needed to stop her, but the longer he stayed close to her, the more he wanted to be close to her. Breaking the kiss, he held her at arm's length. There are things you need to know before you kiss me anymore. Things I can't tell you right this second, and you need to know them before this continues. There. He'd done it. It had taken every ounce of willpower, but he'd stopped whatever this was between them. Mia tilted her head, a small smile playing on her lips. And this is why I say you are a good man. He squeezed his eyes shut and shook his head. I'm not. Noah, she said softly. Whatever this is, it has me a little scared too. I've always been told courage is being afraid and still running into the fire. Was he afraid? Was that why he was pulling away? Not because he was trying to keep from hurting her, but to keep himself from getting hurt. That could be part of it. Until he could tell her the truth, though, he needed to keep himself in check. He opened his eyes, and whatever determination he'd mustered disappeared again. Into the fire, then? Mia smiled. A little singed hair never hurt anyone. Let me walk you to your room. Will it come with a good night kiss? He chuckled. I'm not entirely certain I could stop myself. Jeez. Every minute with her, the grip she had on him tightened. Another 24 hours and it would be in a vice. Could he hope that maybe she'd understand why he had to lie? That putting a known shipper used by human traffickers behind bars was a noble reason? What would his heart feel like if she didn't agree? Crushed. He was pretty sure the correct feeling would be crushed. Chapter 12 Mia floated down the sidewalk. Was there a spring in her step? Oh, yeah. Noah had dropped her off the night before and kissed her like his life depended on it. 
Her lips were bruised, and they tingled hours afterward. She'd spent her dreams lying in his arms in a field of wildflowers. It was cheesy, but it didn't keep her from waking up with a smile on her face. The only thing crimping her Noah binge, besides the realization that she was leaving him that night, which thought she quickly shoved from her mind, was the meeting with Mr. Harrison. It wasn't until she'd walked into the coffee shop that her nerves caught up with her. What if she didn't see what she thought she saw? What if she was being judge and jury and he was innocent? Her gut said he wasn't, but without proof, it was just her word. Ms. Milan, Mr. Harrison said as he shook her hand and took a seat across from her. Good morning. He smiled and she worked not to shiver. Even knowing Noah was keeping secrets, she knew in her heart he was a good man. I'm not, he'd said with a pained look on his face, a tremble in his voice. Whatever guilt he was carrying wouldn't weigh as much if he wasn't a good man. This man? Mr. Harrison, he had a rotten feel to him. I see you already have coffee. Morning fuel, she smiled. I'm more of an energy shot guy, but this is a nice place. I thought so. He leaned forward on the table with his arms. I guess we should get down to business so I'm not keeping you from anything. You're not. Well, then I'll get to it. I'd like your program installed in the systems I have along the California coast, a few in Seattle, and several more along the East Coast. I'd like them linked in a network so that I have access to it anywhere I might be. That's possible, correct? She nodded. Yes, absolutely. I would suggest having your own dedicated server, though. That way, data breaches would be at a minimum. My program will definitely keep you secure, but there will always be someone wanting to take information and hold it for ransom. With a dedicated server, you'd have more control. Giving him all this information made her queasy, but she needed to keep herself in his good graces. After tonight, when she had her proof, then she could throw up on his high-dollar loafers. It sounds expensive, but it would provide my customers with an added layer of security. With a dedicated server, you wouldn't be sharing the hosting with anyone else. It can be a little expensive, depending on your needed data level, but again, security is really priceless. Mr. Harrison nodded and sat back. I agree. If you'll email me your data requirements, I'll work up the cost and give you a rundown of what it would be monthly. I'll have my lead tech guy send you the information as soon as he can. He crossed his arms over his chest. You know, I tried Googling you, and I found nothing. I keep my online presence to a minimum. It provides my clients with extra security. It's true that with my skill I could leave no footprints if I wanted, but I work with computers all day. When I'm done, I like living in the real world. She smiled. I can understand that. Is there anything else? He shook his head. No, I'm just disappointed you have a boyfriend. There's nothing sexier than an intelligent woman. Inside, she was doing the spiderweb dance, trying to get the ick off. This man didn't care one bit about her intelligence. He was a feral pig. Blech. I appreciate the compliment, but I'm taken. Or she wanted to be. By Noah. Perhaps she should have risked him finding out who she was working for and had him meet her at the coffee shop. He was in security, after all, and at the moment, she felt a little nervous. Lucky man, he said and stood. Well, Ms. Milan, enjoy the rest of your stay in Miami, and it was nice seeing you again. She stood and shook his hand. Thank you. You too. Not. She sat again and watched him leave. There was something off about that man. Aside from what she suspected, she got the eeriest feeling he was dangerous as well. Then again, she could just be projecting. Maybe her mind was messing with her. There wasn't any proof he'd done anything wrong, and she'd even begun to doubt what she saw. It was a warehouse. Of course people would take breaks and sit on the docks. It was hot work. 
Cool air was blowing in, and maybe they were just enjoying it. Her overactive imagination was getting the best of her. Cracking the files would prove it. She'd been seeing things. Mr. Harrison was just sleazy, and that wasn't a crime. Against humanity, sure. Just not the jail kind. The second Noah saw Mia leave her room, he slipped inside and dialed Ryder. He'd waited down the hall so he'd have as much time as possible to search her room. As quickly as he could, he began going through her things in the hope that he'd finish in time to catch her at the restaurant with Harrison. If the man had plans to hurt Mia, Noah wanted to be there to stop him. Hey, I'm in. Are you set up if I find it? Noah asked as he slipped a listening device under the lip of the nightstand drawer. He would have done it the first night he was in there, but, well, he didn't have his head on straight. Yep, I'm ready to go. How was the date? Noah rolled his eyes. It wasn't a date. I was staying close to a target. That's all. A target he enjoyed holding, kissing, and maybe falling for. Another reason he was glad he'd waited to bug Mia. If he'd done it the first night, Ryder would be giving him even more grief. You like her. You defended her a little too quickly yesterday. I would have done that for anyone. Ryder laughed. No, you wouldn't have. Just admit you like her. I don't have the patience for this conversation. I've got a limited amount of time, Noah said as he sifted through her suitcase, working to keep it looking exactly the same. Are you listening in on Mia's conversation? Is she safe? Ryder hesitated as if he was going to press the issue and Noah braced himself. She's fine. They're talking about expanding her system to his other warehouses up the Florida coast. Noah let out a soft breath in relief. Is she saying she'll do it? She's mostly skirting the issue, saying she has several jobs lined up, and while she normally has a good idea of how long they'll take, this one was a large connected computer system and she'll have to get back to Harrison. Another breath of relief. At least she wasn't jumping at the chance to work with Harrison. Anything yet? Ryder asked. No, and I don't think there will be. Noah stopped at a small closet and opened the door. Nestled inside was a safe. I'll bet money she put it in the safe. Ryder sighed. Yeah, she does take her security seriously. Noah smiled. Mia wasn't like most people. She takes security to a whole new level. He closed the closet door and made his way back to the exit. Seems like it. Okay, well, break in. I need that laptop. This isn't your run-of-the-mill hotel safe. I don't have the skill to get into it. If we want what's on her laptop, we're going to need to ask, Noah said as he peeked out her door. With the hall clear, he let the door click behind him, walked to the elevator, and waited for it. Ryder cursed under his breath. All right, I'll do things differently. The next time she logs on, I'll be ready. We don't know that she's working for him, Ryder. She was meeting with him this morning, wasn't she? In talks to expand her program to the rest of his disgusting business? The elevator arrived and Noah stepped on. That doesn't mean she knows. It means, look, if she doesn't know, fine. But until we know that for sure, you need to treat her like she does. Noah pinched the bridge of his nose. Mia wasn't working for Harrison. In his gut, he knew it. But he also knew Ryder was right. There was nothing definitive yet. Taking the chance could put their mission in danger and keep Harrison out of prison. I know, and I am. She has no idea who I am or what I'm doing here. I wouldn't jeopardize this, and you know it. I know. Just doing what you'd do if the roles were reversed. Yeah, I know. Thanks. They ended the call, and he decided it would be better to go for a walk than to go straight to Mia. She would be safe while she was meeting Harrison in public. The need to see her was almost more than he could stand, but he needed a moment to clear his head. Having the morning to himself was a good thing, even if it made him realize just how lonely he'd been. As much as he liked Mia, it wasn't in the cards, and just because he felt something with her he'd never felt with anyone else didn't mean he'd never feel it again. He raked his hand through his hair as he walked out of the hotel and stopped. Lies. 
He was lying to her, and now he was lying to himself. And he couldn't for the life of him figure out how it wouldn't end badly. It would end horribly, but he had a job to do. Instead of the stroll to clear his head, he needed to tighten the bolts and get back to his assignment. With a renewed determination, he set off in the direction of the restaurant where Mia was meeting Harrison. Harrison. Chapter 13 Mia roamed the streets of Miami. After her meeting with Mr. Harrison, she'd left the coffee shop with no real destination in mind. She and Noah had made plans to meet for lunch because she had no idea how long her meeting would run. She'd sent him a text letting him know she was done, and when he didn't text back, a nagging in the back of her mind questioned if he was maybe avoiding her after their talk the night before. He had kissed her before they'd parted, and nothing felt off. Maybe nothing was, and she was being clingy. The thought didn't sit well at all. She wasn't one of those girls, the kind who couldn't function without a man. Still, she sure missed him something fierce. His absence was profound, and that also struck her hard. She was leaving in nine or so hours, and while that sounded like a lot, when it came to time with Noah, it felt like seconds. You should get the hat! A voice pierced through her thoughts. She turned and found a man standing next to her as she gazed in the window of a shop lining the sidewalk. A hat? He smiled. The one that's hanging just inside. Isn't that what you're staring at? Oh, no, I'm just... Then it hit her. She'd been so lost in thought that someone had stood next to her and she hadn't even noticed it. Noah was right. She wasn't used to paying attention. I think I have all the hats I need. Thank you. Have a good day. She turned and walked away. The man caught up to her. I'm sorry. Did I say something wrong? No, I'm late meeting someone for lunch. She had more than 30 minutes, but this guy didn't need to know that. He nodded and shot her a glance. It kind of feels like I did something wrong. You're practically running from me. Yeah, she was. Noah's overprotective, hyper-alert nature had rubbed off on her. They were on a busy street filled with people. What could the man possibly do? Mia slowed her gait. You're right, I'm sorry. It's Miami and it's spring break. All the stories I've heard make me cautious. I understand. I've heard the stories, too. I'm sorry if I came across as creepy. You didn't. I really am running late to meet someone. The man smiled and stuck out his hand. Camden Smith. Mia shook it, but something cautioned her to refrain from giving her name. Blake Leuston. He regarded her for a split second as his lips turned down, and she knew she'd made the right call. Once again, his smile returned, and he held her hand almost too long. Nice to meet you, Blakely. Well, it's nice to meet you, but I do need to get going, she said and began walking again. Camden strolled next to her. Do you mind if I walk with you? Silently, she prayed Noah would be early. Uh, sure. Her reasoning was that it was better to know this guy was tagging along than to worry he'd try to follow her without her being aware. Have you liked your stay in Miami so far? She could sum up the collective greatness of her trip in one word. Noah. Yes, it's been wonderful. It's so alive and colorful. I had Cuban tacos yesterday that set me on fire, but they were delicious. Oh? Mind if I ask what restaurant? It was a food truck, not far from the Vizcaya Museum. He smiled. A museum lover as well? I thought it was just me. I love them. All the history and grandeur. I haven't been to the Vizcaya. Did you enjoy it? Oh, it's incredible. Lots of rich history, a beautiful garden, and the views of the water are fantastic. Good to know. I may have to check it out. You should. Another block or so and she'd be at the restaurant. What if Noah wasn't there? Could she defend herself if this guy tried something? Why was she so paranoid anyway? I take it you aren't from Miami either. What brings you here? He looked up and to the left. Her heart plummeted to her stomach. According to the class she took, whatever came out of his mouth would be a lie. You'd be correct. I'm here for a dental convention. 
Yeah, and she had a ticket to ride a unicorn. Neat. Not really. They're boring. It concluded last night, and I stayed an extra day so I could mill around Miami. Another half a block. Inwardly, she pleaded for Noah to be waiting on her. That's nice. It has been. I've even had the pleasure of walking next to a beautiful woman. Although it seems she's a bit nervous. Mia laughed. I'm not nervous, I just don't want to be late to my lunch date. Just then, Noah came into view, and she'd never been happier to see anyone in her life. She pounded the pavement, launching herself into his arms and hugging him around the neck. It's so good to see you. Is something wrong? Noah asked. The man walking next to me, I don't have a good feeling about him. All of a sudden, she couldn't stop shaking. It wasn't until that moment that she realized just how afraid she was. She hated that feeling. Noah leaned back, his eyebrows drawn together. The man walking next to you? She looked over her shoulder and Camden was gone. Her heart fluttered like hummingbird wings. Yes, that man. He said his name was Camden. I was looking in a shop window and he started talking to me. I asked him a question and I knew he was lying. Something about him was off and I can't explain it. He squeezed her tightly to him. It's okay. Go with your instinct. If you think he was bad, he's bad. If you hadn't been here. And against her wishes, tears pooled and spilled down her cheeks. Noah put his lips against her ear and whispered, But I am, and you're okay. I won't let anyone hurt you. I promise. She pulled back. I feel stupid. I wasn't paying attention. After everything you said, I wasn't observant. He brushed his thumb along her cheek, drying her tears. But the moment you did become aware, you paid attention to him. You didn't brush off the weird feeling. You did great. Mia sniffed. I deserve to be lectured. A lecture right now isn't going to help you. You deserve to be held and told everything's going to be okay. I would like to teach you some self-defense before you leave Miami tonight. Just small moves that could come in handy. She hugged him and buried her face in his neck. Noah had to be the kindest man she'd ever met. No lecture, no harsh words. Just pure compassion. I don't know that I want to leave now. Or if I do, I may have to kidnap you and take you with me. His laughter rumbled in his chest and vibrated through her entire body. Kidnap me, huh? Yes, or hire you as my bodyguard for the duration of my vacation. The more time she spent with Noah, the less inclined she was to leave him. She liked how safe she felt when she was with him. What if she extended her stay in Miami, if he didn't want to come with her? Would it hurt to spend her vacation in one spot? Her grandma would understand right? I see. How about we go inside, get something to eat, and let the adrenaline wear off, okay? Mia nodded. Adrenaline had nothing to do with wanting to keep him. She was falling for him. She wanted him to come with her because she wanted to know if falling would turn to fallen. It was looking that way. Unless he kicked a kitten, she could picture herself down for the count. Someone living in Harrison's world of sin wouldn't be shaking so bad their teeth were chattering. Unless Mia was the best actress in the world, Noah was more convinced than ever that she wasn't working for the man. He also had orders, and until there was physical proof of her innocence, he'd follow them. He had tailed her after her meeting, watching her wander aimlessly for about two hours as he debated whether he should keep his distance or not. He'd seen the man she was talking to and sent Ryder a picture of him. So far, Ryder was still doing a search, but Noah had a gut feeling the guy who had followed her was someone working for Harrison, which was odd. Harrison never took care of anyone on his home turf. It made Noah wonder if Harrison was changing things up and if he needed to stick a little closer to Mia just to keep her safe as he'd promised. I literally threw myself at you she said as she pressed herself against him in the booth they'd been seated in. I don't mind. He had the pleasure of being close to her, and it had given him the perfect opportunity to snatch the bug from her bag and turn it off. 
Ryder could hear all he wanted of Mia's meeting with Harrison. Noah's conversations with her were off limits. In his book, it was a double win when she jumped into his arms. She lifted her gaze to his, and tears ran down her cheeks. I promise I'm not this clingy. Brushing his hand across one cheek and then the other, he wiped her tears away and then touched his lips to each side. I've never been one of those guys who like chasing a woman. Personally, it's never made sense to me. Why wouldn't someone want to feel wanted? You're not just saying that, are you? He smiled. No. She pulled her bottom lip between her teeth. I texted you when my meeting was over and you never texted me back. I thought... I thought maybe you might have changed your mind or something. Yeah, he'd seen it, and yeah, he'd actually considered changing his mind about spending so much time with her. So much so that he'd called Colby. Not that Colby was the go-to for relationship advice, but Noah knew he'd be painfully honest. Their friendship was different than the others in his company. After what they'd been through, they were all tight. But Noah and Colby were prisoners longer than the other guys. They'd been kept more than a month longer. Once their release was arranged, it had shaped their friendship and made them closer. The advice Colby gave him was to do what he'd been ordered to do and stay close, even though he was falling for her. Noah's feelings were irrelevant. At this point, it didn't matter if Mia or Noah would be hurt in the end. The team had worked too hard, and it was time to get the man off the streets. Of course, Colby was right, and Noah knew it. By the time he'd hung up, it was nearly time to meet her. He should have texted her, but if he was honest, despite knowing Colby was right, it had taken the walk to the restaurant to get his feet under him. He cast his gaze to the table. He'd arrived at the restaurant with the determination that he'd let her down easy. They could be friends, but that was it, because he just couldn't be tied down at the moment but as hard as he tried, the lie he'd taken time to weave just wouldn't fall off his tongue. Actually, I did see your text. I have too many secrets and I don't want to hurt you, but I can't seem to stay away, even if I should. Oh. Well, at least you're honest. Honest. The word was like a knife to the heart. If he said anything, he'd be going against Pam's direct order. Something he said promised her he'd never do. Not just because he respected her, but because if he did it, then the rest of the guys would think they could too. He didn't want Pam losing control because he couldn't keep his feelings in check. Feelings he shouldn't even be having. I try. Sometimes I can't be. Sometimes I have to lie. She chewed her lip. Yeah, I bet you do especially when you're working. He nodded. She was so close to the truth. Maybe this conversation would replay when he finally told her the truth. Maybe she wouldn't hate him the rest of her life. Mia hugged him around the chest. I'm grateful you were here. Noah wrapped his arms around her and dropped a kiss on the top of her head. I am too. He didn't recognize the guy who'd been next to her. More than likely, Harrison had wanted to keep tabs on her today. Had she told him she was leaving tonight? Would he try to stop her? That wasn't his typical way of doing things, but then again, Mia wasn't typical. She'd been inside his computer system. Was it possible she'd seen something and he couldn't let her get out of Miami? There's a gym not far from here, the one my friend owns. We'll eat lunch, let it settle while we go back to the hotel and change, and then we'll go there. I'll teach you a few things so you can protect yourself. Thank you. She leaned back. Not how you expected to spend your vacation, huh? No, but I'll enjoy my vacation a lot better knowing you can take care of yourself while you're traveling. She palmed his cheek and kissed him. That kidnapping thing I mentioned is becoming a real plan. And the idea of being kidnapped by her was more than appealing. His orders hadn't changed. He was supposed to be staying close. What if I said I'd let you? I'd say, show me those moves and I just might. He smiled. Okay. That's if she got to leave Miami. There was no telling what Harrison would do. 
According to Ryder, he'd heard her speaking to Harrison about providing internet security to his other warehouses through the bug Noah had planted. If that was true, would he try to kill her? Or was he only doing that so it would throw the police off his trail when she washed up on shore or someone found her in a dumpster? Whatever the case, Noah's plan to keep his head clear was going to be a challenge, especially now that he was going to have to stick even closer and possibly travel with her. His heart was firmly in her grasp, and that vice he'd worried about was slowly pinching closed. Chapter 14 This was what Noah loved, teaching someone how to protect themselves, especially women. He hated seeing a woman afraid and feeling out of control when just a little bit of instruction would give them power over the situation they were in. With lunch over, he and Mia had returned to their hotel, changed, and driven across town to the gym. Now, they were in the ring, and Mia was catching on quickly. She'd already taken him down once. The smile on her face when she realized she'd bested him was better than an actual medal, which he would know since he had a couple. Okay, Noah said and took her hand, flattening it against his. In close combat, the best way to break free is to use the butt of your hand and smash it as hard as you can into the assailant's nose. Don't throw a punch. Unless you have the muscle to back it up, you're wasting your energy and possibly hurting yourself. A good thrust into the nose will deliver the most damage in the quickest time. The idea is to get yourself out of the situation as quickly as possible. Mia nodded. Okay, but I thought it could kill someone by driving bone into the brain. He dropped her hand. It can. Her lips parted with a gasp. I don't want to kill anyone. If it comes down to you or the attacker... I want you to have the knowledge that gives you the opportunity to walk away. I'm not saying this is a move you have to use, but you should know how. Mia nodded. So, just thrust? Yes, as hard and as fast as you can. He took her hand again, flattened it, and showed her where to hit. They practiced the move a few times and then moved on to several others that would help her if she ever found herself in trouble. An hour or so later... Mia wiped her brow with her arm as Noah held the rope so she could exit the ring. He followed her through, and they walked to their bags sitting on the bench against the wall, taking a second to catch their breath. I never thought I'd be taking an impromptu self-defense lesson, Mia said, and took a gulp of water. More people need to have them. With just a little bit of knowledge, you go from victim to victor. He untwisted the top off his water bottle and downed it. You should do this for a living. The passion you have for it is evident. You're patient, skilled, and encouraging. If I had known it would be like this, I may have taken a class sooner. She smiled. He nodded. I've thought about it. Maybe one day. What's made you so passionate about it? Seeing women and children traded and sold like things. I don't like women, or anyone else for that matter, being subjected to the will of another. I want people to know how to fight back so that they have a choice. You don't have to stay in an abusive situation. You don't have to be afraid to walk down the street. You don't have to be catcalled. There's power in knowing you can defend yourself. You like giving people control over their circumstances. Yeah, I do. She chewed her bottom lip as her lips curved up. Thank you for teaching me all this. It does boost my confidence. See? A little confidence is all you need to drop guys like the one who scared you. Mia stepped closer. I desperately want to see the East Coast. I can't come this far and not at least attempt some of the things on the list my grandma and I made. I know it's crazy and strange and weird for someone you hardly know to ask you to drop everything and travel with them, but I'd really like it if you came with me. For a split second, he was thrilled at the prospect of traveling up the coast with Mia. Then, he remembered she was asking Noah Willandry, and the excitement was gone. These were his orders, to get her to trust him so he could stick close. And he'd followed them well. A sick feeling settled in the pit of his stomach at the thought. Let me think about it, he said. 
Did he really have a choice? No, but maybe he could figure out how to handle spending so much time confined with her. That's all I'm asking. She pulled out her phone and glanced at it before returning it to her bag. I'm hopefully leaving at nine, so you have five hours to mull it over. So you've picked a time to leave? She nodded. I've picked one, but that doesn't mean it'll happen. This is a vacation, after all. Noah caught a little nervous undertone. She was hiding something. Why did that bother him so much? He was hiding things, too, but he wasn't working for a known trafficker. Neither was she, he hoped. She cleared her throat. Besides, if you were on the fence and needed an extra hour, I'm flexible. Noah laughed. That's good to know. She balled her fists in his t-shirt, lifted on her toes, and touched her lips to his. Pulling back ever so slightly, breath mingling with his, she said, I've never in my life done this before. I'm a boring computer geek who likes eating popcorn, watching old movies, getting caught in the rain, and I'm not much on yoga. It was a fantasy, and yet he couldn't help himself from smiling as the lyrics played in his head. How about the rest of the song? I don't know yet, she said, and touched her lips to his again, sliding her hands up his chest and circling them around his neck. Noah was officially in trouble. That slippery cliff he'd been standing on gave way, and he tumbled down. Whatever happened at this point, he'd be a broken mess by the end if it meant he had to give her up. The course was set, and there was nothing he could do to change direction. Mia shut her hotel door and leaned her back against it. She liked Noah. More than liked him. He made her giddy. Gave her butterflies that landed on her goosebumps. Set her nerves on fire and sent a thrill all the way to her toes. She'd never felt about anyone the way she felt about him. It was sudden, strong, and totally nuts, but there was no denying how she felt. After spending a few hours teaching her some self-defense, they'd come back to the hotel to get a shower and dress. The plan was to meet up again in a couple of hours and spend the last little bit of time they had together, if he didn't end up deciding to do something crazy like come with her. She couldn't believe she'd actually asked him. Even as she'd asked, she'd wondered what on earth had come over her. He had his own plans. He couldn't just drop everything and travel up the coast with her. But the less logical part of her brain had taken over and asked anyway. The worst he could say was no. And that didn't mean he didn't like her. It meant he already had plans. Her phone rang and she pulled it out, putting it to her ear. Mr. Harrison, what can I do for you? Hi, Ms. Milan. I apologize for interrupting your vacation again, but my tech guy says he's seeing some strange activity. Almost like someone's made it through, what's that he called it? Oh, the firewall. She smiled. After downloading his hard drive, she'd created a program to mask her activity. But on the off chance that the IT guy was smarter than Mr. Harrison let on, She'd written another program to make it look as if they were being attacked by someone so they didn't suspect her. Let me get my laptop out and I'll check for you. Thank you. Once her laptop was fired up, she pulled up the system she used to monitor her clients. It looks like it's coming from the Cayman Islands. Let me write a patch and that should stop them in their tracks. I don't know what I'd do without you. Thank you. Give me ten minutes and the activity should stop. If it doesn't, feel free to call. Mr. Harrison sighed. Again, thank you. Have a good evening. Sorry for troubling you. No trouble. This is why I monitor activity after I install my system. It's not uncommon that I need to tweak things a little, she said, as she took the little bit of code out that was sending the false alarms. That makes me glad you're on the payroll. Mia shivered. She wasn't going to be on his payroll, but she'd give him that news when she was safely out of Miami. Me too. Have a good evening. You too. She ended the call and pulled up the encrypted files to see if they'd been unlocked yet, only to find her program still working on them. Whoever had encoded them knew what they were doing for it to take so long. This was almost a federal government level of encoding. 
something like the CIA would use. But whatever was in those files would need to wait. At the moment, she needed to get showered and dressed so she could meet up with Noah. As much as she wanted to know what was in those files, she wanted him even more. Chapter 15 With the phone to his ear, Noah paced his room. A guy in a light gray suit and pencil tie followed her for about a block today. I've sent a picture to Ryder. Good. What else? She's asked me to come with her as she drives up the coast. I can't. Pam was silent a moment, most likely trying to hear what he wasn't saying. She was good at that. So, you like her? He folded into one of the chairs in his suite. There is no way she knows who Harrison is or what he does. It's not possible. I know we don't have solid proof, but I'm telling you, she doesn't. Do you think if we asked to see her laptop, she'd willingly let us? I don't know. She's pretty tight-lipped about her clients. That was putting it mildly. Pam's nails clicked as she drummed them. I'm sending Elijah, Mason, and Ryder. Colby's tagging along, but he won't be staying. I wanted him to talk to you before he went on this new assignment since I don't know how long it'll take, and I could be out of the picture by then. They'll be there in a few hours. Keep her close and in the dark until we get there. I thought for sure you'd be on the plane as well. She was quiet a little too long. I would have, but as soon as this is over, you'll be in charge. I thought it would be good to go ahead and get your feet wet by giving the orders once the team gets there. Noah exhaled loudly. Okay. Back to Mia. You do understand that if you're wrong about her, Harrison will no doubt use her to get away. Hundreds, if not thousands, of women and children will be in danger. Not only would we be bringing him down, but we'd be crippling that entire network. Are you willing to risk that for a gut feeling? She's on the phone with Harrison as we speak. I'm not saying she's guilty, but she is working for him. On the phone with Harrison? Great. His head dropped back and he closed his eyes. What choice did he have? If he was wrong and Harrison remained free, would he ever be able to forgive himself? The answer was a resounding no. What kind of man would he be to put his own wants and desires ahead of the safety of countless people? Not a man he could look in the mirror. No, I'm not willing to risk it. What do you want me to do? He did nothing to hide the resignation in his voice. I want you to do whatever it takes to make sure Harrison is taken off the streets once and for all. I don't want loopholes, technicalities, or anything else to come between that man and a prison cell door. Noah lifted his head, raked his hand through his hair, and nodded. Then I'll do what it takes to make it happen. There was that silence again. Noah, if she's as decent and wonderful as you believe her to be, she wouldn't want you to do anything less. I know. Doesn't make the lying any easier. Do you care about her? He leaned forward and draped his left arm across his knee. Yeah, Pam, I do. I know I shouldn't, but... Then you're not doing this for a faceless person. Think of her when you're doing it. Women like her go missing every day. Would you want Harrison to get his hands on her? I'd find him and kill him. There's your motivation. Remember that. We'll see you in two hours, give or take. Noah stood. I'm taking her to dinner. Do you want me to text Ryder once we're done? Yeah, that would be good. Pam ended the call, and Noah tossed his phone into the chair before strolling to the bathroom. He turned on the shower and stripped as he waited for the water to heat. He was hot, sweaty, grumpy, and confused. Not confused, flustered. And he hated it. He liked it when things were cut and dry, black and white. Feelings made things messy. And messy things never ended well. At least, not in his line of work. Stepping into the water, he hung his head as he let it pour over him. How could he get a handle on things when they seemed so out of control? No, not things. Himself. He'd held her hand, kissed her, 
made her think something was between them when there couldn't be. All because he didn't keep the goal in the forefront of his mind. How could he step back now without hurting her? If he slammed on the brakes, would she withdraw the offer to tag along with her as she went up the coast? And now that he knew Pam wanted him to go with her, he couldn't see any option other than to continue things with her that should never have been started. What kind of balance could he strike? One foot in, the other out? She was perceptive. She'd know if he pulled away. So what did he do? He scrubbed his face with his hands and then braced himself against the wall. He had someone else to consider, and he'd never been so torn in his life. How on earth was he going to find a solution before he met up with her? Could he? Mia shot Noah another glance. The second she opened the hotel door, she knew something was bothering him. In the last hour, he'd been quiet and reserved, and it almost seemed as though he was lost or hurt. He had secrets, things he couldn't confide, but that didn't mean she couldn't be someone he could lean on. They decided to take a stroll in a nearby park before going to dinner, and it was relatively quiet at the moment. Pulling him to a stop, she faced him. I have no idea what's going on, but I'm here. That seemed to make it worse because his shoulders sagged and his bright blue eyes turned cloudy. I'm sorry, I just have a lot on my mind. I can see that. You're standing in concrete shoes in the middle of quicksand. With a half-hearted chuckle, he nodded. That's a good way to put it. Does it have anything to do with my asking you to come with me? If it does, please know there's no pressure. It was beyond last minute. If you have plans, it's okay. She smiled. Really? He held her gaze, heartbeat after heartbeat. You're still wanting me to come, knowing I have secrets I can't share with you? She lifted on her toes and touched her lips to his. Yes. What if my secrets are not bad, but they were hurtful? Pursing her lips, she cast her gaze to the grass. Hurtful? It was Noah. Yes, she just met him, but what man would pay all that money for a private beach and then abandon it because the person they just met was afraid? Or drop everything to teach a woman self-defense? He was a bodyguard, ex-army ranger, and she knew in her heart of hearts that he was decent and kind. If he had secrets that were hurtful, there was a good reason for it. Mia lifted her gaze to his. I'll take my chances. Is that right? She caught her bottom lip between her teeth and grinned. This hulking man taught me self-defense. I can kick your tail. Noah tipped his head back and laughed. You can, huh? He was that good of a teacher? Yep. The light had returned to his eyes as he smiled. I would love nothing more than to spend time with you. Count me in. She threw her arms around his neck. More time with him? Who said her vacation ever had to end? Her job could be done anywhere. I'm so excited. She leaned back and kissed his cheek. Thank you. His hand slid up her back and into her hair, cupping the back of her head. If kisses are words spoken from the heart, I hope you hear what I'm about to say. He tightened his grip on her, wrapping his arms around her in such an embrace that made her pulse race. And then he brushed his lips against hers in a touch so feathery and tender that it made her shiver. Strong and gentle a succinct sentence that summed him up perfectly. She circled her arms around his neck and held on to him as he deepened the kiss. Such a short time, and she was so wrapped up in him that she couldn't stand the thought of her tomorrows without him in them. How would she feel in two weeks? Two months? If the trajectory was anything as blazing as the last three days, she'd be spending the rest of her life with him. Was that what he was saying? Because that's what her response was to whatever he was trying to convey. He left her lips, 
trailing kisses across her cheeks and down her jaw, and pressed a kiss to the hollow of her throat before capturing her lips again, immediately deepening the kiss once more. A few more of these types of kisses and she'd be signed, sealed, and marked delivered. With her heart pounding, breath ragged, and lips bruised and tingling, she sighed as he closed his eyes and set his forehead against hers. She had no idea the amount of time that had passed. He took several gulps of air and then said, I hope you heard me. Did you hear my response? He opened his eyes and held her gaze. I think so. I just hope you still feel that way later on. She brushed her lips across his. I don't see how I could feel any other way. Those crystalline blue eyes turned cloudy for the briefest of moments, and then he nodded. We should get dinner and then pack. I thought maybe I'd drive so you can sightsee. I've been up and down the coast multiple times. If that's not okay and you'd prefer to drive, I'm happy to be in the passenger seat. If you drive like you kiss, I'm fine sightseeing. She smiled. He pushed her hair over her shoulder, pressed a kiss just behind her ear, and whispered, Sightseeing it is. The grin he flashed as he stepped back made her knees like gelatin. Mia giggled. Okay. She threaded her fingers in his and hugged his arm. She was falling for him. No. She could safely say, Fallen. She'd fallen for him, and from this point forward, the feelings could only grow deeper. Especially if he was as good a man as she suspected. Chapter 16 Of course, Noah took them back to the same hard-to-get-into restaurant. She ordered something different this time, and it was equally as good as the night before. No wine, but she wasn't missing it at all. She didn't know the whole story behind Noah's commitment to not drink, but she was going to support him. Her drinking days were over, and she wasn't going to miss them. Not when she had Noah to cuddle up to. Over the course of their meal, he'd grown quiet again. Just as she started to speak, he took a deep breath. Thank you for not asking questions I can't answer. At least not yet. I know it makes me sound cryptic, but there's a reason. I know. She set her fork down and leaned into him. Your... Her phone jingled in her wristlet and she rolled her eyes. I'm sorry. It's okay. Hazard of the job. He winked as he stood so she could get out. She pulled her phone out and frowned. Mr. Harrison. Great. I'll be right back, she said and gave him a quick kiss before stepping away. Mr. Harrison? I'm so sorry, Ms. Milan, but something is going on with our computer system. The power blinked, and when it came back on, your program was gone. My IT guy has no idea what happened. Is there any chance you can check it out? Make sure it wasn't an attack on our system? Mia chewed her thumb. This was something she'd never encountered before. Her program was missing? Why did this feel so wrong? And you say my entire program is missing? Yes, my IT says he's done everything he knows, and the system is showing it isn't there. This made zero sense to her, and warning bells were going off. But she didn't care for the man personally. That didn't mean he'd done anything wrong, and she'd been unable to crack into his files to confirm her suspicions. She shot a glance in Noah's direction. He could come with her as her bodyguard. Would it really be all that bad to lie and say she paid him since she was traveling alone? She could work the damsel in distress angle, right? I'm eating dinner at the moment, but I can be there shortly. Don't get online. Thank you so much, Ms. Milan. I can't express my gratitude. You're welcome. I'll see you in a bit. She ended the call and walked back to the table. Noah stood. Is everything okay? She shook her head. No, my client is having trouble with his computer system. Something happened with the power, and when they rebooted, my program was missing. I have to go fix it. Okay, I can drop you off at the hotel so you can get your car. Actually, I'll tell you what's going on, and if you don't mind, I'd like you to come with me. His eyebrows furrowed. 
Okay. Just like that? No questions asked? You just go with me? I told you I'd never let anyone hurt you. I keep my word. She hugged him around the waist. Thank you. He motioned for the waiter and asked for their bill. Once it was paid, they hurried to the car and got in. As he pulled out of the parking lot, she debated again about whether or not to tell him. It was a big deal to her, something she'd never trusted with anyone. Noah covered her hand with his. If you don't want to tell me, don't. I can take you to the hotel, put on a blindfold, and ride with you. If you don't need me, then I'm none the wiser. Her heart did a backflip. Noah wasn't pressuring her, and the need to tell him far exceeded the need to keep confidence. I'm working for a man named Mr. Harrison. That's the man who wanted to have dinner with me. The man who gave me the creeps. Well, he owns an import-export business that he runs out of a warehouse at the Miami port. That's who I was meeting with this morning. He wanted to discuss using my program for the rest of his business, but I'm not sure I want to work for him again. Why? How could she explain it without making the man sound guilty? The last day I was there, I ran to the restroom and got lost. The place is like a maze. On my way, I took a wrong turn and wound up on this metal sky bridge overlooking his docking area. There were women sitting in a truck, and they could have been there for work, but I just have this horrible feeling that he's a bad man and he's trafficking people. What gives you that horrible feeling? They look terrified, and I felt the same way. I didn't see any men with guns, but they were pretty scary looking. I'm not sure they needed guns. Noah nodded. Did anyone see you? I don't think so. I was really quiet. She chewed her lip. I copied his hard drive before I left. And tonight, when he called, well, I've got a weird feeling. But I could have just been projecting the fact that I don't like the man. He's sleazy feeling. There's this greasy quality to him, and when I'm around him, I feel like I'm in the presence of a predator. You should go with your gut, Mia. If you think he's dangerous, don't take any risks. He glanced at her as he drove. Are you sure you should go there? She shrugged. I told him I'd come and find out what was going on. If you have a weird feeling, maybe it's not a good idea. Mia nodded. He had a point. What if there was a chance someone saw her when she got lost, or maybe the IT guy was smarter than she thought? Maybe they somehow figured out she copied the hard drive. We should go back to my hotel room and see if I've been able to crack those files. The encoding was government level. I've been running a program for the last three days, and the last time I checked, it still wasn't through. Okay, back to the hotel and we'll go from there. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. And that's what we'll do, he said, flashing her a smile. He pulled out his phone, typed something, and slipped it back in his pocket. Letting some friends know what's going on, just in case things get out of hand. Okay. It was a relief to tell Noah what was going on. With his experience, he'd have an idea for how to proceed or if anything should be done. Who knew? Maybe he'd even have a contact somewhere that might know if Mr. Harrison was on some watch list or something. If nothing else, she felt safer. Noah said he wouldn't let anyone hurt her. And he wouldn't. Noah typed out a second quick text to Ryder as he stepped off the elevator onto Mia's floor. He'd sent the first as they drove back to the hotel. He was in. They wouldn't have to break in. He was done lying, and maybe she and Ryder could work together to decrypt those files. His heart had skipped a beat as she told him about Harrison, what she'd seen, and that she'd copied his hard drive. He knew she wasn't working with the man. Of course, he was still under orders to keep his identity from her, but she was in the clear. It also meant she was more than likely going into Witsek. With her knowledge, Harrison would have a bounty out on her, and she'd need to disappear. It killed him to think she wouldn't be in his life, but her safety was more important. As Mia opened the door to her hotel room, she hesitated. I've never trusted anyone like I'm trusting you, not with my security program. She couldn't have plunged the knife into his heart any deeper if she'd tried. I hope I'm not wrong. 
You're not. And he'd do whatever it took to regain her trust again once he told her everything. They stepped inside and she stopped at the closet. Normally, I don't use a hotel safe for my laptop, but this one had a digital keypad. I hacked into it and changed the code so it would randomly generate a new one every time I opened it, and it sends that code to my phone. And I put clear fingerprint pads over the numbers, and see this here? Noah squinted. A tiny camera? His eyes widened. Wow, a camera? Yeah, I've got it set to trip if someone touches the safe. That way, I not only have a picture, but I've got fingerprints. She smiled. Man, she was good. And he was extremely grateful he hadn't touched it earlier. Smart. Plus, if you try to open it without my phone near it, it'll blare like it's a stuck pig. The entire hotel would have been looking for the cause of the commotion. And I thought I took security seriously. This is my livelihood. I have to protect it. He nodded. I understand, and I'm impressed. She fished the laptop out of the safe and took it over to the desk, firing it up as she opened it. It won't take but a second. It took less than a second. Her fingers flew over the keyboard. It's still trying to break into those files. I'm telling you, whoever encoded these goes beyond just your average IT guy. The longest it has ever taken me to open an encoded file was 11 hours, 16 minutes, and 42 seconds. That's a little precise. Hey, I'm a geek. I get my kicks out of things like that. Noah's phone vibrated against his thigh. Uh, I've got a call coming in. I'm going to step outside and answer it. Sure. He held her gaze a second, crossed the room, and stepped outside, letting the door shut behind him. Ryder stood in front of him with the backpack slung over his shoulder, along with Elijah, Mason, and Colby. Colby, Noah said, shaking his hand. Hey. Colby tipped his head back, greeting him. Mason had his back to Noah, keeping an eye on the elevator. Hey, man. Hey, Mason, Noah replied. Elijah fist-bumped him. Hey. Noah could feel in the air that something was going on. What? Ryder nodded. Harrison knows she's onto him. Noah's eyes widened. Has he sent someone after her? Not yet. Chatter is that he's still waiting for her to show up. If he doesn't kill her, she'll be chained in a brothel somewhere by tomorrow. The very thought made Noah sick. There was no way he was letting that happen. She's got a copy of his hard drive, but she hasn't been able to decrypt the files yet. Ryder smiled. Then I guess it's a good thing I'm here. Did you get a match for the guy who followed her by using the description I sent you? No, nothing came up. He might be new. It isn't like Harrison didn't lose a few faces the last time we took him down. Noah nodded. Yeah. Colby tipped his head in the direction of Mia's room. You can't tell her anything until Ryder's in, he said in a slow southern drawl, until we're sure. Pam's orders. He clamped his mouth shut. Who's Pam? What orders? Noah froze. He hadn't heard the door open. He did tell her he was warning some friends to be on the lookout. Maybe he could salvage this. Uh, these are my friends. They work with me. Our boss was just giving us some instructions. Mia narrowed her eyes as her gaze jumped from him to Ryder, Mason, Elijah, and then Colby. Oh, she tilted her head. How did they get here so fast? I thought you worked out of North Carolina. Name's Ryder. Ryder stuck his hand out and shook Mia's. He didn't know we were in town until I texted him. We had a last-minute job here in Miami because of a concert. Ryder hooked a thumb in Colby's direction. That's Colby, and the other guy is Mason. Noah pointed down the hall a ways. And that's Elijah. Oh, well, it's nice to meet you. Would you like to come in? Ah, uh, sure, Ryder said. Actually, Noah said you were having trouble decoding some files. I'm pretty good with the computer. Mia caught her bottom lip in her teeth as she smiled. Oh, you are? Do I hear a challenge being thrown down? Ryder grinned. Noah rolled his eyes. Can we get inside before we start measuring hard drives? Ryder punched him in the arm. 
Don't talk like that in front of a lady. Just shut up and help her, Noah grumbled. Colby tapped Noah on the shoulder. Can I talk to you out here a minute? Yeah, Noah said and caught Mia's gaze. I'll be just a second. Ryder gives you any trouble, just threaten his laptop with a magnet. He'll be in the fetal position. Mia giggled. How to fell a giant geek in one fell swoop. Ryder slugged him again. Don't listen to him. He winked as they walked into her room and the door shut. Colby leaned his shoulder against the wall and Mason and Elijah took the cue to give them some space. She's cute. No, she's beautiful. Noah put his hands on his hips. What do you want to talk to me about? His friend straightened. I'm supposed to take this case, and since you're in charge now, I thought I'd talk to you about it. Okay. Noah hated that Pam was quitting, and even a small part of him hated being in charge, especially after what happened in Africa. But the Guardian group was needed. The other guys wouldn't take the lead, and leaving it to someone else wasn't something Noah could do. His friend straightened. Ivy Manning. She's a famous rich girl who does a talk show. She gives advice and stuff. I don't want to, but I'm vexed over it. Colby had the thickest southern accent of anyone he'd ever know. Sometimes Noah wished he had a translator. There's a stalker bothering her. Noah nodded, remembering that he'd heard her name on the radio. What's the problem, other than the stalker? Well, she's rich and famous, and she's one of those people who knows everything and thinks she can solve everyone's problems. The last thing I need is some know-it-all elitist snob trying to give me life advice. Colby cursed under his breath. But every time I think about it, I feel sick. Like I ought to say yes. Lord knows I've got no love for rich folk, so it's got to be him giving me the push, right? Is she pretty? Is that what you're worried about? Noah had no idea what she looked like, and he could barely remember what her voice sounded like. Colby grinned. Oh, she's prettier than a picture. He cast his gaze to the floor. Noah smiled. Maybe it's not the good Lord giving you the push, then. Shut up. I'm asking for advice, you jerk. If I do it, all my demons will be on display. Noah rubbed his chin with his fingers. He could see it being a problem. What with the way Colby's stepdad had abused him? He'd been wealthy, and Colby's mom had looked the other way while it was happening. Maybe this will be good, Cole. Maybe you can do a little slaying while you're at it. Yeah, maybe, but it's more about her. I can't put my finger on it. Noah crossed his arms over his chest. Cole, when we took this job, we said we'd always do what we could to protect people. If your gut or the Lord is telling you to go, go. There's a reason for it. Yeah, I know, he muttered. If I take it, I'll be in Tennessee for a while. You'll be okay? Yeah, I'll be okay. So you think I should? Noah gripped his shoulder. Yeah, I do. I have a feeling it'll be really good for you. All right, I'll take it. I'm supposed to leave tonight. Her manager is sending a plane for me with Ivy, her precious cargo. I just wanted to talk to you first. The door to Mia's room flew open. We need you, Ryder said. Now. Go, Noah said to Colby. I'll be fine. Colby saluted as Noah stepped into the room. Chapter 17 Ryder was hysterical. Mia liked him instantly. He was so relaxed, but she'd expect nothing less from a guy who looked like he'd be as at home on a surfboard as he was on a computer. And cute? Wow. Dark brown eyes, killer smile, and a mane of sun-bleached light blonde hair. His lithe, muscular frame screamed active and athletic. To top it off, the man had a brilliant mind. Of course, he wasn't Noah, but if Ryder ever decided he wanted a woman he'd have her. He was a trophy catch. I have to wonder, Mia said as she pulled up the encoded files. Wonder what? Ryder smiled. He'd pulled over one of the other chairs to the desk and was sitting beside her. She hoped he'd be able to help her. 
You look like a surfer, and you've got a brain like a genius. His mouth dropped open. Are you saying I can't be beautiful and smart? Mia cackled. No, you goofball, you just don't fit the stereotype. Which is good, because this is fun. This is awesome. Do you know how hard it is to be trapped with people who can't speak computer? No, not trapped. But most of the time, people had no clue what she was talking about. I have some idea, but not totally. I mostly work alone. What made you copy this guy's hard drive? She shrugged. I was installing a security system on his computers at his warehouse. I got lost going to the bathroom and saw what looked like women being loaded on a truck. Wow. I don't know if that's what I saw or not, but when I returned from the bathroom, I tried to check some of his files, and they were encrypted so well I couldn't get through them. Now, what kind of import-export business does a man run that requires encrypting that I can't break through in less than five minutes? And why would he need my software with this level of protection? Ryder leaned back in his chair. Maybe he just likes extra security. Totally true, which is why I don't want to accuse him without proof. If I'm wrong, I'll shred the files and go on about my business. But if I'm right about what I saw, I couldn't in good conscience not do something. Those women look terrified. Her phone rang and she picked it up. It's Mr. Harrison. She put her finger to her lips and answered it, putting it on speakerphone. Hello, Mr. Harrison. I was just about to call you. Are you here? I'll come let you in. Uh, no, I think something I ate made me sick. She smiled as she looked down at Ryder. I've returned to my hotel to lie down a while. Oh, I'm so sorry. He almost sounded like he was fretting. But don't worry. Remember when I said I'd be monitoring your system for a few days after I installed the program? I can check it from here. She winked at Ryder. Ryder gave her a thumbs up and motioned to keep him talking. She smiled. That was good. She wouldn't have to explain the conversation. I know that, but I was really hoping you could check it on location, Mr. Harrison said and took a deep breath. Ms. Milan... I'm very careful with the people I do business with, which means I've made sure you're who you said you are. But do you know who you've been spending your time with? Ryder's breath caught, and Mia knitted her eyebrows together as she looked at him. He jumped from the chair, crossed the room, and whipped the door open, getting Noah's attention. I told you my boyfriend was in town with me. She caught Noah's gaze as he walked in hoping he wouldn't be upset that she'd attached herself to him. Mr. Harrison chuckled. We both know that's not true, but did you know Mr. Noah Willandry is in fact Noah Wolf? He works for the Guardian Group. They're vigilantes at best. They've been harassing me for over a year. Her lips parted as she held Noah's gaze. What? I placed a camera near the door of your room to monitor your safety while you are working for me, and the man who just walked into your room has been lying to you. Those men with them are part of his team. They work for a woman named Pamela Williams. Ryder's eyes widened and he bolted from the room. That's not true. Really? Check the video I just sent you. Video? You're watching me? Only because I know these men have been hounding me and my employees. I was only doing it for your safety. Mia pulled her gaze from Noah. On the screen was a video of Noah entering her room just after she left to meet with Mr. Harrison that morning. She lifted her gaze back to Noah, and she knew by the look on his face that the charade was over. As angry as she was for being recorded, she was even angrier with Noah. I need to go, Mr. Harrison, but I assure you, your system is fine. I'll be monitoring it from here, so don't worry. Stay safe, Miss Milan. She ended the call and let her hand drop to her side. Before you take another step, you need to tell me who you really are and why you've been lying to me. If Mr. Harrison was telling the truth, her heart would break. Noah froze as tear-filled eyes met his. I will explain as soon as Ryder has cleaned the room. Clean the room? 
Harrison just admitted to having a video camera outside your room. There's no doubt they are in your room as well. Mia blinked as if what Harrison had done was just sinking in, and she clamped her lips shut. Casting her gaze to the floor, she nodded, and Ryder and the rest of the team checked the suite. Two cameras and several bugs later, they were confident they'd found everything. Now, can you tell me why you've been lying to me? Asked Mia, pinning Noah with a look. Noah turned to the team. Could you guys give me a minute? Ryder nodded. Yeah, but that's about all you have. There's a reason he would have told her, and that's to slow us down. The second Ryder was out the door, Noah crossed the room and stopped in front of Mia. Having Harrison tell her wasn't the way he wanted her finding out. Those secrets I was keeping? The ones I said I had to keep? They were about me? Why? Yes, he said. My name is Noah Wolf. I work for... It's hard to explain. People come to us when they have nowhere else to go, when they've exhausted all their resources and they need help. Mr. Harrison said you were a vigilante. Harrison is just trying to turn you against us so you'll ditch us and he can get you alone. Please think about the gut feeling you had with Harrison and know that I'm not the bad guy. I'm not a vigilante. I mean, we do operate outside of the law sometimes, but it's... We help people. All she did was stare at him. He swallowed hard. Harrison is a known human trafficker and sex trader. The district attorney asked for our help when one of his friend's daughters was taken by this man. We got her back, but we promised to bring this man to justice. We've been working over a year trying to get him, but he has money and a great lawyer. This last time, we thought we had him. We had eyewitnesses, video, audio, we had it all. But he walked on a technicality at the last minute. But you thought I was knowingly working with him? Her voice trembled. To be honest, we weren't sure. But we didn't feel like we could risk being straightforward with you. He's transported thousands of people, most of whom have been kidnapped, bought, and sold. He's got an entire network of men just like him. If we take him down, we cripple this entire thing. Not that it'll completely wipe it out, but it would slow it down. After spending all this time with me, you still suspected I was working for that man? Me? How could you think that? Noah raked his hand through his hair. It wasn't about believing you. It was about the risk of him finding out we were coming after him again. This man needs to go to prison for the things he's done. You are one person, and the needs of the many trumped the risk of telling you. She flinched like she'd been slapped, and tears spilled over. I see. She walked to her computer, clicked a few keys, and handed Noah a flash drive. This is Harrison's hard drive. Take it. Do whatever you want with it. Mia, you're in danger. The reason he delivered this information about who I am was so you'd distrust me and to distract you from what's going on. Her gaze met his, and he'd never seen eyes so filled with hurt in his life. You lied to me. Used me. I believed every word you said. You kissed me. You said you wouldn't let anything happen to me, and I thought it was because you cared about me, but you just wanted to stay close to me to get information and I told you I was keeping secrets and that they weren't bad, but they were hard. He took a step toward her. And it was hard, but I had orders not to tell you. I told you I keep my promises. I couldn't tell you. Yes, I protected you because those were my orders, but I protected you just as much for personal reasons. The moment I met you, everything changed. I need you to leave. I need to think. I feel like grapes trampled under feet. My head and my heart are at war, and I don't know which to listen to at the moment. He took another step. Then listen to this. You are in danger. Harrison is coming after you. He will hurt you. That's if he doesn't kill you. It doesn't matter at this point. The second you accepted the job, you were marked. You were never going to live a day past leaving Miami. And if he thinks you've double-crossed him, 
he'll make you suffer. That's why you were willing to drive me up the coast. You didn't want to spend time with me, you just wanted to keep tabs on me. Her lips curled in and she looked away. I can't believe I fell for it. I walked into another lie and didn't even see it. No, that's not why I wanted to drive you up the coast. I did want to keep you safe, but I also like spending time with you. I kissed you because I couldn't stop myself. I like you. You have no idea how hard this has been. He reached for her and she jerked back. Mia, please. I don't know who I'm angrier with. Me or you. Get out. No, I promised you I wouldn't let anyone hurt you, and Harrison will. Her lips thinned into a hard line. Too bad that didn't include yourself. You aren't the police, the FBI, or the CIA. You have no official title at all. I don't have to listen to you. You need to leave. I get that you're angry with me. I deserve every ounce of it, but you are entirely too intelligent to let your emotions dictate your actions. You know I'm right. She gasped, and more tears sprang to her eyes. The second it left his lips, he knew he'd said the wrong thing. He'd discounted how she was feeling, and that was the worst thing he could have done. Mia, I'm not saying you don't have a right to feel that way. You do. I just, if you get hurt, it'll kill me. Please, let me protect you. Fine, you can protect me but I'll do what I want, when I want, and where I want. You got it? Harrison doesn't know I copied his hard drive. I made sure of that. Really? He stepped to the window and pulled the curtain aside. Sure enough, a black SUV was parked right behind her car. Look. She walked to the window. So? They've blocked you in, he said and pointed to his own rental. And mine. Don't you think it's convenient that our cars are the only two blocked in? What does that mean? It means he's sent men to get you and take you back to the warehouse. At best, he knows you've seen something you shouldn't have, and at worst, he knows you've copied his hard drive. The man is a lot sharper than people give him credit for, which is how he's been able to evade getting caught for so long. Mia, I know I've broken your trust, but you have to believe me when I say he'll hurt you. Her lips trembled as her gaze met his again. He couldn't possibly hurt me as much as you have. She pulled her gaze away. Let me guess. You want to come with you so you can protect me. Yes, I do, and we need to hurry. Mia shook her head and hugged herself. Fine, I'll go with you, but just know that I don't like you anymore. It's bordering on hate. I'm trying not to, but... I'm doing this so those women are rescued and so that man won't hurt anyone anymore. That's the only reason. What could he say? His heart was broken. He'd seen it coming. Known it was going to happen and he was completely unprepared for the ache he was experiencing. He'd fallen for her and the rejection was stinging like a wasp. What he needed to do now was keep her safe. He walked to the door and ushered Ryder, Elijah, and Mason in. I'm taking the elevator. What? Ryder asked. Clearly they know we're here. I'll cause a distraction while you get her to the car. Mason nodded. All right. With one last glance at Mia, Noah left her hotel room. His men would keep her safe, and because she hadn't been hurt by any of them, she'd be more inclined to listen to their instructions. More than anything... He wanted to keep her safe, even if it meant he wasn't in the picture. Picture. Chapter 18 As Mia descended the hotel stairs with Ryder, Mason, and Elijah, her thoughts were in chaos. Devastated didn't begin to cover how she felt. Crushed was entirely too mild. Shattered? None of the words seemed to encompass the deep, gut-wrenching ache she was experiencing. What was worse, she'd known he was keeping secrets and continued spending time with him. Why had she done that? He'd lied, manipulated her, and used her to get close to her client. 
Granted, Mr. Harrison was scum if he was trafficking people, but to use her? Why hadn't Noah just asked? She'd have helped. Even crazier, she kept thinking he was right. He told her the secrets he held weren't bad, but they were hard. But he was a pro. Had it been hard to lie to her? Judging by the way he'd seemed so withdrawn and almost pained at dinner, if she was being reasonable, she'd have to say yes. He'd called her intelligent, had asked her to think rationally. So what should she do? Should she swallow the hurt and realize it wasn't all about her? How many women had Mr. Harrison kidnapped or sold or whatever he did with them? If she'd been in Noah's shoes, would she have done the same thing? What did Noah mean by cause a distraction? Mia asked. Ryder flicked his gaze toward Mason and Elijah. He's just going to cause a scene while we get out of the hotel. Mason smiled. Don't worry about Noah. He'll be fine. His bright green eyes and red hair were a stark contrast to Ryder. She wasn't worried about him. Much. I know. We're stepping out of the stairwell and into open air. It's really important that you do what we say, when we say it, as fast as you can. Stay in the middle of us. She hugged her laptop bag to her chest as Mason carried her suitcase. For the first time, she actually felt terrified. Okay. As they reached the bottom floor, Ryder whispered, Are you ready? Not by a long shot. She was shaking so bad it was a wonder she wasn't being felt on the Richter scale. Instead of voicing her fear, she nodded. Ryder held up three fingers and then silently counted down to one before they stepped out of the door and into the lighted parking lot. She expected the humidity and heat. What she didn't expect was the bullet whizzing past her head. Instantly, she went from terrified to petrified, immobile. There were screams and shouts, and the next second, Mason was curling around her as he picked her up by the waist and pushed her into the backseat of an SUV. They took off with a screech of the tires and began weaving through the city at breakneck speed, trying to lose Harrison's thugs. Ryder took her by the shoulders. Mia. She blinked as she focused on his face. Yes? Breathe. She sucked in a gulp of air and dissolved into a mess of tears. They shot at me. Yes, but you're safe, and you're in a bulletproof SUV. The dome light haloed him as he squatted in front of her. I froze. He smiled, and his compassion wrapped around her much like Mason's arms had. I know, and it's okay. That was scary. It wasn't nearly as cool as the movies make it out to be. With a chuckle, he shook his head. No, it never is. Mia glanced around the SUV. Where's Noah? He's working on keeping the bad guys from following us. It was dark out and she could only see headlights. Oh, is he okay? Yeah, he's fine, Ryder said, but his voice sounded off. She furrowed her brow. You aren't just saying that? No. His voice still sounded off, but in her current emotional state, it was possible she was just reading too much into it. Okay, I'm angry with him, but that doesn't mean I want him hurt. Ryder cut a glance at Mason, who sat next to her. We know. Mia decided to let it go. If Noah was really hurt, she was sure they'd tell her. Twenty minutes later, they pulled into an airfield. Elijah glanced over his shoulder. We've got a base in North Carolina. That's where we're headed. Ryder fished his ringing phone out of his pocket and put it to his ear. Yeah. What? He covered the receiver with his hand. The pilot says the planes have been grounded. Grounded? Why? Asked Elijah. Fuel leak. Ryder looked at Mason. Okay. Orlando? Ryder nodded as he finished the call and made another one. At least until we can get another plane. We've got a safe house just outside of Orlando. You'll be safe there until we can get you out of Florida. Hey, Noah, Ryder said. Plane's grounded due to a fuel leak. We're taking her to the Orlando safe house. Mia couldn't hear what Noah was saying, but whatever it was, Ryder agreed because he was bobbing his head as he listened.
Okay, you lost them? He ended the call. Noah lost Harrison's men and agrees. Orlando. Disney. She was going to be so close and still not get to see it because some creep had to traffic people. With a sigh, she leaned back and hugged her laptop a little tighter. Three hours, and then she'd most likely see Noah again. She told him she borderline hated him. At the time, she meant it. Finding out he'd lied about who he was and then rushing out of the hotel hadn't given her the ability to process anything yet. Maybe a long ride would give her the chance to put her mind in order. When the SUV pulled into the garage, Mia was ready for a break. She liked Ryder, Mason was fine, and even Elijah didn't bother her. But they were Noah's friends, and she needed six degrees of separation from him at the moment. As she reached the door that led into the house, Ryder pushed it open and held it as Mia walked through with Elijah and Mason following. Elijah stopped in the kitchen and tossed down the bag he was carrying. A second later, the door opened again, and Noah walked in. Mia's treacherous heart thundered at the sight of him. Glad he was alive and unhurt. Tempted to throw her arms around his neck and kiss him. She hated it and wished like the Dickens she could hate him. He kept his head down, and she noticed his gait was a little off. She'd know after as much as she'd watched him. She shouldn't care, but she couldn't just turn emotions and feelings off like a television. Are you okay, Noah? I'm fine, he said softly. Ryder looked from Mia to Noah and back. Let me show you to your room. You can grab a shower, change, or whatever you need to do he said as he took her by the arm, leading her through the house. You're safe here. The windows are bulletproof, there are cameras lining the fence, it's a gated entry, and there are other precautions that I won't get into. Just know that Harrison isn't going to walk into this house without a fight. They stopped at the first door in the hall that was off the living room. Thank you, she said. Um, Noah's fine. I wasn't... He lifted an eyebrow. Mia sighed. Fine. I was going to ask because he didn't sound fine. Look, I know you're ticked. Your feelings are valid and I won't belittle them. Noah was following orders. He was told not to tell you. If anything, be mad at Pam or me. She gasped. You? I agreed with Pam that he shouldn't tell you. Noah didn't like it. He championed your innocence from the very beginning. He never thought you were working for him, even when I was telling him you were and that you knew who Harrison was. Her heart did a little skip. He did? You were? Yeah. So be angry, but remember who he was going after. It was a choice between trusting you and being absolutely sure we could take Harrison down. None of us wanted to risk him remaining free. Wait, why did you think I knew what Mr. Harrison did? Ryder grimaced. Uh, let's just say I'm really good with computers and I'm able to listen in on things. There was chatter that you were working for him, there was no security program, and that you were helping him ship people. Mia gasped. I promise I didn't. I had no idea. I thought the man was creepy. We know. Something's... off... We just haven't figured it out yet. He sighed. Be mad at me, not Noah. He's a good guy. He was only doing what he thought was right. She nodded. I'll think about it. If you need anything, just ask. Okay. She said as she stepped inside the room and closed the door. Turning, she let her gaze sweep across the room. It was simple and spacious warm colors on the walls, a comfy-looking bed, and an attached bathroom. There was even a little sitting area with two chairs and a little table between them. Just as she set her laptop down, a knock came at the door. Mia, you don't need to open the door, Noah called. I just wanted to make sure you're okay. She debated whether to just answer him from where she was or open the door. Mia? Just the sound of his voice was like a magnet, pulling her toward it. She opened the door, and there he stood, 
still keeping his head down. He stuffed his hands in his back jean pockets. I'm sorry. I can't tell you how sorry I am. Did you get hurt? Is that why you won't look at me? It's okay. She stepped toward him and lowered her head so she could see his face. That cut across your nose says otherwise. Are you hurt anywhere else? I saw you limping. He shook his head. I'm fine. Before she could stop herself, she cupped his cheek. I'm trying really hard to put myself in your shoes and think with my brain and not my heart, but it's difficult at the moment. I know you had a good reason, but that doesn't make me feel any less betrayed. You lied to me. Noah, you kissed me, and good cause or not, I feel used. His eyes slid closed, and he pressed his face into her hand. I know, and I had no choice. In addition to the cut across his nose... The slight turn revealed a bruise forming along his jaw. That looks like it hurt. He blinked and straightened, pulling her hand from his face. I wanted to check on you. Is there anything you need? Boy, did he have a power over her. She was as ticked as a kicked bumblebee, but man, she cared about him. Noah was trying to get a predator off the streets, a man who would hurt someone like her and had hurt women just like her. Yes. I need to know how you got that bruise. Are you okay? It's not important. She huffed. Fine, I don't need anything, and if I do, I'll ask Ryder. Just leave me alone, she said as she shut the door. If he didn't want to tell her, then she didn't want to know. Except she did. In an effort to push everything out of her mind, she focused on getting a shower It was a whole lot better than focusing on the man on the other side of the door. Chapter 19 Noah paced outside Mia's room. He knew she was up because of the light escaping around the edges of her door. Plus, he'd heard her crying, which only made him feel worse. He could tell by the way it was muffled that she was trying to hide it. Earlier in the evening, he'd made up his mind that he was going to try to talk to her again. He wanted to gain her trust back. Maybe if he gave her a piece of himself that no one else had, she'd see he really did care. That he'd kissed her because he wanted to. He'd made such a mess of things by not sticking to the plan. He stopped pacing in front of her door, and the second his knuckles came into contact with it, he had second thoughts. Before he could walk away, the door cracked open, and Mia peered through it. What? May I come in? I'd like to talk to you, but not in the hall. Mia held his gaze long enough that he thought she'd say no, but then she opened the door and let him through. Okay, she said and shut it. What? This was it. I'm going to tell you something that no other soul on this earth knows except one and the only reason he knows is because he was a prisoner with me. And I'll know this is true how? He rubbed the back of his neck as his heart raced. This isn't something I like to talk about. I had a therapist for a while, but I didn't even tell her. If you can't tell it's the truth, then I've got nothing. Fine, she said, walking to a chair and taking a seat. I'm listening. In an instant... His mouth was dry, his hands were shaking, and his stomach was churning. It had been a long time since he'd let himself remember. It was a period of time he didn't like recalling, and he'd worked on stuffing it as far back in his mind as he could. Bile tickled the back of his throat as memories flooded him. He needed to tell her, but as hard as he tried, he was at the mercy of those memories now that he'd let them surface. Hold on. He managed to croak out as he charged into the bathroom and emptied the contents of his stomach. His knees hit the tile, and he braced his hands against his thighs. A second later, Mia flattened her hand against his back. Noah? He couldn't catch his breath while he was throwing up so furiously, let alone talk. Over and over he retched until there was nothing left. When he finished, he cupped his hand under the faucet, took a sip of water, and washed his mouth out. He leaned his forehead against the wall of the bathroom, struggling to get control back. 
I just need a second. He sucked in air like he was being jerked underwater by a shark. Mia nodded. Sure. Like his therapist had instructed, he counted and counted until his breathing returned to normal. I'm sorry. With a reaction like that, you have my rapt attention and my solemn promise that I'll never repeat a word you say. She stepped out of the bathroom, walked back to the chair, and sat. He shot her a glance as he followed her and took a seat. His cheeks burned with embarrassment. The reaction had been so strong and unexpected. Those memories were buried, but that's how he dealt with what happened. Hadn't he faced them before pushing them away? You said, prisoner? Noah trained his gaze on the floor. Yes. How long? I'm told a little over eight months total. The last few months were a little hazy. Mia folded her hands in her lap. Who captured you? He shook his head. An armed group tried to overthrow the government. Negotiations were made, but at the last minute they decided to hold two of us back. They wanted more money and weapons. Where was this? Nigeria, but just telling you that could get me sent to the brig. She leaned over and placed her hand on his arm. It's okay. I can't remember what you just said, and it doesn't seem important to the meat of the story. What happened? Again, he focused on the floor as events played in bright color. They'd negotiated the release of all of us. We thought we were finally getting out, but they held me and a comrade back. I was the CO, so they thought I'd have more value. He said and took a deep breath, his stomach churning again. It wasn't a picnic for any of us, but negotiations broke down shortly after the others were released. The two of us were tortured. They withheld food, and when they did feed us, it would be rotten. But we would be so hungry that we'd eat it anyway and then spend days sick and throwing up. It was during the wet season and unusually cold that year. They'd drag us out, tie us to the middle of the village, and leave us for days. We were used as a warning for any of the villagers who tried to resist. How did you finally get rescued? According to my friend, another company pulled us out, but it was a fluke. They stumbled across us after taking back a village. You don't remember? She asked softly. He shook his head. Days kind of blurred together. I'd caught pneumonia. Honestly, we were both about dead when we were found. He lifted his gaze to hers. I am not telling you any of this for sympathy. I am telling you because you trusted me and I deceived you. I want you to have my deepest secret because I want you to know I didn't set out to hurt you. I didn't kiss you because I was using you. I kissed you because you're a hard woman to resist. For the longest time, she remained silent. The next time she spoke, her voice was so soft it was barely audible. Is that why you don't drink anymore? Yeah. My friend who was tortured with me let me flail for a few months before straightening me out. Out of all of us, he was the only one who didn't look to something for demon taming. Not that it did. I still hurt, and honestly, nothing numbed it despite my best efforts. Afterward, I got some real help. I don't suppose much would help. It wasn't just being taken prisoner. I led us into an ambush. I'm the reason we were caught, and I'm the reason my friend suffered with me. He'll say it wasn't, but it was. He wouldn't leave. I was already getting sick when they released the other guys, and he was afraid I'd die if I was alone. Mia chewed her thumb. Do you think he was right? I don't know. He was telling her the story, so he may as well tell her all of it. After we got back to the States and were well enough to stand trial... We were all dishonorably discharged. During the firefight, one of my men was killed with friendly fire. We'd been told not to engage, and I made the call that we didn't have an option. The rebels were going to force the men and the boys to fight with them, and who knows what they were going to do to the women and girls. But it was the wrong call, according to the court. Does your family know? 
No. Before I went on the mission, I left specific instructions that they were not to be notified until I was confirmed dead. I waited until I was healthy before I went home. Or as healthy as I could be. I stayed just long enough for it to count as a visit before I left. I told them I wasn't in the army any longer after six months, but they don't know any of the details. He'd straightened up just long enough to come home and see Zack after he'd been stranded. Silence stretched again, minute after excruciating minute, until it became stifling yet again. The longer she was quiet, the less hope he had that she'd forgive him. I'm still angry with you, but I understand why you did it. It doesn't lessen how hurt I am at all. I'm not certain I can be anything more than friends with you, and even that may take a while. I'm trying to be rational, but apparently I'm not as level-headed as I thought. Noah nodded. That's probably for the best. Mia, you're more than likely going to have to go into witness protection. That means... I know what it means. Her eyebrows furrowed. What are you talking about? I have a copy of the man's hard drive. That should be more than enough to put him in prison. And I can't testify because I haven't seen or heard anything that would be of any use. All of that is true, but he'll try to kill you anyway. I'd bet money he's already got a bounty on you. Hard drive or no hard drive, this never had a chance to end any other way. Her mouth dropped open. So... All this time you knew I'd possibly be forced into witness protection? Yes. You kissed me while knowing that? Made me fall for... She stopped, pressing her fingers to her mouth. How could you do that? Noah's heart pounded. She'd nearly admitted to falling for him. Or at least, that's how it sounded. Didn't seem to matter much now, though. I didn't do it on purpose. She stood, walked to the door, and opened it. Thank you for sharing that, and I will never tell anyone. But please, don't talk to me anymore. I think my heart has had all of you it can handle. Noah wanted to argue, but what was the point? Argue what? In a week, Mia Milan would no longer exist. If he cared at all about her, he'd keep his mouth shut and his feelings to himself. All he wanted now was to get her to Witsek and pray that by the time she left, she wouldn't hate him for the rest of her life. This may not mean much at the moment, but you have my word that I will never lie to you again. He stood, and as he reached her, he paused. That promise will come before all previous promises made. The look in her eyes made him ache all the way to the core. Without saying a word, she shut the door in his face. Whatever he had with her was officially over, and as expected as it was, it didn't make the thought of living without her any easier. Chapter 20 Bleary-eyed, Mia stumbled out of bed as someone pounded on her door. Mia, I'm in. Ryder? In? Then her brain fired up. The files had been decrypted. She pulled the door open. You're in? He grinned. I'm in, baby. She peeked into the hallway. He's not here. She pinched her lips together. I'm a little pathetic, huh? You're hurt. Feelings are never easy. He said I'll have to go into witness protection. She crossed her arms over her chest as Ryder waved for her to follow him. He stuck his hands in his pockets. No one wants you safe. Mia blew a puff of air out. I don't want to go into witness protection. I like my life. It's not fair. No, it's not, but life is rarely fair. They walked to a room right behind the kitchen. She thought it was a pantry when she first saw it, but it wasn't. It was a command center. Ryder sat down in front of a row of computer screens picking up a box of hot tamales and scattering a few on the desk next to the keyboard. Okay, so I got in, but I got you before I opened anything. Mia smiled. You did? He looked over his shoulder. Professional courtesy. Thank you. Getting this hard drive was awesome. 
If it contains what we hope it contains, Harrison will be done. You've saved a lot of lives. Talk about making a person feel good. Then I'm glad I did it. Ryder patted the chair seat next to him. Let's crack these open. As she sat, he clicked on the first file. Mia couldn't believe her eyes. Hundreds of names, dollar amounts, countries of origin and destination. A spreadsheet of payments made by buyers and sellers. Pictures of women taken before he'd transported them and then after to show they'd arrived at the destination in the same condition they'd left. Not just women. Ryder pointed to a name and then the age next to it. Nine? She's a baby. Her eyes welled with tears. That's horrific. He nodded. I know. And that's why Noah was not to tell you who he was or what he was after. Harrison has been doing this for years. Thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, have passed through his hands. It was never just about you. Ryder clicked on another file, and pictures of women came up. It was about them. Mia nodded. Now she had faces to go with the names. It wasn't just about her. It was about them. Making sure Harrison would go to prison and never hurt another soul. I can't believe this. I promise I had no idea. And we know that now. You wouldn't have brought us these files if you were working for him. He shot her a glance as he scrolled through the files. Actually, we think something else is going on. We're just not sure what it is yet. Noah's the one who brought it to my attention. That night you talked to Harrison, Noah said you turned him down when he asked you to dinner. Next thing we know, he's blowing up his phone talking about you. Noah was right. It didn't jive. She kept her expression neutral, but inside she was melting. Noah stood up for her. If he was really using her the whole time, would he have done that? I can't believe I helped him protect his system. She narrowed her eyes as she brought her gaze to Ryder. Were you trying to hack in? And you stopped me. I'm sorry, I didn't know, but you were pretty good. His lips parted in a gasp. Pretty good? I'm the best. Clearly you aren't, or you would have made it past my system. She laughed. He shook his head as he grumbled. That's not nice. Mia shrugged. But it's true. Whatever. He popped a hot tamale in his mouth and held one out to her. It's... She checked the time on the computer. It's three in the morning and you're eating candy? It's my happy place. Ryder sobered. There are tons more files just like these. He clicked on a few more and there were even more spreadsheets and pictures. Wow, Mia whispered. Why did he need my system if these files were encrypted so well? Ryder snorted. That's the rub. We don't know, but your program did stop us in our tracks. I was going to do what you did and make a copy of his hard drive, but I couldn't get it before you got your program running. Oh. And she'd prevented the good guys from doing their job. I'm sorry. I wish I'd known. Ryder sat back, rubbing his mouth with his fingers. Still, this level of encryption. He really didn't need your program. I was trying to gain access, and I couldn't. Your software made it harder, but it wasn't exactly necessary. Mia knitted her eyebrows together. Then why? He shrugged. I don't know yet. Would it be okay if I made myself some hot tea? Sure. I'm going to make copies of everything, put the information on six different drives, give one to each of the guys, and email copies to the DA and James at the FBI. I'll CC his team. We can't take any chances that the information suddenly gets lost. Want me to make one for you? Yikes, that was a lot of precaution. Please, I have a special compartment in my wristlet. It's lined and you can't tell it's there. Mia stood. Okay. She went to the door and paused. You wouldn't want to join me, would you? Ryder swept his gaze from her to the computer screen where the files were already copying and sending and then back to her again. Uh, sure. There are a lot of files, so it'll take a little while to get it all done. 
Is the FBI going to make me go into witness protection? As he stood and followed her into the kitchen, he shook his head. No one is going to make you do anything. But for your safety, you need to consider it. Noah said I'd be forced. Ryder laughed as she filled a kettle with water and set it on the stove to heat. Of course he'd say that, because he wants you safe. He cares about you. He told you that? No, but he wouldn't have fought so hard to tell you the truth if he hadn't. Mia leaned her hip against the counter next to the stove. He really hurt me. Ryder nodded. Yes, he did. But you saw why. We couldn't chance losing this opportunity. Yeah. She had a wall of faces she'd never be able to unsee. Young women and children treated like cattle. Putting herself in Noah's shoes was getting easier and easier. A love interest versus thousands of lives. Was there really a question as to the right answer? Not even a little. She would have done the same thing. Thomas Harrison is a slick, intelligent scumbag. We've had evidence in police lockup go missing. We've had witnesses wash up on the Florida coast, sometimes even the Texas coast. He's managed to avoid arrest so many times. We had him. And just like that, he walked. Frustration laced Ryder's words. The daughter of the district attorney's best friend was taken by that man. She was gone three months. We found her, but the damage was done. She'll never be the same. We don't want that to happen to another woman or child. We'd hurt your feelings again if it meant getting that monster off the streets. In that moment, Mia understood. It didn't make it hurt any less, but she knew Noah had made the best decision with the information he had. With no idea if she was working for Harrison or not, he had no choice. That's why he was so passionate about people knowing self-defense. He'd seen women mistreated and abused. The women in those photographs were the reason behind his motivation, and she couldn't help but respect him for it. Still, Noah didn't have to hold her hand or kiss her. She would have been perfectly happy just hanging out with him. Then, it hit her. He held her hand and kissed her, and he didn't have to, but he did. Maybe she was right and he hadn't been using her. Ryder pulled the fridge open, grabbed a soda, and slipped onto a stool as he continued. I've known Noah a long time. He's been on these kinds of details before. Not a lot because he doesn't care for them. He doesn't like the lying and feeling like he's manipulating people. He wanted to ask you outright the night he found you in that bar, but he promised our boss he wouldn't. The kettle squealed and Mia fixed herself a cup of tea letting it steep as she sat across from Ryder. Here's what you need to ask yourself. What would you have done if you'd been in his shoes? I couldn't find anything about you online. You have no social media presence at all, and all we had was a little chatter that you were working for Harrison. Would you really want Noah risking maybe our last chance to catch this scumbag? Boy, he sure knew how to throw a mental punch. No and he wouldn't be Noah if he did. He made a promise to Pam, and he kept it. Not just to her, but to the girl we found. He promised he'd find the men who did that to her and make sure they paid. All of us, we take promises seriously. If we give you our word, it means something. So, did she hang Noah for lying to her or praise him for keeping his word to Pam, to that young woman he rescued? He'd said it was hard to lie to her, but he'd kept his promise. What did that mean when it came to keeping his promises to her? I totally understand what you're saying, but how do I stop feeling so hurt? He did lie to me and allowed me to get way too involved knowing the outcome. And while it was for a great cause, it doesn't make me feel any better. You'll have to make a choice to forgive him or not. No one can make that call for you. I just know my friend is hurting, and he wouldn't be if you didn't mean something to him. He promised he'd never lie to me again, that it would come before every other promise he's made. Ryder smiled. If he's told you that, then he's a lot more serious about you than he's let on. 
There's only one way you take priority over everyone else. Mia coughed, the lump in her throat sticking to the sides. Serious? But he told her she'd be going into witness protection. Why would he say something like that if he didn't think she'd be around? Was that why he was able to make that promise? It didn't strike her as something Noah would do. Maybe there was more he wasn't telling her. It was dark and quiet as Noah and Mason patrolled the perimeter of the safe house while Elijah stood guard at the front. Noah had an eerie feeling. Harrison wasn't going to go down easy, and a desperate man often resorted to desperate measures. She's cute. What? Mia. She's cute. Noah shook his head. Not talking about this. Oh, you do like her. Mason knocked him on the shoulder. Shut up, Mason. They walked in silence all of two seconds before Mason started again. Ryder said she's smart, too. Noah stopped walking. What do you want from me? Mason shrugged and kept walking. Nothing, but you've been brooding since you talked to her earlier. How did you know I talked to her? Your shadow in her room. Noah groaned and caught up to him. It didn't matter what he felt. It's not like anything can come of it. She'll be in the FBI's hands in a week. Mason glanced at him. We both know that's not a done deal. I've got a bad feeling about Harrison this time. I do too. Something feels off about the whole thing. I almost get the sense we were set up. Set up? Noah nodded. Yeah. I told Ryder I'm not so sure Mia was hired for her software. It got me to thinking that maybe she was used as a lure. It made sense, too. Harrison knew they weren't going to stop until he was put away. Mia was cute, sweet, and innocent. Pam would have gotten word that he'd hired her, sent one of them to tail her, and Harrison would get the whole team. Noah wondered if he knew Colby, Gunner, and Pam weren't in Florida. Mason stopped, pulling Noah to stop as well. We need to get out of here. This safe house isn't safe. I had the same... An explosion pierced the night as the front gate went up in a fireball, sending pieces of the concrete fence in the air like shrapnel. Noah slammed into Mason as debris flew at them, knocking him out of the way. They ran for the house as cars began pouring through the hole in the gate, Another explosion came from behind the house. The sound of glass breaking urged Noah faster. They're in the house. As he slid to a stop just inside the front door, a bullet whizzed past his ear. From the hall, two gunmen had Elijah pinned in the kitchen. Where was Mia? And like she'd read his mind, she peeked out from behind the island, looking terrified. The door to the command center opened, and Ryder ducked low as he came out and dove for cover. On his way to the kitchen, Noah pulled his weapon and fired, striking one of the men in the shoulder while Mason took a position behind one of the chairs in the living room. What happened? Elijah asked as Noah stopped next to him. They blew through the gate, he yelled over the noise. I'll cover you. You and Ryder get her to the SUV and get out of here. We'll keep them occupied while you do. Elijah grabbed Mia's hand and pulled her to the garage. Three more men pushed through the front door, and Noah turned his weapon on them. Mace, here! A second later, Mason was next to Noah, and they were both firing and reloading as more men poured in. He had to have called in some serious favors to have this much firepower, Mason yelled. Gunfire erupted in the garage, and Noah heard Mia shriek. Go, I'll cover you, Mason said. Just make sure you're behind me. Mason nodded and then fired, taking out two guys while Noah quickly ran for the garage. A bullet grazed his leg as he entered and he fired in the direction it came from. Pinned behind the SUV that faced the exit, Elijah and Ryder were returning fire as Mia hid in the bulletproof vehicle. Cars were stopped about ten feet outside the garage and assailants were using their own vehicles as shields. The thought hit him that this was too well organized to have been a last-minute attack. Elijah, Ryder, I'll draw fire. Get in the SUV and get her out of this fire. 
They nodded, and Noah crouched as he held the wall, making his way to the opening. As he reached the front of the SUV, a volley of shots rang out. He peeled away from the wall and fired. Noah! Mason yelled. I'm right behind you! As he turned to acknowledge Mason, his eyes widened as a man came out of the house and approached Mason from behind. Noah fired, and Mason rolled out of the line of fire. Thanks! he yelled as his head popped up on the other side of the SUV. He quickly climbed in with the others. Before he could turn back around, a bullet sliced through the back of his shoulder, rocking him forward. He braced his hand against the wall to keep himself from hitting the floor as he gritted his teeth. Noah ducked, reloaded, and then fired four shots. He waved for Elijah to get Mia out of there. If they waited much longer, none of them were getting out alive. Elijah floored the SUV forward a few feet and the lift gate opened. Mason waved for Noah. Come on! Noah waited for an opening and then dove for the cargo area. He rolled to a stop and the hatch slammed closed. Not a breath later, the SUV lifted off the ground and hit down hard as a car rammed them. Metal against metal screeched as Elijah hit the gas pedal. The force lifted Noah off the floor, and he was slammed back down, knocking the wind out of his lungs. Just as Noah pushed himself into a sitting position, an explosion rocked the front of the SUV, tipping it onto two wheels and throwing him against the cargo door. These guys came way too prepared, Ryder said. I'm not sure flying out in the jet is the best idea. These guys knew about this house and drove us out, and that makes me think they'll be waiting for us. It also means they'll be trying to anticipate what we do next. What's the least likely thing to do? Elijah asked. Back to Miami. My place. Noah croaked. The SUV lurched forward as Elijah accelerated. I agree. It wasn't until Noah's vision clouded over that he realized he needed to say something about the gunshot. Guys he said. But he knew he hadn't spoken loud enough, and he didn't have enough energy left to say it any louder. Louder. Chapter 21 Mia couldn't stop shaking. Her ability to process was being put to the test. Everything had happened all at once. One minute she was talking to Ryder, and the next Elijah was flying in the front door yelling that they needed to move. She'd run to grab her laptop, and by the time she came back, bullets were flying. We're clear. I don't know how long it will stay that way, but I don't see anyone following us, Elijah said as they drove away from the scene. That must have been the cue Ryder needed, because he turned to her from where he was sitting beside her and asked, Are you okay, Mia? Uh, I don't know. She hugged her laptop to her chest. I've been shot at twice now and that was like something out of Mission Impossible. He nodded. We'll keep you safe, I promise. She glanced over her shoulder in the direction she'd heard Noah's voice. There'd been so much chaos, and all she could think was that she'd feel better if he wrapped his arms around her. I don't think he'd mind if you wanted to talk. With a groan, Mia leveled her eyes at Ryder. You don't think so? He cut a glance over his shoulder and leaned in and whispered, Do you really think he was only pretending to care about you? He touched her arm and crawled into the passenger seat. Mason climbed over the second row into the seat Ryder had just vacated and winked, tipping his head in Noah's direction. The urge to speak to him grew until Mia fidgeted. Ryder was right. Noah wouldn't have pretended to like her and never would have lied if he wasn't ordered to do so. And truth be told, even if he wasn't ordered, he'd lied to help thousands of women and children. He'd made a hard but good and noble choice. Didn't she want a man with that kind of character? The evening before, when Noah had kissed her before dinner came to mind, I hope you hear what I'm about to say. She had heard him, hadn't she? There was no doubt he was being genuine when he spoke to her with that kiss. She had responded. Did she still feel that way? 
Setting her laptop down, she made her way over the second row, leaning over the edge of the back seat. He was lying on his side, facing the door, not moving. Noah? She tilted her head as she studied him, a suspicion growing that something was wrong. She crawled into the cargo area, careful not to step on him. Noah? She asked as she touched his shoulder. A flash of headlights from a large truck cast enough light that she could finally see him. His hair stuck to his forehead, and a dark red stain covered his entire right shoulder. Oh no! She leaned over him, gripping the back of the seat. Noah's hurt! Those two words were like a fire put to gasoline. Ryder and Mason were jumping across the seats like frogs after a fly. We need some space to get back there, Ryder said. She pressed herself against the back glass and dropped over the top of the seat. Ryder was the first to get to Noah. He pulled out a flashlight, flipped it on, and hung it on the seatbelt strap. As light filled the cabin, Ryder swore under his breath. Oh, jeez, he's been shot. He lifted his gaze to hers. I need you to get in the other row so we can fold this one down. Mia nodded and quickly climbed into the second row. The seat fell forward as Mason shucked off his backpack and pulled the stethoscope out of it. You're a doctor? Mia asked. Field. The answer was clipped as he began to examine Noah. They eased him onto his stomach, his chin tucked just a hair under his left shoulder. Right shoulder. He must have been hit in the garage. Elijah craned his neck. Is it bad? Bad. His heart rate is weak. That worries me, Mason said. Ryder, I'm going to need you. He slapped a pair of gloves in Ryder's hand and then put some on. Mia chewed her bottom lip. Is he going to be okay? Without taking his focus off Noah, Ryder shook his head. We don't know. That wasn't what she wanted to hear. They didn't know if he'd be okay. She might not get the chance to talk to him. Would he die thinking she hated him? Tears welled in her eyes as she silently prayed he'd be okay. Mason knows what he's doing. He won't let him go without a fight, Elijah said. As she watched Mason try to get the bullet out, Noah's face lost even more of its color. His lips looked as though they'd been painted white as Mason eventually pulled the bullet out. When Mason finished bandaging Noah's shoulder and turned him over, he sat down hard with his back against the lift gate pulled off his gloves, and wiped his brow. He blew out a big breath. He's going to be okay, but he won't be using his arm for a while. Is it okay if I sit with him? asked Mia. Ryder pulled himself over the seat next to Mia. I don't think anyone will mind. Again, Mia climbed into the cargo area and waited as Mason rolled up the used instruments in a towel. With that done, he pushed off the lift gate and climbed into the seat next to Ryder. Once Mia was alone with Noah, she lay down on her side next to him and brushed the back of her hand along his jaw and across his cheek, stretching her fingers into his hair. Her heart felt heavy as she watched him breathing. He'd been hurt while protecting her. They'd all risked their lives for her. It was a sobering thought. He'd suffered through something most would never understand, and he still had a heart that wanted to help people. Maybe when this was all over and they could really talk, they could figure out how to make it work, whatever it was they'd started. Chapter 22 Noah licked his lips and tried to work his dry mouth. The thick fog he was trying to break free of was doing its best to keep the hold it had on him. He knew he'd been shot, and he'd managed to get himself in the SUV, but things were hazy beyond that. Cool fingers stroked the side of his face and combed through his hair. He took in a lungful of air, and Mia's scent drifted around him. When he tried to open his eyes, it was like trying to pry open a locked box. With a little more effort, he managed to peel them open, and sure enough... Mia's beautiful face came into view. 
Granted, the edges were blurry, but those eyes and that smile were enough to make his pulse jump. She was sitting next to his left side on the bed. They had made it to Miami, to his family's vacation home there. Hi, she said. Hey, he said. Again, her fingers skated across his cheek, and he pressed his face into her hand, kissing her palm. Are you okay? She sighed. I'm fine, but you, not so much. You've been out for over a day. It took Mason a while to dig the bullet out. He smacked his lips again. Water? She lifted his head and put a cup to his lips. He was surprised by how cold the water was, but it felt great going down. When he'd drained it, she laid his head back down. Thanks. He lifted his gaze to hers, and again he was struck by how much comfort he felt with just her presence. But he hadn't forgotten how angry she was with him either. Thanks for staying with me. I'm good now if you want to go. I'm fine right where I'm at, she smiled. But... Mia lowered her gaze to the bed. I was incredibly angry with you, but Ryder decrypted those files and showed them to me. You had a good reason to keep me in the dark. And you'd made a promise to Pam. I don't think I'd want you to be the kind of man who would break a promise just because it was hard to keep. He swallowed hard. I am sorry. I know, and I'm not as angry anymore. If I'd been in your shoes, I would have done the same thing because it was the right thing to do. Harrison can't remain free, and I understand that now. Noah was speechless. The relief he felt was overwhelming. Thank you. I'm still working on the hurt part, but understanding the why is going a long way to help that, too. As her fingers brushed across his jaw, he closed his eyes. I don't know what I would have done if I'd lost you. You're kind of special to me, Noah Wolf. He wrapped his good arm around her and pulled her closer. I'm glad you know my name. I wanted you to know it. Mia leaned back. I am too. It fits you better. I need to tell you a few more things about me. Not that I'd lied, just if I'd told you. Man, he was exhausted. He needed to tell her who he was, his family, and all the things that were important for her to know. And like she could read his mind, she leaned over him, bracing her hand on the bed and bent low. Noah... You've been shot and lost a lot of blood. You have plenty of time to tell me more. For now, I'm just glad you're alive. She pressed her lips to his neck and nuzzled it with her nose. I would be devastated if I'd lost you. He slid his hand up her back and held her against his chest. I can't say I wouldn't feel the same way. Mia didn't hate him, which was a good place to start. He'd tell her everything, make sure they had a firm foundation, and build from there. That's if she didn't have to hide until Harrison was in prison. At least there was hope, which was more than he had a few hours ago, and he'd take it. Chapter 23 Ryder wrapped his fingers against Noah's open door. Come in, he said. Noah had been in and out of consciousness for the last 24 hours. He wasn't feeling great yet, but he didn't feel like the Grim Reaper was giving him the stink eye. Since arriving in Miami, they'd taken up residence in Noah's family vacation home. He hated to bring his work to the beautiful home, but with nowhere else to go, it was the only option. Noah would have to let Zach know it was off-limits for a while, at least until Noah was sure it was safe to be used. Maybe he'd suggest they sell it and buy another one further down the beach. Ryder had managed to get everything important out of the safe house command room and was able to uncover a few more things from files he hadn't checked while they were in Orlando. Harrison had a file on all the team, including Mia. The information in them proved that Harrison had set them up. It had been right there, but none of them had seen it. Mia was a pawn used by the man to get the group's attention something to get them to Florida and on Harrison's turf. 
I just wanted to make sure everything was decent before I barged in. Shut up, Noah growled. Sitting beside him, Mia giggled as Ryder walked in. He's so grouchy, she said. Noah rolled his eyes. I'm not grouchy. She tilted her head and then glanced at Ryder. Oh, you're grouchy. Ryder laughed as he stopped and leaned against the wall at the foot of Noah's bed. I concur. What do you want? Noah asked Ryder. Ah, uh, Mia, I really need to talk to Noah alone for a minute. Okay. She bent down, kissed Noah's cheek, and then left him alone with Ryder. Noah pushed himself up. We have to go after him. Before Ryder said a word, he walked to the door and shut it. Yeah, he said as he faced Noah. If we come full force from the front, he'll see us coming. It'll be a war, and based on the firepower he had, we'd be outgunned. We need to do something he's not expecting. Be smart and use his cockiness to our advantage. I agree. Got any ideas, boss? Noah jerked his gaze to Ryder. What? Pam told me she's done. Do the rest of the guys know? With a shake of his head, he took a seat on the edge of the bed. Colby does, but Mason and Elijah don't. Colby was on the fence about accepting that assignment. Pam knew you could talk to him. I think the only reason she told me was that I'd have found out before anyone else anyway. True. Back to the current problem. We need Harrison focused on something else while we sneak in and grab him. A plan drifted to mind that no one knew would be met with resistance. Ryder nodded. You've got an idea, don't you? What makes you say that? He lifted an eyebrow. I've known you too long, and I can tell the plan stinks. Noah hesitated. Oh, this plan is absolutely terrible. I'm going to hate it. I'll be the bait. I'm hurt. He knew who I was, Ryder. He used Mia to get to me. I think he knows I was the mole. That was the best explanation Noah had for being on Harrison's radar. That has to be it. And he'll know I've figured that out by now. I can go, and he'll think I'm trying to get revenge. It'll be the perfect setup. Ryder stood and raked his hand through his hair. Yeah, the perfect setup to get you killed. Noah, you've been shot, and you still look like you could use a pint of blood. If he gets his hands on you in this condition, he will make you hurt before he kills you. So you guys better be on your A-game. He can't do that much damage if the amount of time he has me is limited. What if he puts another bullet in you? Noah shook his head. We both know he won't do that. He likes making his enemies suffer before killing them. The other guys are not going to go for this, and I'll be backing them up. This is a dangerously stupid plan, and it could get you killed. He took a few deep breaths. And you're going to do it anyway, so we need to be prepared to come to the rescue. I'm in love with her, Noah said finally putting to words what he'd been feeling. In a matter of days, Mia Milan had turned his world upside down. He loved her more than anything. The softness of her skin, the curve of her body, her intelligence, her laugh, her smile, everything. If we don't get him, she'll be looking over her shoulder for the rest of her life. I can't let that happen. You love her, huh? Yeah. I do. He caught Ryder's gaze. Ryder cocked an eyebrow. She's going to be livid. Noah crossed his arms over his chest. I know, but she also knows how dangerous Harrison is, and she wants him off the streets as much as I do. It's not the safest plan, but if we can finally get Harrison, it's worth the risk. One life for the many. And she understands that, too. Sighing, Ryder nodded. This plan will work, Noah said. Ryder set his hands on his hips, chewing the inside of his cheek. It's a stupid plan, but I agree. If he's focused on you, there's a good chance we can slip by, if we're careful. Harrison needs to know that I'm shot and going against Pam's direct orders not to engage. All we need is for him to think I'm on my own and you guys have been called back to base. We feed him that, 
and I think he'll take the bait. Then we need to get the guys and make a plan. That way, we can make sure you get out alive. Noah nodded. Yeah, we do. I think you need another 24 hours before we do this, Ryder said. That will give us time to make it look real. I don't know. If we go now, he'll think I'm half-cocked, which I almost am, but I think it would sell it better. Ryder shook his head. It might sell better, but I think it's better to wait. At least until you've got a little more strength. Noah eased himself back. I think you might be right. Aw, man, I should have got that on recording. Shut up, Noah chuckled. Let's wait to tell the guys the plan. If I don't look half dead, maybe they'll go along with it easier. Ryder walked to the door and paused. Actually, I agree with you. I'll wait to tell them until you're not ghost white. Get some rest. I plan on it. Noah closed his eyes, and the door clicked shut. Mia's life depended on this plan working. If it didn't, he'd never forgive himself. She'd been dragged into this because somehow Harrison had figured out Noah's cover. He couldn't let her have this hanging over her head for the rest of her life. He loved her too much to do that. He also knew Ryder was right and she'd be furious. It was a huge risk on all fronts, but it was worth it for her. Now, if he could only find a way to make her understand that it had to be this way once it was all over. Ryder walked into the kitchen, opened the fridge, and grumbled. No soda? I can't drink tea. Well, you can. You choose not to, Mia said. It felt weird to be in Noah's home. Granted, it was a vacation home, but it still felt like he'd let her into some intimate detail of his life. It was beautiful, too, with a private beach. He'd stayed away from it to keep his job as far away from his family as he could, but they'd had no choice once Harrison found the safe house in Orlando. At the moment, she was making a sandwich for Noah. They'd ordered a grocery delivery not long after getting to the house. It was a good thing, too, because all of them had been hungry based on how they devoured half of it. He straightened and grumbled again. I told Mason to get soda. The jerk is determined to make me be healthy. It wouldn't hurt. Sure it would. It would hurt my taste buds. Ryder smiled. Mia rolled her eyes as she finished making the sandwich. Do you want me to make you a sandwich? Nah, I'm good. Okay, suit yourself. She gathered up the sandwich ingredients and put them back. Grabbing the plate, she trotted to Noah's room. She wasn't sure he'd be hungry. He hadn't had much of an appetite yet, but she figured she'd at least offer. Mia froze as she entered the room. The unmade bed was empty. The bathroom door was open, and Noah was nowhere in sight. Noah? No answer. She quickly ran back to the kitchen. Ryder, Noah's gone. His eyes widened. He wouldn't. Wouldn't what? A string of curse words flowed from his lips, enough to make her blush. We talked about the plan, but he was supposed to wait. What a hard-headed, stupid move. He rubbed his forehead with his hand. I've got to tell the guys. We have to get him. What plan? He caught her gaze, and she knew whatever plan it was, she wasn't going to like it. He's using himself as bait so Harrison will let his guard down. That way me, Elijah, and Mason can get the drop on him. Bait? Tears stung her eyes. Noah wasn't in any shape to be out of bed, much less using himself as a target. Putting himself in danger like that was stupid. She just told him she couldn't live without him. It was just short of telling him she loved him. The thought rocked her back. She loved him. That word had never even been a thought where another man was concerned, but... That word had never even been a thought where another man was concerned, but... In just a short few days, Noah had blown in like a hardy Texas wind and changed everything. Harrison will kill him. She choked the words out. Nodding, Ryder hung his head. Yeah, which means we need to hurry. And I'm helping. Mia. The tone of his voice said he was going to argue. I'm helping. 
All three of you are needed, which means I'd be in this house alone and unguarded anyway. There's risk either way. If I go in as well, maybe it'll be even more of a distraction. And if Noah could be reckless, so could she. If anything, she wanted the chance to tell him how stupid he was, and she loved him, and he'd better never do anything as foolish as this again. Ryder chewed the inside of his cheek. All right, let's get the guys. Guys. Chapter 24 Noah wasn't so stupid as to go straight to Harrison's warehouse. His team needed time to realize he'd left the house, so he ducked into a coffee shop, taken some painkillers, and waited until they kicked in. Mason would have given him stronger stuff, but he needed his pain gone and his head clear. He was in no shape to even be thinking of confronting Harrison, but that was exactly the point. If Harrison was focused on him, maybe, just maybe, they'd have this guy once and for all. For Mia's sake, it needed to work. And selfishly, it needed to work for his sake, too. Pam had given him the reins of guardian, but the thought of living life without Mia crushed him. If she had to go into Witsack, he was going to, which meant he'd either be turning down Pam's offer or closing the group. Yes, it was selfish, and a lot of people might not get the help they needed, but he'd been playing over his conversation about Africa with Mia. Facing those painful memories was hard, but opening up and sharing them with her gave him new insight. He couldn't change anything about the past. What was done, was done. And if things had happened any other way, who is to say all the people they'd helped in the last few years would have had anyone to turn to? Now, as he stood in the shadows surrounding Harrison's warehouse, he realized his choices had brought him here. Bringing down a man who helped the most disgusting human beings in the world ship human cargo all over the world. If that wasn't a reason to let go of the past and look to the future, he didn't know what was. Mia and his team might be mad because he didn't wait until he was stronger, but he knew it wouldn't have happened unless he made the move now. Don't move, a gruff voice said from behind him as a gun cocked. Put your hands up. I can do one or the other, but not both. A sharp pain exploded at the back of his head and he fell to the ground. It rattled through his body and he cried out as his shoulder took the brunt of the fall. All he could see were stars and a headache throbbed at the base of his skull. How about neither? Don't. Boss wants him alive, another voice said. This one wasn't as raspy as the first guy. Noah went still, hoping they'd think he'd passed out and wouldn't hit him again. He only hoped the guys would show up before the real pounding began. As hard as Mia's knees were knocking, she was sure Harrison could hear her from the parking lot. She'd never been more terrified in her life, but she'd pushed down her fear and arrived at the warehouse in hopes that she could add to Noah's distraction. She knocked, and a man she'd never seen before answered, his eyes raking up and down her body like he was putting a value on her. Involuntarily, she shivered at the thought. I was hoping I could speak to Mr. Harrison. The man lifted an eyebrow as he put his phone to his ear. Chick here says she wants to speak to you. What should I do with her? What's your name? Mia Milan. The man's eyes flicked to her face and he held her gaze. You got it, boss. He grabbed her by the arm and yanked her into the building. Boss said he'd be thrilled to speak to you. He dragged her through the building to Mr. Harrison's office. Just inside to the right was where his computer system was housed. The man pushed her inside. Stay, he said, and shut the door. Her heart thundered against her ribs so hard that she was sure she'd drop of a heart attack any second. The guys would be coming to the rescue any moment, but that didn't help her current state. Trapped in a building with a man who could kill her and wouldn't even think twice about it. Minute after minute went by, and it felt like hours before Mr. Harrison strode through the door with a flourish. Ms. Milan, how good it is to see you. I heard you'd been taken hostage. I kind of was, 
After you called, I was grabbed and taken to Orlando. How terrifying. How did you escape? She chewed her lip. We got back to Miami, and the room they locked me in was on the ground floor. They didn't check the window, so I left. I came straight here. I thought maybe you'd know what to do. I've never had anything like this happen in my life. He perched on the lip of his desk and bobbed his head. I see. You must be scared witless. Her gaze dropped to the man's bloody knuckles, and her stomach dropped. Was that Noah's blood? She swallowed down the rising panic. More than you know, they have my laptop, but don't worry. I have a password on it that no one would ever be able to crack. She smiled, trying to put a little confidence into it. Harrison pointed to the door. Are you sure you aren't here looking for this? Just then, two men walked into the room, dragging Noah's limp body in between them. Her breath caught in her throat as they dropped him to the floor where he remained motionless. The wound on his shoulder had obviously opened back up with the amount of blood soaking his shirt. Noah, she said as the lump in her throat doubled in size. Swallowing down the fear building in her chest, she eyed Harrison. I didn't know who he was. He told me his name was Noah Willandry. She made a move to go to him and Harrison's men stopped her. I really liked him. It's hard to turn that off. Plus, I've never been one who liked seeing people hurt. Harrison nodded to his men, and they stepped away. Mia took a few steps and kneeled next to him. She ran her hand over the side of his face, and Noah made the tiniest of sounds, almost like a whimper. Turning him over, she steeled her features to keep Harrison from reading what she was really thinking. The man she loved had been brutally beaten. His eyes were swollen shut, his cheek was cut, and blood trickled from the corner of his mouth. What had he been thinking putting himself in danger like this? I don't think you've been entirely honest with me, Ms. Milan. I think you like Noah Wolf, and once you found out who he worked for, you appreciated his noble cause, the one that involves putting me in jail. I only met a couple of them briefly before they grabbed me. In her head, she screamed, Come on, guys, hurry up! A man slid to a stop at the door. We've got gunfire at the dock. Harrison cursed and stood. You three take care of that. He walked around the desk and opened a drawer, and when he lifted his hand, he held a gun. I've got these two covered. The three men hurried out of the office. A moment later, loud bangs came from what sounded like all directions. Mr. Harrison stepped around his desk and stopped a foot away from Noah. I'm trying to decide what to do with you, Ms. Milan. You stole something from me, and I don't take kindly to thieves. Without any kind of warning, Noah swept his feet around, catching Harrison on the legs and taking him to the floor. Run, Mia. Noah ground out as he struggled with Harrison. Mia jumped up as Harrison landed a hard kick to Noah's ribs and scrambled away from him. He stood and aimed the gun at Noah, who stared up at him. A shot went off and Noah froze. For a second, Mia's heart stopped as her life flashed before her eyes. Life without Noah. No wedding rings, no children, no growing old together. It was the worst future she could imagine. In that second, whatever doubt, reservations, or residual hurt she felt was gone. She loved him, and she wanted him. Mia looked over her shoulder, and Mason stood in the doorway with a smoking gun aimed at Harrison. Nothing like what happens in the movies was real. First, no one ever warned her that her ears would ring. Second, Harrison didn't clutch his chest. He just dropped to the floor. And three, nothing moved in slow motion. Noah tried to push off the ground and failed. I can't get up. And you shouldn't try, she said as she closed the small distance between them and knelt beside him. 
That was the stupidest thing you could ever do. Do you understand that? If Mason hadn't... He pulled her down and cut her off with a kiss. It was stupid and worth it. She jerked away. You could have been killed. You look half dead as it is. What were you thinking? That I need to keep you and all his other victims safe. This is who I am. The one for the many, remember? Now, you want to tell me why you're here? She glared at him and scoffed. The one for the many. You aren't just a one. You're my one. At least tell me next time. Yes, I'll worry, but at least I'll know. If you want me to respect who you are and what you do, then the road has to go both ways. He took her hand. You're right, and that's fair. You have my word that from this point forward, I'll tell you everything. He paused a moment. I'm going back to my question. What are you doing here? They were either bringing me willingly or I was sneaking out. You aren't the only one who gets to be stubborn. They figured the first option was safest. You have no business being here. You could have been hurt. You don't look like someone who should be giving advice on how to avoid danger. He chuckled and it turned into a cough. I look that bad, huh? Actually, after worrying I'd never see you again, you look fantastic. His lips twitched up. You always look great. Ryder said you were supposed to wait. As hard as she tried, she couldn't fight the tears pooling in her eyes. Now was the time, Mia. I'm sorry I hurt you again, he said, wiping her tears away. But this is who I am. This is what I do. Can you handle that? Could she? Now that she had first-hand knowledge of how dangerous his job was, how hard would it be to watch him leave and wonder if he'd ever come back? Did she love him enough to love all of him, or just the parts that were convenient? Wasn't his protective nature one of the reasons she loved him so much? He traced her lips with his thumb. I don't think I can stay awake much longer. Whether you can return the feelings or not, I need to tell you, I'm in love with you. Her heart skipped a beat. He loved her, too. He moved his hand to hers. I know you're still hurt and upset that what I do is scary and dangerous, but I'll... Now it was her turn to shut him up. She held his face and pressed her lips to his. I'm in love with you, too. I've never felt about anyone the way I feel about you. It's terrifying given what you do, but I don't think I could ever love anyone as much as I love you. You're not still mad? She shook her head. No. After seeing what this man was capable of, I understand with complete clarity why you did what you did. The only thing I lied about was my name. Just my last one. I know. Also, you should probably know I'm a billionaire. Well, my family is wealthy. Mia narrowed her eyes, and then they widened. Wolf Computer C&D Distribution? He was a computer nerd's dream. Wow. I can get you a pretty good deal on a hard drive. I bet you can. That's your family's company? He nodded. And I thought you were my dream guy before. She laughed. Mason strode through the door. I'm glad you guys worked it out, but these guys need to get in here. Two paramedics poured in through the door. We need you to step back. Mia moved to the side and stood next to Mason. Noah loved her, and she loved him. It didn't matter how their relationship had started, just that it lasts as long as possible. Bull. Chapter 25 A week later, and surrounded by his entire family, Noah's patience for the hospital stay was wearing thin. He was ready to get out. He'd promised Mia they'd finished her travel up the coast, and he was bound and determined to keep it. His entire family flew in when Ryder called them, all four siblings, Harley, and his mother. They now knew a little about his job and his time in captivity. His mother had reamed him a new one, twice when she found out. The only saving grace he had was Mia. 
She'd softened the news quite a bit and had been embraced much like Harley was when Zack brought her home. All this time my big brother was a hero. I'm still in shock, Brittany said. But I should have known. You were always the one to come to someone's rescue. Stop, he said. She looked over her shoulder to where Mia and his mom were huddled together. I love her. She's awesome. So smart and sweet. If you don't marry her, mother will kill you. Zoe, the oldest of all his siblings, shrugged. Gotta say, I love her too. Brittany wasn't far off. Their mom already had that grandchild spark in her eyes. Noah laughed. Yeah, I have a feeling that's exactly what would happen. Zack stopped at the foot of his bed. You know, we had a party when I was rescued, and I'm thinking we need to do the same thing for you. Julian snorted. Oh, you're done now. No, I'm good, Noah replied. Brittany brightened. Oh, crud. Party was her magic word. It was the wind-up key in the back of an animated toy. That sounds great. Harley and I will take care of it. She grinned. Oh, man, no. I'm sorry, but the word has been uttered, she said and winked. Harley walked up behind Zack, wrapped her arms around his waist and kissed him. What word? She asked Brittany. Party. Oh yeah, you're doomed. Harley laughed. Noah hung his head. Do you think you guys could get me a minute alone with my girl? Julian stood. Guys, I think Noah's needing to rest. Why don't we go downstairs and invade the cafeteria? His family began the slow process of shuffling out, and finally he was left with Mia. Your family is amazing. I love all of them, she said. They're pretty great. She stretched out next to him and laid her arm over his chest. I'm also glad to be alone with you. She tipped her face up and kissed him. He pulled her closer and deepened the kiss. How would you like to be a permanent member of the family? He asked as he trailed kisses from her lips to her throat. Mia leaned back. What? You heard me. Don't you think we need a little more time? Marriage is a promise to love, honor, and cherish. I will do all three of those for you as long as I live. He smiled. Plus, now that you're one of us, there's no escaping. She laughed. How about you get well and then ask me? I'm asking now. When I get well, I'll be sealing the deal. You don't do anything half-hearted, do you? He shook his head. No, I never have. I love you. I want to be with you, and that will never change. Mia held his gaze, and in the silence of the room, he was sure she could hear his heart pounding. If she said no today, he'd keep asking until she said yes. What exactly are you asking me, Noah Wolf? I'm asking you to marry me, as soon as my shoulder is healed. Why does your shoulder need to be healed? He lifted an eyebrow. Really? She caught her bottom lip in her teeth. <laughs> yes. With a grin wider than he thought possible, he crushed his lips to hers and kissed her. He'd found his chance for happiness. A home. Anywhere Mia was, he was home. Epilogue Christmas, the next year the Wolf family home in Houston was filled with more love than Mia ever thought possible. She'd married Noah shortly after his shoulder healed. Her parents even managed to make time to show up. It had been nice to have them visit, but Mia loved Noah's family. This was what she'd wanted growing up. Not that her grandma hadn't given her a great life, she had. But being surrounded by his family gave her something she'd been missing. A feeling of home and belonging. She'd moved with him to North Carolina as he took over for Pam. She'd known Noah would be taking over before she married him. He'd promised not to keep things from her, and he'd followed through. All right, Zoe said, digging around under the tree. I know there's one more under here. The floor was littered with wrapping paper, bows, and partially open toys. Mia had never been so happy in her life. It was perfect. Well, 
at least at the moment. Finally, Zoe pulled a card out. Noah! Mia stood across the room from her, working to hold in her excitement. No one knew, and she couldn't wait to see his expression. Noah looked around the room. Me? It's got your name on it. He pulled the card out, opened it, and jerked his gaze to Mia's. Really? She grinned and nodded. What? asked Harley. Zack slapped him on the back. I've experienced that look. In a flash, Noah had her around the waist, lifting her off the floor and kissing her. She's pregnant, his mom whooped. Yes! The whole room turned to chaos with cheers and congratulations. I thought you made me that happiest man when you married me, but this is shooting for a tie. A baby? A baby. Her big, tough, ex-army ranger soldier had tears in his eyes. A baby? How long have you known? A few days. I was feeling sick and there was a possibility, so I went to the doctor and they did a blood test. This is the best gift you could have given me. She took his face in her hands, kissing him. I love you more today than I did a year and a half ago. You can't possibly love me as much as I love you. He smiled. Want a bet? I'll prove it later, he winked. Mia circled her arms around him and held on. Happiness, fulfillment, and now the addition of a baby. It was more than she had ever hoped for. This has been Noah, A Clean Army Ranger Romance, Book One. Written by Bree Livingston. Narrated by Liz Crane. Copyright 2019, Bree Livingston Publishing.